Hi, my name is Christina Herrera, and I'm chasing my dreams by putting my audiobooks on YouTube. So if you could please support me and hit like, comment, and subscribe, it would truly mean the world to me. I want to go ahead and tell you about my other books that you can get through YouTube if you go ahead and subscribe. The first book in my Hidden Shores Academy series is called Kissing the Wrong Twin. The next book is Kissing the Skater Boy, which is the one you're listening to right now. The last book in the series is called Kissing the Right Guy, and it's a love triangle and it's available for pre-order. All of these books in the series are standalones and can be listened to or read in any order. Another standalone book that I have is called Falling for a Mermaid. And another book is called Kissing Under the Fireworks. Kissing Under the Fireworks has already been uploaded as a clean adult free audiobook on YouTube. So please go to my channel and listen to that one as well. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of my books, so please feel free to leave me a review on Goodreads or Amazon, or simply leave me a comment. I would love to hear anything you have to say. Anyways, I truly hope you enjoy Kissing the Skater Boy. I wrote it back when I was 20 years old, and now I'm 26, and so I've waited many years to put this book out into the world. So please, I hope you enjoy it. Kissing the Skater Boy, an enemies to lovers sweet romance, Hidden Shores Academy. Written by Christina Herrera, narrated by Sophie Snow. Chapter 1, Michaela. It was just my luck when a skateboard fell out of nowhere and smacked me in the face. Books flew from my arms, scattering and rolling down the stairs ahead of me. My head throbbed with pain, and blood dripped from my nose. Through blurred vision, I saw a guy with wavy brown hair hurrying down the stairs. But instead of coming to my rescue, he stepped past me. He snatched up the skateboard and clutched it with a pained expression. Oh man, I got a scratch on my new board. I fought the urge to kick him down the stairs. The punk had thrown his skateboard at me and didn't care how I survived the attack. Do you usually drop your skateboard on innocent bystanders trying to get to class? He looked up at me and gasped, noticing me for the first time. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, are you okay? If it wasn't for you and your stupid skateboard, I'd be fine. Okay, so maybe that was a little harsh, but he seriously needed to be more careful. Technically, it's a long board. There's a big difference. It has bigger wheels and it's better for going down hills. He smirked. Get your facts straight. Something about the smug look on his face enraged me. He was taunting me. I'm so sorry if I offended you, I replied sarcastically, searching for a tissue to stop the blood from running. I'm a little out of it at the moment, considering you just tried to knock me out with your precious board. My bad, he said, biting his lip. I was texting and the board slipped out of my hands. You shouldn't be texting at school. School hasn't started yet, so I think I'm good. I crossed my arms over my chest. Actually, you're not good. Your skateboard smacked me in the face. He rolled his eyes. Was it really that bad? He took a step closer and examined me, noticing the blood for the first time. Wow, it's worse than I thought. You should go see the nurse. No, I'll be fine. Let me at least help pick up your things. I opened my mouth to protest, but he had already grabbed up a few books. He flipped through one of my notebooks and asked with a grin. You're in journalism? Yes, I'm the editor. I snatched my binder away from him. Not that it's any of your business. He put his hands up in defense. Sorry, I was just trying to help. Don't worry about it. You've done enough already, I said. He turned to walk in the opposite direction and said over his shoulder, 
Whoa, okay. I'll see you later. I glared at him. Whatever. He laughed as he descended the stairs. I couldn't stand that guy. Who was he anyway? I was surprised I hadn't seen him before, considering Hidden Shores Academy was a small private school in California where most of the student body knew every detail of each other's lives. I ran into the bathroom and splashed cold water on my face. I examined my reflection and grimaced at the fiery red splotches around my nose. I ran my hand through my natural curls, only to watch it frizz up even more. The bell rang. Great, I muttered. It's the first day of school, and that skater boy is going to make me late for class. I found the correct room and plopped into a seat just before the teacher started talking. Good morning. I'm Mrs. Allen. Welcome to Algebra 2. We'll be going over... The door clicked open, and the same boy who tried to break my nose walked in. I heard giggling and looked back. Most of the girls behind me had their mouths gaping open, practically drooling all over themselves. I couldn't blame them, though. Even if he did chuck his longboard at me, I had to admit he was undeniably the most attractive guy in the room. Everyone, meet our new student, Justin Bifford. Mrs. Allen turned to face him. Why don't you tell us something about yourself? Justin shot the class a coy smile. I spend all my time longboarding. It's basically my life. That's what's up. A guy with black wavy hair called out and gave him a nod of approval. The class continued talking about longboarding until Mrs. Allen called out. Listen up, Justin hasn't told us where he's from yet. He leaned against the wall and dug his hands into his pockets. I'm from Los Angeles. I moved here last weekend. Mrs. Allen smiled and clasped her hands together against her petite frame, her hair just brushing her shoulders. We're glad to have you in San Diego. Have a seat, Justin. Of course, he sat directly in front of me. What were the odds? The same guy who affirmed him earlier turned to face Justin. Sup, I'm Brett. Hey, man, Justin said, pressing his knuckles on Brett's. How long have you been boarding? Brett asked. I started when I was 14, so it's been two years now. That's sick. How many boards do you have? I have two orangutans. Justin smiled proudly, as if owning a longboard was some huge accomplishment. A look of shock came across Brett's face. Whoa, aren't those expensive? Justin shrugged. I guess. They're about 300 bucks each. Before he opened his mouth, I thought he was attractive. Now he sounded completely arrogant. Why on earth would anyone spend that much money on a piece of wood with wheels? I said to myself, thinking they couldn't hear me. Apparently, I was wrong, because Justin turned around and shot me another smile. Skill can only get you so far with a lame board. If you want to be the best, you've got to have the best. He's right, Brett added. But it goes way deeper than that. Skating is only you and your board. You can't depend on anything other than those two things, so it makes sense that if you want to be the best, you have to have solid equipment. I rolled my eyes. I would never understand their obsession with skating. I tuned them out and opened my math book, thumbing through the pages. I'd rather get ahead in algebra than listen to them bragging. Mrs. Allen turned to the board. Let's get started. Justin looked back at me and smiled like something was funny. Was it my hair? I ran my fingers through my dark waves, trying to calm down the frizz. Then he did something that infuriated me. He smiled even whiter. What's his problem? I stared him down until finally he turned around. When the teacher finished lecturing, she gave us some time to do our work. As I concentrated on a complicated equation, there was a tap, tap, tapping on my desk. I glanced up to see the new kid smiling at me. I shot him a death glare. What could he possibly want this time? What is it? 
I snapped. Do you have a sec? I'm stumped on problem three. There was something about his eyes that caught me off guard. They were dark brown, with a fleck of gold that shone in the fluorescent lighting. My heart skipped a beat. I took a deep breath and paused to pull myself together. Yeah, sure. Hopefully he couldn't detect the shakiness in my voice. I wrote out the equation step by step. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. He smiled and gave me a nod. You're really good at math. My cheeks were on fire. I couldn't let this smooth-talking longboarder get to me. I knew men were cheaters and untrustworthy. Plus, I wasn't about to forget the way he carelessly dropped his skateboard and then rushed to see if it was okay instead of me. Since when were longboards more important than human beings anyway? What's your name? He asked. Michaela Hamilton. So, he paused to grin. Can I get your number? Glancing nervously around the room, I realized no one else was talking and everyone was looking at us. There was no way he was getting my number. I didn't want a man in my life right now, especially not one as forward as him. Are you kidding me? We just met and you're already asking for my number. His smile grew cocky. Yeah, I am. Who does this guy think he is? I don't really give out my number. He put his hands up in defense. Okay, I totally understand. I just wanted to check in on you later and make sure you're all right. You know, since I hit you with my board and all. He shrugged, and I met his eyes for a split second. Scratch that. Maybe talking to you in person would be better. Want to do something after school? I shook my head. I have journalism. Couldn't you skip? He asked in a hopeful voice. No, I'm the head editor. I have a life. Plus, I'm in charge. His eyes slid over the length of my body before resting on my face. I can see that. The bell rang. I picked up my books and started to walk away. Wait, where are you going? I turned around and lifted an eyebrow. To class? He grinned and followed me into the hall. Where's that? American history. His smile increased about three sizes. That's my next class, too. I rolled my eyes. Perfect. He caught up to me. Why are you so harsh? Why are you such a flirt? I don't want to be a notch on his belt. Women threw themselves at my dad because he was so attractive, and I saw how that worked out. Touché. Chapter 2. Justin I followed Michaela down the hall into American history. Her wavy brown hair swayed. I tried to hide my smirk as her hips moved side to side in perfect sync. It looked like she was a good foot shorter than me, although her attitude definitely made up the difference. I had a feeling the people in San Diego were going to take some getting used to, not to mention Michaela. The way she kept rejecting me only made me want to get her attention more. She was different from the girls at my old school. She seemed like she could hold her own in an argument. I was used to girls falling all over me just because I flashed them a smile. Back in the day, I even had a fan club, and random girls wrote love poems and stuck them in my locker. It wasn't like I did anything worthy to deserve a fan club. I guess girls naturally found me attractive. This girl gave me a whole new challenge, and I was ready to conquer. I watched her as she walked in and took a seat in the front of the classroom. I snagged a seat directly behind her again. She wrote something in a notebook, but I couldn't see what it was. I tapped her on the shoulder and nodded. Hey, how's it going? Are you ever going to give up? What's your problem? I'm just being friendly. More like annoying. I put my hands up in defense. Fine, I won't bother you anymore. She turned back without a single word. I had a feeling most guys didn't waste their time on her, but I was convinced she only needed to loosen up. She seemed way too uptight. My thoughts were interrupted by the teacher starting class. 
He was a short man with white hair and owlish glasses that took up most of his face. What year did the Civil War start? I shot my hand up. 1861. He raised his eyebrows. That's correct. Michaela turned around. She looked surprised, but happy at the same time. I was pleased to see that she was finally being nice to me. Maybe I needed to prove to her that I could be an intellectual and not just some jerk trying to hit on her. I didn't quite understand why answering a question right would earn an approving smile from her. Why did girls have to be so complicated? At the same time, there was a flicker of hope that I could have a chance with her. Class continued, and I kept answering questions correctly. At the end of the hour, Michaela turned around and said, Wow, you really know your stuff. My mouth curved upward into a halfway smile. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I'm into watching the History Channel, and I love studying the Civil War. Right when I was getting lost in her dark brown eyes, someone said, Michaela, what are you doing talking to this punk? I glanced up and saw a guy the size of a linebacker with bleached blonde hair. He'd only said a few words, and I already didn't like him. I could tell he was a jerk just by looking at the scowl on his face. Anger raged through my body, and I had to tell myself to calm down. She opened her mouth to respond, but I cut her off by saying, Hey man, is there a problem? Yeah, there's a problem. I don't want you talking to my girl. Michaela turned around and asked in a furious voice, Excuse me, Asher? Your girl? Yeah, he replied, balling up his hands. That's right. She let out a frustrated sigh. Listen, we're about as over as this class because we're history. Oh, snap! I leaned back in my chair, covering my mouth with my hands to hide a smirk. Dude, you just got burned! He pointed at me. If you don't watch it, new kid, I'm gonna- Michaela lifted a challenging brow. You're gonna what? Beat him up? Being a bully is not attractive. My mouth fell open. She was sticking up for me? I thought she wasn't interested at all. Asher rolled his eyes. Whatever. And with that, he pushed the books off my desk and stalked off. What on earth? Why did this guy act like he owned her? And where did he get off thinking he could throw my stuff around like that? I was tempted to get up and show him what I was made of, but it was my first day here. My parents would flip if I got sent to the principal's office already. I waited until he was out of earshot. What's his problem? We broke up before school started. I think he's still kind of bitter. Yeah, I'll say. But don't worry, I won't hold it against you. I smiled as I picked up my books. Thank you. I'm so glad I have your forgiveness, she said sarcastically. Why did you break up? It's none of your business. For some reason, I felt like I was right back where I started. What do I have to do to get this girl to like me? For now, I decided to walk away. Lunch was next, and I needed to find someone to sit with. The first day in a new school could be lonely. Chapter 3. Michaela I searched the room for my bestie, Haley. We had been inseparable since we learned to walk. Although I had transferred to a different school for a couple of years and then transferred back, we still got together almost daily. It was a little scary stepping into the lunchroom, but I went in anyway. I spotted Haley sitting by herself, twisting her long blonde hair between her fingers and grinning. She met my eye and I gave her a short wave. I crossed the room and took a seat next to her. Hey, have you seen the new guy? Haley asked. So maybe she wasn't as excited to see me as I thought. Her enthusiasm was obviously all about Justin. Yeah, I talked to him. She looked thoroughly intrigued. You did? What's he like? He's a little too forward for my taste, I said with a sour expression. If I could keep up my acting skills, maybe Haley would drop the whole Justin thing. 
So, in other words, you totally like him, she said as a smile slowly grew. I felt my face turn red and my fingers twitched by my side. That's not what I said. Blowing off my response, Haley headed toward the lunch line. We grabbed the last two slices of pizza, paid, and then took our seats. The noise level in the cafeteria was already deafening. People were talking so loud I couldn't even think. Everyone was bunched together with their own clique of friends. I never felt like I was part of any of those groups, especially since I spent a couple of years at another school. Haley said in a hushed tone, He's right over there. I looked around frantically. Where? She nudged her head to the left, where Justin was walking past the cheerleader's table. They whispered among themselves, and one of them laughed after looking in his direction. It wasn't the, I'm making fun of you laugh, but more of a, wow, that guy is so hot I can't even breathe, sort of laugh. He shrugged it off like he didn't care and continued walking. Quick, ask him to sit with us before those other girls snack him, Haley demanded. I bit my lip and glanced down at my tray. I couldn't make myself walk up to him, not after he chucked his longboard at me. What? No way. She looked Justin up and down like he was a piece of meat. Come on, he's so good looking. I crossed my arms. I'm not asking him to sit with us. Haley shot me a mischievous smile. That's all right. I'll ask him. Haley, no! I grabbed her arm and was about to say something more, but she was already waving at him. He smiled, walked over to our table, and, of course, sat next to me. Haley greeted him in an upbeat, high-pitched tone. Hey, I'm Haley. You must be Justin. He raised his eyebrows. How do you know my name? Haley beamed. The whole school knows it. Since Hidden Shores is kind of small, we end up knowing everyone. Cool, cool. Justin glanced over at me. How long have you guys been friends? We've basically known each other since birth, Haley said. That's awesome. I bet you have a lot of dirt on each other. I looked at him with raised eyebrows. Excuse me? He cleared his throat. I mean, I bet you guys have tons to talk about. Haley shot him a flirtatious smile. Tons. I was starting to think Haley had a thing for Justin, and in a way, I was kind of jealous. When I dated Asher, he flirted with every girl that came his way. Since then, I didn't trust any guy. If Haley had feelings for Justin, then I couldn't help but wonder if he had feelings for her, too. So, Justin, what do you do for fun? Haley asked. He paused a moment to chew his food before he answered. I longboard. Is that all you do? I mean, don't you have a job or something? I asked in a snarky tone. Justin only smiled, which confused me. Why was he being so nice when I kept shooting him down? Actually, I do have a job. Oh, really? Does it involve hitting on girls you barely know? No, it doesn't. I got a job as a bagger at the local market. Haley's face lit up even more. That's awesome! Justin smiled. You'll have to come in and see me sometime. I did not like where this was going. The last thing I needed was Haley dragging me to the store so that she could flirt with Justin. I had a feeling she liked him, and there was basically nothing I could do about it. Then again, why should I care? It wasn't like I wanted to take this guy seriously. After all, I barely knew him. I was jolted out of my thoughts when Brett, who had previously struck up a conversation with Justin in Algebra about longboarding, walked up to us with a lunch tray in hand. Hey, can I sit with you guys? Yeah, man, grab a seat, Justin said. Brett sat next to Haley. I wasn't sure how I felt about two boys joining us during lunch, especially since one of them attacked me today. At the same time, Haley did invite Justin to sit here. It wasn't like I could ask them to leave, right? 
Brett leaned over to the new boy. You should come over and longboard with me sometime. I live in a neighborhood that has lots of hills that are pretty sick. Cool, man. Where do you live? Justin asked. I recently moved into London Village. My mouth started to open, but I promptly shut it. Hey, that's where Michaela lives, Haley blurted out. Justin shot me a coy smile that made my inside squirm. How could someone so infuriatingly annoying be so attractive at the same time? In that case, I'll be there for sure, Justin said. I put my hand over my eyes in an attempt to cover my true feelings and blurted out, Oh, brother. Haley's face lit up. I've always wanted to learn how to longboard. Can I join you guys? Sure, we'd be down to teach you, Brett said. Can Michaela come too? Haley asked with a hint of hope in her voice. That depends. Does she want to come? Justin asked. I didn't like longboards very much, especially since I was recently slapped in the face with one. At the same time, it wasn't like I had anything else to do. Yeah, I guess. Justin's eyes lit up. Okay, let me get this straight. You want to learn to longboard. That's what I said. Justin flashed me a crooked grin. Then let's make a deal. I'll teach you to longboard if you agree to go on a date with me. What kind of deal is that? My voice came out higher than I expected. Brett smiled. I'd say it's a win-win situation for both of you. He slapped hands with Justin and gave him a fist bump. My attention shifted when my phone vibrated through my jeans. I pulled it out and unlocked it, noticing a message from Haley. Please agree to the deal. I really want to spend time with Brett. Then I felt someone looking over my shoulder. Whoever you're texting better be hot, Justin said. I tried to hide my smile. Oh, he's hot all right, I lied. Oh yeah? What's his name? He asked with an edge in his voice. That's not important. Anyway, I've decided to take you up on your offer. Justin's face was filled with so much excitement, you could have thought he had won the lottery. For real? Can I have your number now? He smirked. I nodded. Sure. I gave him my number. He smiled triumphantly as I handed him back his phone. The bell rang. The cafeteria exploded with loud chatter as students got up from their seats, making their way to the large double doors. This was the perfect opportunity for me to break away from Justin. I hopped up from the table, beelining for the exit, but it was no use. He caught up to me in a nanosecond. Sweet, I'll see you later today then. I waved. See you. Chapter 4, Michaela I walked into journalism at 3.15 p.m. and put my backpack on the floor next to my favorite desk. Mrs. Holly, the teacher, wasn't in the room. I found a handwritten note saying she couldn't make it to the meeting, asking me to take over since I was a senior editor. I smiled. This is going to be a fun year. I doodled in my notebook as I waited for people to trickle into the room. Haley was the first to join me. Hey, I didn't know you were interested in journalism this year, I said, giving her a high five. In two strides, Haley was next to me. She set her books down on top of a neighboring desk and plopped into a seat. As you know, I've always wanted to be in journalism, she said. I never had the time to do it until now since I quit marching band. Why do you do that? She shrugged. It took up too much of my life and I wasn't able to get all my homework done. Well, I'm glad I have you. Journalism is my favorite part of the school day. It's nice that you will be a part of it. Jamin walked into the room with a phone in hand, rapidly speaking Korean. He pushed back the large black-rimmed glasses that were sliding down his nose beneath the head of jet black hair. I cleared my throat and spoke up in a loud voice. Welcome to journalism. I waited a moment for everyone to calm down. Mrs. Holly won't be able to attend class today. She left me in charge. I straightened the stack of papers in front of me. 
I have a feeling this is going to be a great year. I've been thinking of adding an advice column to the newspaper. Any thoughts? Haley raised her hand. I think it's an awesome idea. Maybe you could help solve people's dating problems. I beamed and clasped my hands together. I love that. Does anyone else have any thoughts? Jamin raised his hand. Is it going to be anonymous, or will everyone know who is answering their questions? Actually, I think it would be a great idea to make it anonymous. That way it will add mystery to the newspaper. Maybe people will get excited about it and try to figure out who's writing the column. The one asking the questions needs to be anonymous, too. No one wants the world to know their drama, Haley burst out. I was about to say something more, but the door opened, and Justin popped his head in. Is this journalism? Yes, it is. Are you lost? I can't believe he followed me here. It was flattering, but at the same time a little strange. He came in and closed the door. No, this is exactly what I signed up for. Okay, then take a seat. I mean, sure it was kind of odd he was here, but it wasn't like I could kick him out, right? I pulled some hair out of my eyes and stood up straighter. Does anyone have any ideas for other parts of the newspaper? Justin raised his hand. I sighed. Yes, Justin? Why don't we write an article about the new kid? Oh, great. He was going to make the newspaper all about himself. Typical. Well, that's not... Haley cut me off. I think that's an awesome idea. We should have a series of articles that spotlights different students in the school. We could start with Justin. She turned to me. What do you say, Michaela? Can we do it? I shrugged. I guess so. How does everyone plan on contributing to the newspaper? I asked. I would like to write a sports column, Jamin said. I smiled. Excellent. What about you, Haley? I want to be the one to write the article about Justin. That worried me a little bit, but I didn't want everyone to know that. I exhaled. Okay, well, good luck. A blonde girl with braids spoke up. I think it would be fun to write articles about the latest fashions. That sounds great. After a couple of minutes, everyone in the room had said what they wanted to do, except Justin. I cocked an eyebrow. So, Justin, how are you going to contribute to the newspaper? I already have it all figured out. I'm going to take pictures of all the hot girls at random school events. And who gave you permission to do that? Justin smirked. Who needs permission to hit on girls and take their picture? I crossed my arms. If it's for the newspaper, then it has to be approved by me, and each person would have to sign a release form. Jamin turned to me. We really need a photographer now that Mason's gone. He said in a hushed tone. Crap, I had forgotten he moved. I bit my lip. Justin was already in so many of my classes. Did I really have to deal with him during journalism as well? Then again... We did need a new cameraman, and it wasn't like there were a lot of options. Okay, since we don't have anyone else, you can be our photographer, I said. He smiled. I'm glad you've come to your senses. The next order of business is getting questions for the advice column. Because no one knows about it yet, we'll have to come up with the first couple of questions ourselves. Everyone, get out half a piece of paper and write a question. And please don't put your names on it. I don't need to know which problem belongs to whom. Who's going to be writing the advice column? Justin asked. I smirked. That would be me. Justin gave me a lopsided grin. Even better. I decided not to respond to his last comment. He didn't need any kind of encouragement. I watched as one by one they folded their pieces of paper and handed them to me. Okay, thank you. I'll work on answering these when I get home. See you next week. Everyone was putting their stuff away when Justin walked up to me. Hey, so I guess I'll see you later? A couple people taunted us. Ooh. 
Looks like someone has a hot date, a girl said. It's not a date, I smirked. It's not really anything. Jamin laughed at Justin. Dude, you just got told. He shrugged it off. Yeah, whatever. She knows she wants me. As I walked away, I turned back. That's what you think. I stepped outside. My heavy backpack caused my shoulders to slouch over my feet. I took a seat on a cement bench. I had to wait for my ride because my mom was unreasonably strict and wouldn't let me get my license until I was 17. So lame. Everyone else got to drive a year before me. It seemed like the day I could drive myself to and from school would never come. As I waited, I pulled out one of the scraps of paper for the advice column. I'm trying to get the attention of this girl, but she keeps turning me down. What can I do to get her to like me? I crumpled the piece of paper as soon as I read it. I didn't need anyone looking over my shoulder reading what it said. Was it from Justin? If it was, I was surprised at how bold he was in his note. It had to be him, right? I mean, who else could it be from? After a couple of minutes, my aunt's red SUV pulled up in front of the school. I walked over to her car and opened the door. She smiled and pushed her blonde bangs out of her face. Hey girl, your mom was in the middle of grocery shopping and asked me to pick you up. How was school? I sat down and closed the door behind me. Hey Aunt Bethany, it was great. I even made a new friend. I laughed to myself at the idea of Justin being considered a friend. She asked with a teasing tone. By friend, do you mean boyfriend? I resisted the urge to roll my eyes. He is a boy, but I wouldn't consider him boyfriend material. She smiled and pulled out of the parking lot. And why not? I don't know him very well yet, but he seems arrogant. Confidence isn't a bad thing, sweetheart. There was a difference between being arrogant and being confident. I knew that for sure. I didn't have to know Justin that well to be able to picture him standing in front of his mirror admiring himself. Trust me, this kid is full of himself. Do you think you might have misjudged him? A lot of times our first impressions of people aren't accurate. I didn't want to openly disagree with my aunt. She was usually right about everything. But at the same time, I didn't want to change my stance on the Justin subject. I don't know about that, but I do know he's coming over in a few minutes to go longboarding. Ooh, she cooed. Is it just the two of you? I shook my head. No, Haley and another guy are joining us. It's kind of a group thing. That's great. She turned into my neighborhood, and before I knew it, we had arrived at my house. Thanks for the ride, Aunt Bethany. I appreciate it. Sure thing. I started to walk away, and she said, Hey, Michaela? I turned around and asked, Yes? Do me a favor and be nice to that poor boy. You're so beautiful. I can only imagine how hard it would be if you turned him down. I laughed and shook my head. I'll try. Chapter 5. Justin It was 4 p.m. as I pulled into London Village, the subdivision where both Brett and Michaela lived. A large black gate blocked me from entering. I leaned out my window to check if there was a security guard working, but I didn't see anyone around. I searched through my phone for the school's app with everyone's numbers in it. I found Brett Lopez's name and pressed the call button. He picked up on the second ring. Hey man, it's Justin. Can you let me into your neighborhood? Yeah, bro. Hold on. I waited a second. Then I watched as the massive gate opened with the mechanical whine. The houses were all large and built from brick. I peered down at my iPhone to check Brett's address. I kept driving until I found Brett longboarding on the sidewalk. I rolled down my window. Hey, what's up? He hopped off his board and walked over to me. 
Are you looking for Michaela's house? No, I was looking for yours. Brett tipped his head back and laughed. Sure, that's what you were doing. Anyway, Michaela lives two houses down from here. You should go knock on her door and get her to come out. I wasn't sure how I felt about knocking on her door. Maybe I could longboard past her house a few times and see if she would catch on. Okay, I'll see what I can do. I drove up to her two-story house and parked on the side of the road. I took a deep breath and grabbed my board from the back seat. I reached the sidewalk and pushed my foot against the pavement to get me going. I sped past her house, but nothing happened. I decided to switch it up a little bit. I started at the top of the hill and it glided down at top speed. I leaned backward, causing my butt to stick out as I bent my knees, putting me in a sitting position close to the ground. As I slowed down, I could feel someone watching me. When I turned around, I spotted Haley standing on the porch, looking ecstatic. Hey, you! That was awesome! Haley cooed. I smiled, basking in my own small victory. Thanks. How did you get here so fast? I practically live here. I'm at Michaela's house like every day. She paused and then stuck her head in the door and yelled, Michaela, your boyfriend's here. Michaela yelled something back. I couldn't understand what she said, but she sounded frustrated. It was hilarious that Haley called me Michaela's boyfriend. Hopefully, it would only be a matter of time before that became a reality. I waited a couple minutes, and Michaela finally came out. Her hair was in a ponytail. Two curls had escaped and framed her face. Her purple t-shirt said, No one cares. How fitting. It was like she mocked me by wearing that shirt. But at the same time, I couldn't keep my eyes off her. She looked so good, even in a t-shirt, one that mocked me no less. Are you going to teach me how to skate, or are you going to keep gawking at me? Her question caught me off guard. I wasn't used to girls being so upfront. I, uh, yeah. I stayed at the end of her driveway and waited until Michaela walked down her porch steps. Haley laughed and swiped the board from my hands. Here, let me try. She pushed off the pavement and flew down the sidewalk. Next thing I knew, she had caught up to where Brett and his twin, Brennan, stood on their lawn. She must have lied when she said she didn't know how to longboard. She probably wanted an excuse to hang out with us. I was impressed at her skills. She skated like a pro. It didn't take long before Michaela ran after her. I wondered why she didn't want to be around me much. Maybe it had something to do with my longboard falling on her face. But... I thought by now she would have been over it. Either way, I wasn't ready to give up on her. I jogged toward them, and Michaela scoffed as I passed her like she was standing still. It wasn't hard to do since she was only about 50 feet ahead of me. Little did she know that I did track at my old school. I finally caught up to Brett and Haley. She laughed and touched Brett's arm. Brennan grinned, clearly amused at Haley's attempts to get his twin. Did she have a thing for Brett? That would be great. She could get with Brett, and I could get with Michaela. Brennan was already in a relationship, which became apparent when I caught him kissing a girl under the stairs at school today. Michaela caught up to us. What the heck, Haley? Why did you run off like that? Loosen up, Kayla. Haley laughed. We're just having some fun. Michaela raised an eyebrow. Hey, I told you I don't like it when you call me Kayla. What's wrong with being called Kayla? She shook her head. It doesn't sound like me. Girls were so weird. I had no idea why every little detail made her upset. I agreed with Haley. Michaela really did need to loosen up. Maybe her ponytail was too tight. She probably needed someone to undo it for her. The thought caused my lip to curve up. Michaela looked at me with an annoyed expression on her face. Why are you smiling? I smirked. Because you're pretty funny when you get angry over stuff that doesn't matter. Really? My anger amuses you?
I laughed. Yeah, pretty much. She folded her arms across her chest. Whatever, let's just get this over with. I took the board from Haley and placed it on the ground adjacent to the sidewalk. Let's see if you can handle standing on it in the grass first. She rolled her eyes. Why does she always do that? She stepped on the board. Obviously, I can handle it here. Okay, that was a joke. She stepped off the board and I put it on the sidewalk. Now step on. Her eyes increased about three sizes. Wait, come here. I need something to hold on to. I liked the sound of that. She could hold on to me anytime. She laid her hand on my shoulder as she gingerly stepped onto the longboard. The board shook as she tried to steady herself. I peered into her eyes and realized she was scared. That must be why she was hesitating to learn. She had a fear of longboarding. Here, I have an idea. Take my hands and I'll walk with you while you skate until you can get the hang of it. She placed her hand in mine and it felt like it was always meant to be there. I felt her look at me. When I glanced back at her, she snapped her head in the opposite direction. The more she tried to resist me, the more I wanted to win her over. You're doing great. Are you ready for me to let go? Her eyes bugged out. No way. This is hard enough. If you let go, I might crash and land on my face. I grinned mischievously. And wouldn't that be entertaining? She shot me a glare that was so cold, I felt myself getting chills. What's her problem? Why does she have to look at me like she hates me? She needs to calm down and not take everything I say so seriously. Hey, I'm joking. I put my hands up in the air. You need to lighten up. I realized when I put my hands up, I was no longer holding on to her. She swayed back and forth, attempting to gain her balance. She glanced back at me. Hey, why'd you let go? I smiled and tried to reassure her. Don't worry, you're doing fine. I grabbed her hand to keep her steady. Her eyes widened and she lifted her eyebrows. Are you okay? I asked. I am perfectly fine. She turned her head toward me. There's nothing to this longboarding thing. Glad to hear it. Are you ready for me to let go again? She nodded and I released her hand. But as soon as I did, her legs started shaking. I could tell she was having a hard time keeping her balance. Do you need help? She started skating, moving forward at a slow pace while I stayed a few steps behind her. No, she said with a forceful tone to her voice. I'm going to figure this out on my own. She continued skating and I walked a safe distance behind her. She reached the top of the hill, and as she began to descend, her legs shook even more than earlier. Panic set in as she looked around frantically and jumped off the board. Her upper body landed in the grass, but she scraped her knee on the pavement. I rushed over to her. Are you okay? She blew some hair out of her face. I'm fine. It's just a little scrape, that's all. Haley, Brennan, and Brett ran toward us. What happened? Haley asked. I jumped off the board because I didn't want to go downhill. Then I skinned my knee. She shrugged. It's no big deal. I'm glad it wasn't worse than it was, Haley said in a rush. Me too. Michaela hesitated for a moment before saying, I should probably head back home. I have a lot of homework to do. Seriously, you've been out here for like half a second, Brennan stated. Brett raised his eyebrows. Yeah, really? Homework on the first day of school? Yeah, really? I stuttered out the words. How much more desperate can I be? Well, yeah, Michaela said. I have to answer the questions for journalism. Those will probably take a while. I bet as soon as she read the stack of questions... She would immediately know which one was mine. I couldn't wait to see what her response would be. And the longer I thought about it, the harder my heart banged inside my chest. Chapter 6. Justin 
A week went by, and not much changed between Michaela and me. I got turned down so often, I stopped trying. Maybe I needed to be on the lookout for a new girl. One who wasn't going to treat me like I was lame. Someone who could be a real friend, and at the same time, find me attractive in a romantic sort of way. I scanned the cafeteria and spotted a table of girls reading the school's newspaper. They were pointing at an article and giggling. It took me a second before I remembered that Haley wrote about me in the paper. I wondered if I was what they were so excited about. I hadn't read the newspaper yet. I reached into my backpack and pulled it out. I was on the front page. The New Kid on the Block by Haley McGettigan. This school has a new kid in town, and his name is Justin Bifford. He has curly brown hair and a smile that would cause any girl's heart to melt. He is a highly skilled longboarder. Justin is also a huge history buff. My sources say that in his first day of history class, he was the only one to answer every question the teacher had correctly. This tells us that he's not only cute and talented, but he's also smart. The best part about Justin is that he's single, so watch out, ladies. I couldn't believe Haley wrote all that about me. She must have it bad. And if Haley had a thing for me, then maybe it wouldn't be long before Michaela felt the same. That reminded me. Michaela might have answered my question. I flipped through the paper until I found the advice column. It was titled, Dear Claire. I assumed that was Michaela's pen name. Dear Claire, I keep trying to get this girl's attention, but she keeps rejecting me. What should I do to win her over? You should try acting differently around her. Instead of hitting on her, maybe you should focus more on getting to know her. Maybe there's a reason she's rejecting you. It could be that something happened to her in the past that is keeping her from accepting you. Maybe it's the real reason you're not discovering the success you desire. Did something happen to her in the past? I bet it had to do with her ex-boyfriend. It could be that he treated her so badly that she decided all guys were jerks. My thoughts were interrupted when someone tapped me on the shoulder. It was a girl with dark curly hair and dimples, she looked kind of like Michaela. Even the mere thought of her made me ecstatic. Are you Justin? She asked, smiling ear to ear. I returned her smile and leaned back in my chair. Why, yes, yes I am. I said with a hint of swag in my tone. Her face lit up like it was the best news she had heard all day. I read about you in the school newspaper, and I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Ivy. I swung out my hand, and she grabbed it in a tight hold. I admired a girl with a firm handshake. I think I liked her already. Nice to meet you. She took a seat in front of me and placed her face in both of her hands. So, you like longboarding? Yeah, I love it. Her smile grew twice the size that it was before. I'm a longboarder myself. We should make out and go longboarding sometime. Did I hear her right? I swore she just said she wanted to make out with me. This was going even better than I thought it would. What did you say? I mean a hangout. She let out a fake cough. Yeah, I said we should hang out. Sure, that's what she said. I was about to respond, but I felt someone watching me. I turned to see Michaela staring at us through squinted eyes. She looked like she was ready to kill. It seemed like this girl was the key to getting Michaela's attention. Maybe Michaela just needed some competition. I glanced back and smiled at Ivy. Sounds good to me. I tuned her out when I heard Haley say to Michaela, you should go join them before Ivy steals your man. He's not my... Ow! I guessed that Haley must have elbowed her or something. I had a feeling my plan to make Michaela jealous was working. Hello? Are you even listening to me? Ivy asked. I shook my head, attempting to bring myself back to reality. 
I'm sorry. What were you saying? I said, I'm free to skate after school tomorrow if you're up for it. Oh, sorry, I can't. Journalism is tomorrow. That's okay. We'll have to do it some other time. Are you going to the fall fling this weekend? I don't know. I shrugged. Why? I was hoping you would save me a dance. That is, if you're coming. She winked and then got up and left. I glanced back to see what Michaela's reaction was to Ivy winking at me. Her face was red, and she gripped the edges of her table. I tried to keep myself from laughing. It was so funny when she got all frustrated and jealous. I should make her mad more often. It was highly amusing. The warning bell rang, and Michaela stormed off toward the exit as Haley walked in my direction. As Haley got closer, she waved and took a seat at my table. Hey, we need to talk. I flashed her a smile. About the article you wrote about me in the newspaper? Her face turned bright pink. Actually, it has nothing to do with that. Then what is it? I wanted to know what's going on with you and Ivy. She emphasized the word Ivy like it was poison in her mouth. I smiled innocently. Why do you care? She has a reputation of chasing boys hardcore until they agree to be her boyfriend. I see. I tilted my head to the side. What does this have to do with you? It has to do with me because Michaela's my best friend. And I think we both know she's the one you really want. But clearly, Michaela isn't interested. A smile crept across Haley's face. I wouldn't give up on her that easily. I dropped my fork. Do you think Michaela has feelings for me? She smiled like she had a secret. I never told you anything. The bell rang, and everyone got up from their seats. The room became so loud that I couldn't even hear myself think. Here's my number. If you'd like to talk more, send me a text. I took the piece of paper. Uh, thanks. I stared at it long after she'd left. I had a feeling that this crumpled up piece of paper was going to get me far. It was like I held the key to finding out more about Michaela without having to get rejected in the process. And I bet it wouldn't be long before Haley told me the truth about what's been going on with Michaela. I had to know the real reason why she kept shooting me down. Chapter 7, Michaela I sat on my bed reading a book when a knock sounded at my door. Who is it? It's Haley. Come in. She came in and sat down on my queen-sized bed. My walls were white, and I had hot pink curtains on my windows. My bedspread had a black and white paisley design. In fact, the whole room was black and white, besides the curtains. Don't you have homework? Forget about that! She threw her hands in the air. I have to talk to you. Okay, what's up? It's about Justin. I need to know if you're interested in him. Why? I asked in an annoyed tone. Because I'm your best friend and I need to know. I turned away from her so that she couldn't see my face. I think he's a good-looking guy, but I don't know if I like him or not. She pointed at me. That's a lie. What do you mean that's a lie? I said, trying to sound nonchalant. I've seen the way you look at him when you think nobody's watching. So? I shrugged. I look his way now and then. It doesn't mean anything. Come on, Michaela. You know you like him. I bet you loved it when he kept trying to flirt with you last week. Don't you miss him constantly trying to get your attention? No. I crossed my arms. Well, I do. I think it's so funny. This might sound crazy, but I think you two would make the perfect couple. You can't be serious, I exclaimed. We probably won't end up together. Didn't you see him today? He was talking to Ivy. 
If she's interested in him, then it wouldn't matter if I liked him or not. Ivy always gets what she wants. Haley shook her head emphatically. That's not true. You could totally take her. He doesn't want her. He wants you. I bet he even joined journalism so that he could see you more often. That's ridiculous. My eyebrows shot up. He did it so that he could take pictures of all the hot girls, remember? Obviously, he came up with a cover story so it didn't look like he only joined because he's obsessed with you. Whoa, obsessed? How do you know that? I, uh, I don't. I'm just guessing. I had a feeling she knew more than she said she did. I saw you, talking to him at lunch. What were you guys talking about? I, er, we were talking about what I should write about in the next newspaper. Right, and how did that go? I said in a sarcastic voice. Haley forced a smile. It went great. We decided I'll write about Brett in the next issue. Oh, really? Yep. She paused and looked around the room nervously. That's what we talked about. I didn't believe a word she said. She wasn't the best liar. I wanted to know the truth about why she talked to him. I wondered if they were secretly interested in each other and were trying to cover their tracks. Haley did write a pretty flirty article about him in the newspaper. I ran my fingers through my hair, twirling a curl around my finger. I read what you wrote about Justin, and it made me wonder, do you have a thing for him? Haley's eyes widened. Oh, gosh, no. I don't like him like that at all. I was joking around. I thought if I acted like I had a thing for him, then more people would want to read the paper. Your plan worked, I said in a low voice. I saw more people reading it today than ever before. Probably every girl in the school wants Justin now. Haley giggled. I know, right? I guess I'm a pretty convincing writer. Yeah, almost too convincing. Chapter 8. Michaela My T-length dress swayed as I made my way into the gym. Intricate lights hung across the ceiling, and multiple couples danced below. I bit my lip and took a deep breath. Haley walked in with me, and I turned to her for emotional support. I was about to say something, but before I could, she went to scout out the food. Great. Now I have to be by myself. I searched the room and found Justin in the far corner of the gym with a red solo cup in hand. His mouth curved up into a halfway smile when he spotted me. I took a few steps in his direction. When Ivy noticed, she glared. I blinked, and she started walking toward him, too. Only, she had the advantage because she had longer legs, and she was already standing closer to Justin to start with. I tried speeding up, but I couldn't go too fast because I was wearing stilettos. I knew if I wasn't careful, I'd probably end up falling on my face. Of course, Ivy reached him before me. She pulled on Justin's green tie, forcing him to step closer to her. Ready to dance? He grinned and said something I couldn't hear. Anger surged through my body, and it took everything within me to refrain from saying or doing something that I would regret. Ivy wanted him, and she wasn't going to let anyone get in her way. Justin was supposed to be interested in me, not her. That curly-haired freak was going to mess it all up. I sat at a table and Haley joined me. I was so angry that I dug my nails into the palms of my hands. Haley drew her eyebrows together. Are you okay? I left to go get a cookie. I come back and you have an eat poop and die look on your face. I'm perfectly fine. Never been happier. I said through clenched teeth. Sure you are. Hey, where's Justin? I don't know where he is. I lied. 
Haley squinted and scanned the dark gym. Oh, I see him now. Hey, he's with Ivy. Her eyes enlarged. No wonder you're upset. I'm definitely not upset, I shrugged. I'm perfectly fine, okay? Why don't you ask him to dance the next song? Are you out of your mind? Haley laughed. No, I'm serious. The song finally came to an end, and Haley said, I'm going to go talk to him. Okay, whatever. Haley walked in his direction, and her heels clicked as she went. I sashayed through the thick of the crowd and ended up at a table close enough to listen to their conversation. Hey, Justin, you should ask Michaela to dance, Haley said in a loud voice. He looked puzzled. Why would I do that? It's not like I enjoy being turned down. Justin turned his back to Ivy, giving Haley his full attention. Ivy scoffed and stormed off. Haley smiled and shook her head. No, you've got it all wrong. I think she wants you to dance with her. Really? Justin asked. Did she change overnight or something? Haley laughed. Yeah, something like that. I snuck back to the other side of the gym so that they wouldn't suspect I heard anything. After reaching the table, I sat down, crossed my legs, and tried to act natural. Justin walked toward me with a huge grin on his face. Would you like to dance? Yeah, sure. My heart felt like it was going to explode, and I tried not to allow my face to give away my true feelings. He offered me his arm, and I hooked mine through his. He led me to a spot in the middle of the dance floor. I wrapped my arms around his neck, and his hands landed on my lower back, almost touching my butt. Where did he get the nerve to place his hands so low down? He had no right, especially since he was flirting with Ivy only a few minutes ago. Although I was frustrated, I didn't want to make a scene in front of everyone at school. That would be giving Ivy exactly what she wanted. In an attempt to make things less awkward, I nonchalantly picked up his hands and placed them on the middle of my back. The color in his face burned a bright red. Ugh, sorry about that. Whatever, I said as I looked down at my feet. After that, neither one of us felt like talking. It got to a point where I had to break the silence. So, how is your longboarding coming? It's coming. I went down the mountain where I live, and I ended up going 90 miles an hour. That sounded too fast to be accurate, but I decided to just go with it. Wow, that's super fast. What mountain do you live on? Blackfoot. It's about 30 minutes from here. He spun me around, and I couldn't help but be impressed. Just about everyone who lived on Blackfoot Mountain was rolling in money. His parents must be super wealthy. All of a sudden, I felt uncomfortable dancing with him. My family was well off, but we didn't have half as much money as most of the people who lived on Blackfoot Mountain. Are you all right? Justin asked. You look a little pale. Me? I let out a nervous laugh. Yeah, I'm fine. The song ended, and he escorted me back to my table. Haley grinned. How did it go? I bit my lip and looked away. It was definitely interesting. I was about to tell her more when someone tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around. Can I have the next dance? Brett asked me with raised eyebrows. Sure. I felt a little bit guilty as I noticed the sad look on Haley's face. He led me to the dance floor and we began dancing. I thought he looked especially good in his black shirt and silver tie. Yet, at the same time, it wasn't like dancing with Justin. Despite Justin getting handsy, it was fun dancing with him. Almost romantic. Brett asked with a grin, How are you liking the dance? It's definitely not boring, that's for sure. 
He smiled and didn't say anything for a while. I felt kind of strange dancing with Brett. I used to have a thing for him my freshman year. I chased him hardcore, but he barely noticed me. He didn't give me the time of day because he was too busy chasing after blonde cheerleaders. That's one of the reasons I became so bitter toward boys. In fact, Brett was a big part of the reason I'd been so rude to Justin. I figured since they were longboarders, they would probably treat me badly. Not to mention Asher, who was worse than both combined. I looked over my shoulder and saw Justin talking to Haley. He laughed loudly at something she said. I couldn't shake the feeling that they might like each other. Then again, if they did like each other, then why was Haley always trying to set us up? Justin walked over and tapped Brett on the shoulder. When he turned around, Justin said, Can I cut in? Yeah, of course. Next thing I knew, I was dancing with Justin again. I was impressed that he was brave enough to do that, especially after I moved his hand the last time he danced with me. He was persistent, I'd give him that. He pulled me closer, and his scent filled my lungs. He was wearing cologne, but I couldn't identify it. What are you wearing? He laughed. Um, clothes? I turned red and glared at him. I mean, what brand of cologne? Armani. Why, do you like it? I felt so awkward when he said that. It was like he was practically asking me if I liked him. I didn't know how to tell him. Oh, hey, I like the way you smell, but don't get the wrong idea. I don't actually like you. I could imagine how that would go down. Or did I like him? I was confused. Maybe I wasn't so sure anymore. Instead, I said, yeah, it's okay, I guess. Right when I was starting to feel bad that no one had asked Haley to dance, Jamin approached her, and they walked out to the dance floor together. I found it unusual that no one asked her to dance until then. Haley was a pretty girl. I guess there just weren't enough guys at the dance to go around. Before I knew it, the music came to an end. I didn't know why, but I wished the song would have been longer. Maybe it was because I liked the way he smelled. Or maybe it was because I was in self-denial. Maybe I did like him after all. Justin smiled at me and said, Thanks for the dance. I smiled weakly. Yeah, sure thing. Justin took my arm, and we walked toward the table where Haley was sitting and talking to Jamin. We stopped a few steps away. So, he said, and gave a faint cough. Do you remember the deal we made? What deal? I asked with raised eyebrows. The deal we made that involved you going out with me. When did I ever agree to that? Justin looked at the ceiling as he tried to remember. I think it was at lunch about a week ago. Haley piped in. Yeah, I remember. The deal was that if he taught us to longboard, then you would go on a date with him. Haley laughed at the idea. Somehow, I didn't think it was funny. Justin smiled. So, you want to go? I opened my mouth to say absolutely not, but Haley beat me to the punch when she said she'd love to go. Great. Justin said with a winning smile. I'll pick you up tomorrow night at seven. But tomorrow I'm hanging out with Haley, I stammered. Not anymore, Haley said with a sneaky grin. And why is that? I demanded. She shifted on her feet. Because I have to help my grandma give her cat a bath. Since when does your grandma have a cat? As of today... Haley stated matter-of-factly. She just texted me about it. I shot her a glare that could kill. Dang, Justin said and laughed. That's an intense stare you got going on. I'd be scared to be Haley right now. Nah, I'm used to it. 
Haley said, before smiling and giving me her world-famous eyebrow wiggle. I exhaled loudly. Okay, okay, I'll go. Just stop looking at me like that. Woohoo! Haley said and gave Justin a high five. Chapter 9, Justin I sat in my car in Michaela's driveway on the following night, debating whether or not I should go to the door. I clenched my fingers around the steering wheel and gave an audible sigh. The last time we spoke, she sounded like she didn't really want to go out with me. It was a miracle that she agreed. I'd have to thank Haley later. I felt my phone vibrate. It was a text from Brett. Hey, bro, I noticed you've been sitting in your car for the past ten minutes. You should walk up to her house and say hi. She won't bite. I slid my fingers quickly over the keyboard. Man, are you stalking me or something? And, by the way, I'm pretty sure she does bite. Hard. Ha <laughs> ha. Within a minute, he responded. I'm not stalking you. You're in my neighborhood, after all. Get off your butt and go in there. I don't know about this anymore. He texted back after another five minutes had passed. I messaged Michaela and told her how lame you're being. She said she would cancel the date if it's too much for you. Seriously, dude. I can't believe you did that. Man, what did I ever do to you? I never told her any of that. I was joking. But I will tell her what's going on if you don't get out of your car. I quickly jumped out and landed on my feet. I'm up. You can chill out now, lol. As I walked up her driveway, I shook to my bones. I had never been this nervous taking out a girl before. I needed to snap out of it. Where the heck was my confidence? I gulped and knocked. A petite woman with short, curly hair opened the door. She smiled. Hi, I'm Tammy, Michaela's mom. You must be Justin. It's so nice to meet you. I smiled back. It's nice to meet you, too. She motioned inside. Please, come in. She led me through the foyer into the dining room where we stopped in front of the stairway. Her house had high ceilings and was full of what looked like expensive furniture. Justin's here, Michaela's mom yelled up the stairs. Michaela popped out of a room near the top of the stairs. As she walked down, I tried to keep my mouth from hanging open. I had never seen her with straight hair before. It looked silky and soft. I imagined what it would be like to run my fingers through it, and I had to force myself to breathe normally. When she reached the bottom of the stairs, she said, Well, are you going to say something, or are you going to keep staring at me? Sorry, it's just, I've never seen you with straight hair before. She flipped her hair behind her shoulder. Really? You like it? I smiled. Yeah, you're beautiful. Her mom raised her eyebrows at me. I stammered. I mean, your hair, it's beautiful, uh, not you. Her mom said, You mean to say that my daughter isn't beautiful? Michaela put her hand over her eyes. Please, tell me this isn't happening. I laughed. What am I saying? Of course she's beautiful. Right when I thought it couldn't get any more awkward, a man with a shotgun walked in the room, who I assumed was her dad. He cocked it back and said, What's your name, boy? My eyes enlarged about three sizes, and it felt like my heart stopped beating. Well? He asked. Just, Justin. He laughed. Nice to meet you, Just Justin. My name's Bryant. Honey, put the gun down, her mom demanded. You're scaring Michaela's date. Michaela said under her breath, Mom, it's not a date. I wanted to interject and say that it was a date, but I didn't feel comfortable saying anything considering her father was holding a shotgun. He lowered his gun. You guys better go before it gets late. Michaela's mom said. I turned to Michaela and looped her arm around mine. Let's go, Kayla. Her mom clasped her hands together. Aw, 
He has a nickname for you. Michaela's cheeks turned a light shade of pink. I smiled at the small victory of making her feel uncomfortable. We walked to the car, and as she was reaching for the handle, I slipped around her, opening it before she had the chance. You didn't have to do that, she said, and her blush only deepened. Justin, your hands are shaking. No, my hands aren't shaking. I get guns pointed at me all the time. It doesn't bother me a bit. I lied. She giggled. I am so sorry about that. If it is any comfort to you, I am pretty sure it wasn't loaded. Yeah, I'm comforted. I shot her a reassuring smile and walked to the other side of the car before sliding onto the white leather seat. Michaela flipped her hair and grinned. So where are we going? Bella Cucina. It's an Italian restaurant. Her face instantly transformed into an annoyed smirk. I hope you're paying. I don't have money for that. I lifted my eyebrows. I thought that it was expected that the guy would pay. I wondered what kind of guy she'd been going out with. Of course I'm paying. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. I pay my own way sometimes. You can never be too sure. I turned to look at her. Really? With whom? I'd rather not say. She looked away from me. Wow. What? She asked with an edge in her voice. That's really classy of you for not wanting to give the person away. Although, I'd really like to know. She crossed her arms. I'm not going to tell you. Was it Brett? She said in a defensive voice. Brett? Why do you think it's him? I shrugged. I don't know. Maybe because he's one of the only people I know at school. She exhaled. Oh, okay. Keep guessing. Was it that Asian guy from journalism? What was his name? Er, Jason? She rolled her eyes. His name is Jamin, and no, it's not him. Suddenly, it hit me who she was talking about. It's your ex, isn't it? What makes you think that? He just seemed like that type of guy. I could tell by the way he knocked my books off my desk that he was not a keeper, I said with a faint laugh. She rubbed her hand on the back of her neck. I found it strangely attractive. Yeah, you're right. It was him. Our eyes locked, and I took a deep breath. I would never do anything like that. I don't want to mistreat you in any way. I thought I saw a flicker of hope in her eyes when she said, Really? Really. Then I took a risk. I took her hand and slid my fingers through hers. I looked at her, and to my surprise, she was smiling, actually smiling. It was like I finally did something right. I pulled into the parking lot of the restaurant. I reluctantly removed my hand from hers. Will she ever let me hold her hand a second time? I walked to her side of the car and opened the door for her. This time she smiled even bigger. Thanks, Justin. Who knew? Maybe with the way she was smiling at me, I could have her hand back in mine in no time. Or maybe I was kidding myself. How could she ever like me the way I liked her? I would do anything if I could get her to feel about me even a small percent of how I felt about her. We walked to the front of the restaurant. I opened the door for her once again. Wow, I had no idea you could be such a gentleman. I could feel my face radiating with pride. No problem. I followed behind her. Do you have a reservation? The hostess asked. Yes, it should be under Bifford. Okay, we're ready for you. Follow me. We followed her to the opposite side of the room where she brought us to a booth by the window. We took a seat and opened our menus. I searched for the cheapest item I could find. I forgot how expensive this place was. My grocery store's salary wasn't all that great, but if this helped her fall for me, it would be worth every penny. I didn't think I've ever wanted a girl to like me this bad. Even though I barely knew her, I couldn't get her out of my head. 
I wanted to spend as much time as possible getting to know her better. Did you find anything that looks good? I asked. Hmm, I think so. I might go with the cheese pizza. What about you? I looked on the menu and found what she'd picked. It was at a decent price compared to the other options. I was liking her more by the second. Uh, I think I'm going with the chicken parmesan. A blonde waitress came by and brought a salad and breadsticks. She beamed at me. I'm Brittany. I'll be serving you today. What would you like to drink? I'll have water, thanks. She looked at Michaela. Just water. Brittany turned back to me. Is there anything else I can do for you? I think we're about ready to order. Brittany shot me a flirtatious smile. Sure thing. What would you like? I'll have the chicken parmesan, and my girl, Michaela, wants the cheese pizza. Brittany's eyes squinted into a glare after I said, My girl, Michaela. Weird now. Even the waitress looked upset. I couldn't blame her, though. I did look pretty snazzy in my dark button-down shirt. There was only so much of me to go around, and I needed to stay focused on what was important. Winning over Kayla. Chapter 10. Michaela. I couldn't believe that woman was hitting on my date. I was relieved when she walked away, leaving me alone with Justin. I scrunched my nose. The happy feeling I had in the car was suddenly gone. Our waitress sure was flirty. Justin shrugged. I didn't even notice. Yeah, right. He totally noticed. It was written all over his smug face. Sure you didn't, I said in a snarky tone. Justin grabbed my hand. Come on, don't be mad, Kayla. I came here for you. No, we came here because we had a deal. This isn't a real date. Don't get any ideas. I jerked my hand away from his. I didn't like it when he tried to smooth talk me. I had enough of that from Asher. I stood up from the table. Excuse me, I need to use the restroom. I stalked off to the bathroom. I washed my hands and reapplied my lip gloss. The way Justin acted hit too close to home. It brought back all kinds of painful memories of the way Asher used to treat me. My phone chimed, and there was a text from Haley. Hey, how's the date going? I hope you're being nice to Justin. Please don't break his heart. He doesn't deserve it. I texted back. Our waitress was hitting on him, and he acted like he didn't notice. He keeps trying to smooth talk me. I don't like it. And don't worry about me breaking his heart. He probably doesn't even have one. Get your butt out of the bathroom. Justin likes you a lot. Trust me. Go be nice to him. Hold his hand, and if you want to, kiss him. Haley would be all right with me kissing him? That didn't add up, especially if she liked him herself. What could she be up to by telling me that? How do you know I'm in the bathroom, and why in the world would I ever consider kissing him? Because I know everything, lol. Justin texted you, didn't he? Yep, now get a move on. I put my phone back in my bag and headed out of the bathroom. Justin sat at our table about 15 feet away, texting. I thought it was funny that he was messaging Haley. He must be desperate to get me to like him. But then again, how much did they talk? Should I be concerned that they had something going on? That didn't make sense. Why chase me if he likes her? Something told me Haley knew a lot more than she was letting on. I took a seat. He looked up from his phone. Hey, I'm sorry about what happened. You're totally right. That waitress is a little flirty. He smiled and grabbed my hand. Friends? I smirked. Whatever Haley told him must have worked. It's okay. No worries. He let out a sigh of relief. I could tell by the way his body collapsed that I must have really had him worried. If I didn't know better, 
I'd say I had him exactly where I wanted him. Our server arrived with the food. Justin didn't even make eye contact with her. Was it just me, or was he getting better at learning what made me tick? I didn't dwell on that too much because I was starving. The pizza entered my mouth so fast I had to remind myself to breathe. Maybe that was why I was in such a bad mood. Hunger could really mess with my emotions. After I finished eating, I felt a lot better. Justin paid for the food as promised. It felt nice to know that chivalry wasn't totally dead. On the ride home, we talked constantly. We pulled up in front of my house, and as usual, Justin opened my door. He walked me to the front porch. My eyes locked onto his. I had a great time tonight. Thanks for everything. Justin smiled. No problem. We'll have to do it again sometime. I smiled back at him. He took a step closer to me and removed a few strands of hair from my face. Kayla, I think you're so beautiful. I really like you. Um... Suddenly, I forgot how to talk. My palms were sweaty, and my heart beat so hard I thought it was going to pop out of my chest. He took another step. He leaned in, and his lips were inches from mine. Before he could get any closer, I took two fingers and pressed his face in the opposite direction. Sorry, Justin. I don't feel comfortable kissing you yet. This was our first date, and I don't know you that well. He looked crushed. That's okay. I can wait. Oh, no. I shouldn't have said the word yet. I wasn't sure if I'd ever want to kiss him, but I didn't have the heart to reject him any more than I already did. I decided to take some initiative to show him that I did care, at least a little bit. I wrapped my arms around his torso and rested my head on his chest. He hugged me back almost immediately. After a moment or two, I let go of my hold on him. He smiled. Good night, Kayla. I smiled back at him. Night, Justin. Chapter 11, Michaela. Why didn't you kiss him? I woke up and opened my eyes. Haley was standing in my room. What? How did you get in here? She waved a hand. That's beside the point. Now, answer the question. I stretched my arms out and yawned. I don't know. It didn't feel right. How could it not feel right? He's perfect. If it had been me, I would have kissed him in a heartbeat. Wait a second. How do you even know about this? Justin texted me all night about how heartbroken he is. My heart pounded in my ears. Really? Yes, really. I told you not to break his heart. I even gave you permission to kiss him. What's wrong with you? I cocked an eyebrow. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? You can't just come into my house and chew me out for not kissing him. And what's the deal with you wanting to kiss him? Do you have a thing for him or something? Are you blind? Who wouldn't have a thing for Justin? He's sensitive yet funny. Not to mention, he talks to me nonstop. The things he texts me about you are so romantic. He's the sweetest boy ever. If you like him so much, then why don't you date him? Haley tilted her head to the side and gave me a conniving smile. Maybe I should. Really? Last time I checked, he had a thing for me. That could change. Guys usually end up falling for girls they talk to the most. We're really close. And he keeps getting closer, especially since you're so mean and self-centered. Justin tells me his deepest feelings. I laughed. You mean his deep feelings for me, right? Haley snorted. You know, Michaela, I tried helping you with Justin. You don't appreciate him. He's shown you so much kindness. All you ever do is act like a snot. I'm done helping you. If you want Justin, you're going to have to try to get him on your own. Like I wanted him anyway. 
Haley's phone chimed. She swiped the screen, and her face lit up. Oh, look, it's another text from Justin. I glanced in the opposite direction. Psh, whatever. Haley smiled. I gotta go. I need to talk to him. Fine, text him all you want. I don't care. Haley's smile widened. Will do. After she left my room, I fell asleep again. I woke up to the sound of knocking on my door. Can we talk? My mom asked. Sure. She came in and sat on the edge of my bed. Did something happen? When Haley was leaving, I noticed that she looked upset. Yeah, we got in a fight over Justin. But I thought you didn't like him. I don't. It's just, I don't like the idea of her having a thing for Justin. If you don't like him, then why lose a friend over him? Maybe I was cranky because I was so tired when she talked to me. You should head over to her house and apologize. You're right. I hugged her. Let me go to the bathroom. I'll be ready in a second. Okay. When I got back from the bathroom, my mom was holding a framed picture. Her mascara ran down her cheeks. Is everything all right? I asked. Do you remember this? I found it peeking out from under your bed. I sat next to her. It was a picture of me when I was four, dancing on my daddy's feet. It sure is dusty, Mom said. I stuffed it under the bed. I was tired of holding it and crying. I will never get used to him being gone. I am sorry. I hope Bryant can help fill the gap. I know you love him, but he is not my real dad. He's a stepdad, and I don't think he will ever stop feeling like one. Chapter 12 Justin I sat on Haley's couch as she rambled on. I had stopped listening to her a couple minutes ago. I kept thinking about why Michaela wouldn't kiss me. I thought she was finally starting to like me. It just didn't make any sense. I was brought back to reality when Haley said, And it got me thinking, why should you like Michaela? We're such good friends. Why don't you like me? She placed her hand on mine and leaned forward. Haley, that's just it. We are good friends. That's all I see you as. I'm sorry, I really... I was about to say I really just like Michaela, but I was cut off by someone knocking at the door. Michaela peeked in through the window, and her jaw dropped in shock. Her shock turned to hurt, and she ran away. I jerked my hand away from Haley's. That was Michaela. She totally saw us. That's okay. She won't care. She doesn't even like you. What? I thought you said she did like me. Well, that was then. I think you're lying. I'm going after her. You don't have to do that. I'm sure she's fine. Stay here with me. Let's talk some more. I stood up. Sorry, Haley, but I can't. I've got a girl to chase. Literally. Haley scoffed. I ignored her and ran out the door. I found Michaela on the sidewalk, walking fast in the opposite direction. Michaela, wait! She turned back. Why should I? Because I want to talk to you. She stopped and put her hands on her hips. You don't have to explain yourself. I know what's going on. That's just it. You don't know what's going on. Listen, I like you, I... She cut me off. Really? And that's supposed to mean something? Last time I checked, you had a thing with Ivy, then you tried to start something with me, and if that wasn't enough, you went and tried to take my best friend. I wasn't trying to take your best friend, okay? I ran my fingers through my hair out of frustration. I don't have feelings for Haley or Ivy. I know you probably think I'm playing with you, but trust me, I'm not. I wish I could believe you, but I can't. I know what I saw, Justin. I already told you I don't like Haley. I like you, okay? Why do you have to be so stubborn? Why do you have to be such a player? I threw my hands up in the air. I'm not. 
Well, you sure are good at acting like one. See it, Justin. She continued walking down the sidewalk. Where are you going? You don't have a car. I'm walking to my aunt's house. She lives in this neighborhood. I said in a low voice, Okay, see you. I hung my head as I walked back to Haley's house. She saw me coming up her driveway. How'd it go? She asked. Not exactly how I pictured it. What did you think would happen? I thought if I chased after her and told her how I felt, she'd run into my arms and tell me she felt the same way. So, what did happen? She told me I was a player and I was destroying your friendship. Well, you are a player and you are destroying our friendship. I playfully nudged her. Hey, that's not cool. She laughed and shoved me back. I crossed my arms over my chest. In all seriousness, how am I ruining your friendship? Haley looked down at her feet. Actually, we got in a big fight over you today. What do you mean? I told Michaela she was an idiot for not kissing you, and she got all defensive and basically said it was none of my business. Now I don't even know if we're friends anymore. I couldn't believe they were fighting over me. It was flattering, but at the same time, it made me feel guilty. You've got to make up with her, I said. Why should I? Because she's going to hate me if I cause a rift between you. No, she won't. You're overreacting. Haley rolled her eyes. No, I'm not. You didn't see how mad she looked. She probably hates me. Haley groaned. Okay, I'll help you. I raised my eyebrows. Really? She held up a finger. On one condition. What's that? A smile spread across her face. You have to kiss me. Are you crazy? How would that help? She laughed. Chill out, I'm joking. Something made me wonder if the only reason she said she was joking was because I turned her down. I smiled. Sure you are. Haley shoved me. Get out of here. Fine, I'm leaving. See you. Haley smiled. See you. Chapter 13, Michaela. I finally reached Aunt Bethany's house. She lived on a hill, so it took me a while. I walked through her back gate and knocked on the door. I could hear her dog barking. After a few moments, she showed up. She smiled. What are you doing here? I shrugged. I was in the neighborhood. She gave me a knowing look. Did you have another fight with Haley? I raised my eyebrows. How did you know? Please. Every time you show up at my house unannounced, it's because something went wrong at Haley's. It wasn't just a little disagreement. This time it's serious. Oh, really? And why is that? Because it involves a boy. Aunt Bethany motioned to the couch. Now I'm interested. Sit down and tell me all about it. I told her the whole story, starting from when I discovered Haley holding hands with Justin on the couch. Justin claimed he liked me, but I didn't believe him because I think he also likes Haley and Ivy. I don't feel like being played. Justin has lost all of my trust. And how long have you liked this boy? She asked. Who said I liked him? I asked in outrage. She flipped her long blonde hair behind her back. If you don't like him, then how come you got upset and came to my house? I exhaled. Okay, fine. I like the guy. Aunt Bethany smiled and clapped her hands together. Does he know that you like him? Yes, no, I don't know. It's complicated. I hung my head. She chuckled. Care to explain? It's just, if I tell him, I won't be a challenge anymore. Then he'll probably move on to the next girl. That's true. But if you don't tell him, then how are you ever going to get your first kiss? First kiss? 
I'm 16. I shouldn't have to worry about that for a long time. Although I used to have a boyfriend, I never kissed him. That's one of the reasons we broke up. He kept wanting to make out with me, but I refused. I wasn't ready for it. Aunt Bethany said in a playful voice, What's wrong? Are you chicken or something? There's nothing wrong with kissing someone when you're 16. I shrugged. I don't know about that. Aunt Bethany smiled and changed the subject. A little bird told me this boy Justin has already tried to kiss you, but you turned him down. My jaw dropped. How do you know that? Aunt Bethany smiled. Oh, I have eyes everywhere. And by eyes, do you mean my mother? Was she spying on me or something? My mom must have overheard me talking to Haley when we had the fight at my house. Wow, we've been doing a lot of fighting. Aunt Bethany laughed. Yeah, something like that. So, why didn't you kiss him? Because I didn't want it to be that easy. If I don't put him off all the time, then it wouldn't be fun anymore. I like that he chases me, and I don't want it to stop. Okay, so here's a question for you. How do you plan on living happily ever after with Justin when you know that Haley is hopelessly infatuated with him? I... I don't know. When Haley likes a guy, she usually gets really excited and then rolls around on the floor and talks about how she's going to grow up and marry him. Aunt Bethany slapped her knee and laughed. That's hilarious. It sounds funny now, but it's not funny when you get in her way of getting the guy she wants. Trust me, it's not pretty. But do you think Justin will ever go for her? Well, he does talk to her more than he talks to me. And he was on her couch looking pretty cozy. It wouldn't surprise me if he likes her. I did accuse him of being a player. Maybe I wasn't that far off. I stared at the floor. I strongly dislike the idea of Justin having feelings for Haley. It's my worst nightmare. Today, I felt like that nightmare had become reality. Although Justin said he didn't like Haley, he might have been lying. I don't think it will ever work out. What do you think? Maybe it will, or maybe it won't. You'll never know if you give up. Chapter 14 Michaela. On Monday, I was searching for a place to sit in the lunchroom when I spotted Justin, Brett, and Haley at our usual table. My stomach dropped. Somehow, I didn't feel welcome there anymore. I continued walking. Ivy saw me looking sad and kind of lost. Hey, Michaela, do you want to eat with us today? I thought about it for a moment. Ivy was my enemy. I didn't particularly want to sit with her. At the same time, there's an old saying that says, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. After all, Ivy didn't know that I didn't like her. I faked a smile. I'd love to, thanks. As I sat down, Haley snapped her head in my direction with raised eyebrows. She looked mad. She probably thought I would end up being alone today. It felt good to show her that I could find someone else to sit with. Ivy smiled. Let me introduce you to my friends. She motioned to a girl with bright red hair. This is Shannon. She's my neighbor. I smiled. Hey, Shannon. Nice to meet you. She pointed to a girl with curly brown hair. This is Tina. Hey, I smiled and waved at her. I love your hair. Are your curls natural? She smiled back at me. Yeah, they are. That's awesome. I have naturally curly hair too. She smiled. I just wash my hair and hope and pray it turns out okay. I was amazed. Her hair looked completely perfect and she didn't do anything to it. You mean you don't even use mousse? She smiled and shook her head no. Ivy looked like she wanted to say something. 
she let out a fake cough. So, Michaela, how well do you know Justin? I don't know him that well. But you're friends with him, right? I shrugged. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Do you think you could set me up with him? Anger surged through me. Who does she think she is? Why in the world would I set her up with Justin? Like I said, we're not that close. Too bad, Ivy sighed. I'll have to find a different way to get his attention. Don't you think he's absolutely drool-worthy, girls? Totally, Tina admitted. Shannon smiled. He'd be perfect for you. Ivy flipped her hair. I know. Speaking of Justin, I heard he's going to be at the football game tonight. Are you going, Michaela? I was now. Of course. Wouldn't miss it. What time is it again? Seven, Ivy said with a smirk. Sounds good, I smiled. I'll be there. The bell rang and I stood up. Thanks for inviting me to eat with you. It was fun. It was totes fun, Ivy said. See you later. I waved. See you. I walked to my locker, opened it, and pulled out some books for my next class. When I closed it, Justin smirked, leaning against a locker. He looked more attractive than he had before. I smiled at him without thinking. He nodded at me. How's it going? I nodded. I'm good. He shot up his eyebrows. Really? You're not mad anymore? Nah, I'm over it. Falling in step next to me, he asked happily. What changed? I did. He grinned. Sweet. Hey, do you want me to carry your books for you? Oh, you don't have to do that. It's really not a problem. Not if we don't make it one. Justin took my books from me. It's not. Why was he carrying my books when he sat with Haley at lunch? Not to mention, I haven't exactly been nice to him lately. Mrs. Holly, my English teacher, stepped out of her classroom. Michaela, can you come in for a moment? Sure thing. I turned to Justin. I'm going to need those back. He handed my books back to me. I guess I'll see you around. I grinned. Yeah. He smiled back, bigger than he had before as he disappeared down the hallway. I stepped into the classroom and sat across from Mrs. Holly. Tell me about your post-graduation plans. I cleared my throat. I felt uncomfortable with this subject. I would like to go to college, but I don't know if I'll be able to get the money. Maybe this will help. There's a journalism scholarship I wanted to let you know about. I sat up straight. That would be wonderful, especially since I don't know if my parents would be funding it or not. They got divorced last year. I am so sorry to hear about that. I hope this opportunity can help. She handed me a piece of paper with a web address to fill out the application. Chapter 15 Michaela. Two minutes until seven, I stood at the bleachers looking for Justin. After a few awkward seconds ticked by, I walked up to Tina. Hey, how's it going? She shrugged. Pretty decent. I'm just waiting for Ivy to get here. I searched through the crowd and finally found Justin. I swore he must have heard me talking to Tina because he stood up from the bleachers and said, Man, this bench is so... He looked in my direction and smiled at me like I was the prettiest girl in the stadium. I had a feeling his comment about the bench was just an excuse to get my attention. I walked over to him. Hey, how are you? Doing great now that you're here. I didn't expect to see you at a football game. I smiled. Yeah, well, uh, Ivy invited me. He looked confused. You're friends with Ivy now? I laughed. More like frenemies. He sat back down and I joined him. 
Huh, that doesn't have anything to do with me, does it? Psh, you wish. He playfully bumped into me. No, you wish. We watched the game for a few minutes and didn't say anything. So, he said, filling the silence. What did Mrs. Holly want to talk to you about? She told me about a journalism scholarship I could apply for. That's awesome. So I guess you'll be taking journalism seriously then. Yeah, I need to build up my portfolio. I have to send them a collection of articles I've written. Would you like any help? He asked, with hope in his tone. Yeah, I would like that. Maybe you could come up with a few questions for the advice column. He blushed. I think we both know I already wrote you one. About that. Thank goodness Ivy showed up to change the topic. Mind if I sit? She asked. Well, there's not really any room. Ivy flipped her hair over her shoulders. That's okay. Michaela could always sit somewhere else. Actually, she can't. You're such a jerk! Ivy let out a high-pitched shriek of frustration. She walked away, looking back at me through squinted eyes. I had a feeling I wouldn't be sitting with her at lunch any time soon. Justin sat down next to me. That was weird. I smiled. Yeah, big time. I loved how he spoke up for me and made it so we could sit together. It felt good to put Ivy in her place. She deserved it. Justin interrupted my thoughts by saying, Are you paying attention? Huh, what? Do you even know who's winning? Not really. Justin shook his head in disapproval. Awkward silence filled the air before I finally said something. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you take pictures of the game for the paper? He shot me a peculiar smile. Good idea. He took out his camera and pointed it toward me. A white flash went off. Hey, I said pictures of the game, not pictures of me. He gushed. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I looked up. Haley stood close by. Well, well, if it isn't Michaela and her boyfriend. I tried to protest. He's not my... Justin smiled. I'll take what I can get. I did a double take. What? Justin laughed. You heard me. We're a thing now. That's debatable. Whatever, Haley said. She pulled out her phone and texted without looking where she was walking. She tripped over Justin's legs. Watch it, Michaela! Actually, that was me, Justin said. Haley let out a huff and walked away. What's her problem? I asked. Justin shrugged. Who knows? Girls are weird. I think we both knew the real reason she was in a bad mood. Because I was sitting with Justin, and she wasn't. Haley probably hated seeing us together. I'm guessing Justin must have turned her down or something. I still wasn't completely sure what all went down between them, but I assumed it didn't end well. Excuse me a sec, I told him. Yeah, sure, he said. I could tell he wasn't paying attention to me because he was so focused on the game. I went to the bathroom and was washing my hands when Tina walked in. I heard some interesting news about you recently, she said with a grin. I asked with raised eyebrows. And what's that? Haley was with Justin a minute ago. And they were talking about you. Oh no, what now? It's not necessarily a bad thing. I was getting frustrated. Just tell me. I heard Justin tell Haley that he wants to kiss you tonight, and Haley was trying to talk him out of it. My jaw dropped. Excuse me? Tina smiled. Yep, that's what they said. Her eyebrows shot up in anticipation. So, do you want to kiss him? I wasn't quite sure how to answer that question. 
If I told her I did want to kiss Justin, then it could get back to him, and it might actually happen. On the other hand, if I told her I didn't want to kiss him, then it could get back to Ivy, and she'd have even more incentive to chase him. I needed to come up with a diplomatic answer. Don't you think that's kind of a personal question to ask me, considering we were just barely introduced to each other today? A knowing smile came over her face. I get that you don't trust me. It's just, I noticed that you're having some drama with Haley. I thought it would be cool for us to be friends. But you're already good friends with Ivy. Not that good of friends. I've only been hanging out with her since the start of the school year. I wouldn't call her my best friend. We eat lunch together. That's about it. Okay, we can be friends. But don't take it personally if I don't tell you my thoughts about Justin. I don't really tell anyone whether I like him. I don't even tell Haley. Tina laughed. Well, from what I've heard, you can't trust Haley with any of your secrets. She's a huge gossip. Telling her your secrets is about as bad as printing it in the newspaper so that the whole school can know about it. Yeah, it's true. I remember she used to always tell me that telling her a secret was like telling 30 people a secret. We both laughed, and I had a feeling this was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. At the same time, I felt guilty for telling Tina that I missed Haley. We had been friends my whole life, and I was worried that it was all going to come to an end. Chapter 16, Justin If you do kiss her, how do you plan on doing it? Haley asked. Well, first I'll have to figure out a way to get her alone. And how do you plan on doing that? I ran my fingers through my hair, and Haley's face brightened. I thought it was funny that she was eyeing me while I was trying to figure out how to kiss her best friend. Or should I say her ex-best friend. It looks like the game is going to be over soon. When she comes back from wherever she went, I'll tell her I left my jacket in one of the classrooms and ask her to help me find it. That should work. I smiled at how genius the idea sounded. It probably won't work. She's not stupid. She'll know what you're up to. I take that back. Maybe she is stupid for not wanting to kiss you. Oh my gosh, would Haley ever stop hitting on me? I told her many times that I wasn't interested. It was starting to get a little creepy. I sat and waited for Michaela, and the minutes dragged on. Finally, the game finished, and she was nowhere to be seen. Haley smirked. I told you she wasn't interested. Did she really just say Michaela wasn't into me? especially since she claimed Michaela liked me before. All my hard work had gone down the drain. I couldn't believe Michaela didn't want to kiss me. Frustration surged through my veins, and I twisted my water bottle until its form was totally distorted. Haley laughed. <laughs> Looks like someone's disappointed. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I sighed and slumped my shoulders. I give up. Like I said before, there's no reason for you to kiss her right now. Just be her friend. I crossed my arms. Okay, fine. I guess I'm not kissing her tonight. Haley smiled like she had won. I guess not. As people were pouring out of the stadium, I noticed a brunette girl walking in my direction. She was too far away to tell who she was. I hoped it was Michaela. She got closer, and I could finally tell it was her after all. Hey, where have you been? I asked. I was in the bathroom, feeling kind of sick. She responded in a nonchalant tone. Do you feel sick now? She smiled. Nope, I'm good. Oh, okay. Glad you feel better. I couldn't help but wonder if she fabricated the whole... I'm sick, story. Why was she avoiding me? 
I'm probably going to head home now, Michaela said. Okay, bye. I walked up to her and gave her a side hug. I noticed she smiled as she walked away. That girl had me so whipped. Everything about her was attractive. I could not stop thinking about her smile, her confidence, and her gorgeous brown hair. I was walking through the crowd of people and was about to leave when I heard a high-pitched squeal. Oh my gosh! Justin left his water bottle behind! Who in the world would care about my disposable water bottle? Whoever it was must have it bad for me. I searched through the crowd to try to see who was talking. My curiosity was killing me. I walked back toward the bleachers and saw Ivy clutching my water bottle to her chest and laughing. What the heck was going on? I hid behind the bleachers and peeked through the benches to get a better look. A redhead was with her. Let me take a picture of you with it. Ivy hid the water bottle behind her back. No, Shannon, you wouldn't. Shannon, so that was her name. She smiled. Oh, yes, I would. Shannon pulled out her phone and snapped pictures of Ivy while she tried to run away. They ran around in circles, chasing each other like a bunch of dogs. I could have just walked away, but I couldn't help myself. I stepped out into the open and grinned. Excuse me, ladies, can I have my water bottle back? Ivy's face turned bright red. Sh sure. She pulled the bottle out where I could see it. Sorry, I didn't know it was yours. Shannon laughed loudly. Yeah, right. She totally knew it was yours. We saw you squeezing it during the game. Ivy glared at Shannon. Gee, thanks a lot. I smiled. It's not a problem. Ivy handed the bottle back to me. Thanks, I said. I was just heading out, so I guess I'll see you around. Ivy smiled. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Chapter 17, Justin I walked into journalism. All eyes were on me. Take a seat, Mrs. Hawley said. I sat down next to Haley. What can we do differently this week to get more people to read the paper? Mrs. Hawley asked. I shot my hand up. Yes, Justin. We should put that picture I took of Michaela at the game on the front page. I smirked. Jamin smiled and looked at Michaela. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Something about the way Michaela let out a pent-up sigh made me smile. I always found her attractive whenever she was frustrated, especially if I was the reason behind it. Any other ideas? Mrs. Hawley asked. Why don't we do this week's spotlight article on Michaela? Jamin asked. Mrs. Hawley tilted her head to the side. What do you mean? You know, like the articles written about Justin and Brett. This week, Haley can write about Michaela and how she does such a good job at running the newspaper. Haley turned to me and placed a hand adjacent to her face. I hate that idea, she whispered. I couldn't help but laugh. Haley could be so funny sometimes. What's so funny? Michaela asked. Oh, nothing. It's just something Haley said. Jamin turned to Michaela. So, what do you think of my idea? I don't think it will get people to read the newspaper. I am a pretty boring person, Michaela stated matter-of-factly. I shot her a flirtatious grin. I know it'll get me to read it. You don't count. Michaela rolled her eyes. You're going to read it anyway. Mrs. Hawley continued talking, but I spaced out on what she was saying. I couldn't help but stare at Michaela. She was so beautiful. She glared back at me, and I had a feeling I was bothering her again. The minutes flew by, and before I knew it, 
Mrs. Holly was finishing up the class. That's all for today. Thanks, everyone. I was about to approach Michaela when Jamin beat me to it. So, Michaela, are you doing anything tonight? No. Why? I was wondering if you'd get some food with me. Michaela beamed. That would be great. Wait. What? Did I hear that right? Why would Michaela go on a date with anyone other than me? There's no way he had more swag than I did. None of it made sense. She was practically my girlfriend. At least, I wished she were. Michaela was giving him her number when Haley said, It sucks to be you, Justin. I said in a sarcastic tone, Thanks, Haley. I'm so glad I have your support. Jamin said goodbye to Michaela and walked out of the room. Oh my gosh! Haley exclaimed. You're going on a date with Jamin. Do you like him? Why do you care? Michaela asked. I thought you were mad at me or something. Haley drew her eyebrows together. Look, I'm sorry about what happened the other day. Do you think we could put it behind us? Michaela paused for a second, and I was almost positive she was going to tell Haley that she didn't want to be friends anymore. But then she said, Sure, I'd really like that. Haley smiled and embraced Michaela in a tight bear hug. I totally want to help you get ready for your date. Michaela glanced over at me and then turned back to Haley. Yeah, I want to look my best for Jamin. My cheeks burned. I heard enough. She was clearly trying to make me upset, and it was working. I had to figure out a way to get Michaela to like me again. It was going to be a bigger challenge than I thought it would be. I slipped out of the room and got in my car. I turned my music up as loud as it would go. I needed something to distract me from the fact that Michaela had a date tonight. When I got home, I realized I was the only one there. My mom was probably working today. I pulled out my iPhone and searched for Michaela on Facebook. I always loved looking at her pictures. She was smoking hot. Chapter 18 Michaela Do you think those pants will make me look fat? I asked Haley as I tried on clothes in my walk-in closet. She laughed. You won't know until you try them on. I smiled. I'm so glad we're friends again. Me too, she beamed. Let's not allow Justin to come between us, especially since he's probably never going to like me the way he likes you. I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. I mean, look at you, Haley continued. If I was even half as pretty as you, he might like me. Haley, you are pretty. You're more beautiful than you know. After a couple more minutes of looking through clothes, we finally found the right outfit. I settled on a flowy pink shirt with jeans. I had barely finished getting ready when the doorbell rang. We answered the door and found Jamin standing there with a smile on his face. Good evening, ladies. I'm not taking both of you, am I? I giggled. No, you're not. Haley was just helping me get ready. Oh, well, she did a good job. You look great. Somehow, his compliments didn't have the same effect on me as when Justin picked me up for a date and told me I was beautiful. I said goodbye to Haley, and he walked me to the car. I expected him to open the door, but he didn't. Not all guys had good manners like Justin. The car ride to the restaurant was kind of dull. I kept trying to start a conversation with him. I brought up the journalism scholarship, but he only gave me a one-word response. He pulled into a parking lot of a restaurant that sold subs. As we walked in, I ended up opening the door. It was strange he didn't open it for me. I stepped up to the front counter and scouted out my options. A Swiss turkey sandwich caught my eye, and I was about to order it 
but Jamin beat me to it. He asked for two salami sandwiches. I couldn't help but think it was rude that he didn't ask for my input, but I didn't feel like making a fuss. My phone vibrated in my purse. I pulled it out. There was a text from a number I didn't recognize. How's it going? Who is this? Your best friend, Justin Bifford. I rolled my eyes and made a mental note to save his name into my phone. Jamin knitted his eyebrows together. Is something wrong? I shook my head. Nope, just one of my friends texting me. He leaned back in his chair. Ah, I see. I texted Justin back. I'm a little busy right now. I'm on a date. Do you have something important to say to me? On a date with someone other than me? That's got to be pretty lame. And yeah, I did have something important to say. How did he know I wasn't having a good time? Actually, I'm having a great time. Jamin is the perfect date. For real? Yeah, he is. I couldn't imagine anyone doing much better. So what was so important that you have to interrupt my date? I wanted to get back to you about the journalism questions. I worked on it for a good bit. By the way, do you really think he's a better date than I was? Jamin cleared his throat and I looked up. Our food had arrived. I bit into the sandwich. It tasted cold and slimy. Definitely not my favorite choice for dinner. Then again, it wasn't like I had a choice to begin with. My phone vibrated in my lap. I picked it up and was about to unlock it when Jamin said, Really? Again? What's wrong? Jamin threw down his napkin. You've been on your phone this whole time. It's starting to irritate me. At least Justin is willing to help me figure out the whole scholarship thing. It shows that he actually cares about me and that I wasn't just another pretty girl on his list. Is that who you're texting? He grimaced. Justin Bifford? Yes, I am, I said with confidence. Jamin raised his eyebrows. Excuse me? I'm paying for your food, and you're texting another guy? I'm sorry, I really am. I can pay for my meal if it makes you feel better. Too late, I already paid. Well, tell me how much it costs and I'll pay you back. It was about six dollars. I pulled out a five and a one from my wallet and handed it to him. Thanks, I guess, he mumbled. After we finished our food, we headed out. Once again, he didn't bother to hold the door open for me. It slammed into my arm. What a jerk. On the car ride home, I didn't even try to start a conversation with him. I could tell by the way he gripped the steering wheel that he wasn't happy with me. When we arrived at my house, he turned to me. I guess I'll see you in journalism. Yeah, sure thing. Sorry about the texting. Whatever, I'm over it, he said in a low voice. You sure? Positive. Not a big deal. I didn't like you that much anyway. Strangely, I was relieved. Good to know. See you later. See you. I went inside and pulled out my phone. I was dying to know what Justin texted me. Why do you keep ignoring me? You're really into this guy, aren't you? Oh no, what have I done? I should have given him a response sooner. No, I'm not into him that way, actually. I waited all night, but I never got a response. Chapter 19, Michaela The following Monday, Ivy and Justin walked by with their lunch trays. Justin looked at me and smirked. Don't worry, I'll get to you eventually. I knew exactly what he meant by that. In other words, he was into Ivy now, and he wasn't going to give me any attention anytime soon. And what about the journalism questions? Was he planning on blowing me off? 
I glared at him with a renewed intensity as I gripped the edges of the table until my knuckles turned white. She's still mad, he said in an amused voice. How dare he talk to me like that? Who did he think he was? He always treated me like I was special, but now it seemed like I was just some girl at the bottom of his list. He slipped a typed-out piece of paper on the table. I'm guessing these are the journalism questions, I snapped. Yep, he said, and walked away without a second thought. Haley sat down next to me. Why do you look like you're about to kill someone? I ignored her. Anger boiled beneath my skin as I watched him take a seat at Ivy's table. I shot Ivy daggers through my eyes, and she smiled back in triumph. Hello? Haley waved a hand over my face. I asked you a question? I looked back at her. Sorry, my mind was elsewhere. So? She raised her brows. Nothing's wrong. I'm fine. Justin was just giving me the questions for journalism. Sweet. Let's read them out loud. I scanned the list of questions. Some of them were for the advice column, but others were prompts of different things I could research and write about. Wow. He really did his homework. What did it say? Read it yourself. Haley gasped. This was awfully nice of him. Tell me about it. I looked at Ivy's table again. He wrapped an arm around her back. He sure looked cozy over there. So, maybe he did care, but now? Haley followed my gaze. Oh, I see what you're looking at. That kind of makes me mad, too. Why would he prefer to sit with Ivy the stalker when he could sit with me? his best friend and personal therapist, and putting his arm around her back. How rude. I know why he's doing this. Why? I was texting him on my date with Jamin, and it didn't go so well. As in? I don't know, I shrugged. He just got kind of jealous. Haley pounded a fist on the table. Of course he was jealous. He gets jealous so easily. How do you know that? Because he told me. He tells me everything. I wasn't exaggerating when I said I'm his therapist. So, how do I get him to like me again? Haley sighed and looked away. I screeched. What? Why aren't you answering me? I think he likes Ivy. Haley blurted out. I gripped the edges of the table, but harder this time. Whoa! Excuse me? I know he put his arm around her, but maybe it meant nothing. Maybe he was just trying to make me mad. I mean, come on, why would he like her? It's just that Ivy practically worships him, and you act like you hate him. Not to mention... Never mind. What do you mean, never mind? Justin told me that Ivy is really good at longboarding. No offense, but... You're not really all that great. You're right. I'm horrible. Haley wiggled her eyebrows. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That I've messed up big time and there's nothing we can do to fix it? Wrong. She held up a finger. We can fix it. How? We skate. What do you mean? I mean, I'll try to help you become an awesome longboarder. How could he resist you if he knew that you weren't only pretty, but also awesome at doing the thing he loves to do the most? That's genius. Why didn't I think of that? Haley placed her head in her hands. Thanks. It's a gift. When do we start? How about today after school? At my place? Sounds good to me. The bell rang and we headed off to our classes. The rest of the day, I kept seeing Ivy with Justin. That girl followed him around like a lost puppy. It disgusted me. I wondered if she had any dignity left at all. The day was finally over, and I was eagerly waiting for Haley to show up at my house. 
I was dying to know if our scheme was going to work. A couple minutes passed before a knock sounded at my door. I opened it and saw Haley with two longboards in her hands. Where did you get those? I borrowed them from Brett, told him it was a matter of life or death. And he bought that? Not really. He just laughed and handed them to me. Way to go. I gave her a high five. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's kick some butt. I followed her outside, and she placed the boards on the sidewalk. I stared at one of them and thought of all the injuries I could get by writing it. Haley snapped me out of my days when she said, Staring at it won't make you a better writer, you know. I laughed. I know. I was just thinking of how many ways I could break a bone. But wouldn't it be worth it if it meant Justin decides he wants you back? Is she for real? Wants me back? We were never together. Whatever, Michaela. You guys love each other. Just admit it. Whoa. Love? Isn't that a little extreme? Well, if you didn't love him before, I'm sure you'll get there over time, Haley said as she smiled at me encouragingly. Okay, how about we not talk about me falling in love with Justin and just skate? We can do that. Whatever makes you feel better. I took a deep breath. Okay, here we go. I stepped onto the longboard and went about two feet and then stopped. Haley was already ten feet ahead of me. Don't you have any fear? Haley smiled. Not really. It's not that scary. Just think about longboarding toward Justin and you'll be fine. Oh, please. That's ridiculous. It's not that ridiculous. After all, we're trying to become better longboarders because of him. It makes sense to me. I stepped back on the board, determined to conquer my fear. If this is what it took to get Justin to like me again, then this is what I had to do. I pushed my feet off the pavement three times. Before I knew it, I was flying. I loved the feeling of the wind pushing through my hair. We passed Brett's house and he stepped out. I wanted to stop and say hi to him, but I realized I wasn't quite sure where the brakes were on the longboard. My weight shifted back and forth and fear took over as I pictured myself crashing. My legs started to shake. How do I stop? Lead on the back of the board and steer into the grass, Brett called out. Okay, I'll try. I did as he said and shifted my body weight to the back of the board. It seemed to work because I made it to the grass safely and the board slowed down. Brett ran up to me and Haley joined us. Why didn't anyone teach you how to stop? He asked. I pointed at Haley. It's all her fault. Hey, don't look at me, Haley said. Justin taught you first. I thought he would have told you how to stop. I sighed. Well, he didn't. Speaking of Justin, how's that going? Brett asked with a hint of a smile. It's not going, I said in a cool tone. I'm pretty sure he's into Ivy now. Yeah, I noticed that they were spending a lot of time together today. I thought that was kind of weird. I cocked an eyebrow. Why does that seem weird? Because Ivy isn't really his type. He seems to prefer girls who don't chase him hardcore. That would explain why he didn't go for me, Haley said. We all laughed together over the thought of Haley chasing Justin and him turning her down. Brett shot her a forward smile. You know, I don't think I'd be too upset if someone as pretty as you chased me. Oh, really? Haley twirled her blonde hair and smiled. I was happy that someone was interested in Haley. She needed attention. Although, I was slightly jealous since I used to have a crush on Brett, and he never said anything like that to me. They kept talking, and it wasn't long before I felt like a third wheel. I'm going to head back to the house. I have a lot of writing to do. I need to answer all of Justin's questions. 
You guys have fun. Haley smiled and lifted her eyebrows appreciatively. See you. Chapter 20, Justin. A couple weeks went by and I was walking through the halls after school when I spotted Michaela talking to Brett. She flashed him a smile. We're going longboarding again today, right? What? Since when did they do stuff together? Yeah, for sure. Even though the idea of them hanging out made me beyond jealous, I decided that was the last thing they needed to know. Longboarding? Without me? I asked in a playful voice. Hey, bro. He gave me a fist bump. You're welcome to join us if you're up to it. I smiled. I could never turn down a longboarding session. I was surprised to see Michaela's face light up after I accepted the offer. Maybe she was interested after all. I was happy that the school day was over. It seemed extra long today. I drove straight to Brett's house. I pulled up to the curb and saw Michaela and Haley talking to Brett. It looked like Haley was doing most of the talking, as usual. Haley laughed and touched Brett's arm. I was glad to see that she had finally moved on. It was hard enough trying to get Michaela's attention. I didn't need Haley to cause any more drama. Hey guys, ready to shred some pavement? I asked. Michaela jumped. Whoa, I didn't even see you there. You scared me. I couldn't help but laugh at the look of surprise on her face. It was priceless. She shoved me. Stop laughing. It's not funny. I smiled, but finally stopped laughing. Hey, I really appreciate all the work you put into those journalism prompts. Anything to help out a friend? She smiled at me, and a goosebump spread across the surface of my skin. Are you guys ready? Brett asked. Yeah, let's do this, I replied. I have an idea. Haley said with a wicked smile. What is it? Brett asked. Haley pointed. Let's all race down that hill over there. Are you okay with that, Michaela? I asked. Yeah, I'm game. I shot up my eyebrows. She must have gotten a lot better. What does the winner get? I asked. A naughty grin spread across Haley's face. A kiss from the person of their choice. Bring it on. I looked over at Michaela, and she didn't look excited. She crossed her arms. I don't think I like this game. Tough. Haley smirked. We're doing it. I turned to Brett. What do you say, man? Are you game? Brett smiled. You know it. Awesome. Let's go. We reached the top of the hill and lined up in a row. How do we know where the finish line is? I asked. Haley squinted across the neighborhood. The first mailbox at the bottom of the hill. Okay, sounds good. Haley called out. Is everyone ready? We all said yes, and Haley screamed, On your mark, get set, go! I pushed off the pavement as hard as I could. Brett was in the lead, and I was on his tail. I was not about to let Brett win, if he won and chose Michaela to kiss him, it would not be pretty. I leaned forward and tried my hardest to gain speed as I slammed my foot against the pavement. I was neck and neck with Brett. I looked over my shoulder. Whoa, who's that hot girl behind us? Brett slowed down and looked. He smiled. Oh, hey, Haley. She smiled back at him. He turned around to see me in the lead. Justin, you're such a punk. I laughed it off and kept skating. I had a couple more feet to go and victory would be mine. I glanced back and saw Brett rapidly gliding toward me. I was not about to let him win. If anyone was getting a kiss today, it was going to be me. I pushed off the pavement even harder. It wasn't long before I glided past the first mailbox I pushed back on the longboard and stepped off. Score! I win! I yelled as I punched my longboard up in the air. 
I waited a few seconds for everyone to finish the race. I noticed that Brett slowed down and Haley glided past him. I wonder if he let her pass him on purpose. Haley came in second, with Brett following her, and Michaela came in last. Haley yelled out, Hey, I came in second place! Only because Brett felt like being nice. Haley asked, So, Justin, who are you going to kiss? I think we all know who I'm going to choose. I looked over at Michaela, and her face turned red. She cocked an eyebrow. I am not kissing you. Haley crossed her arms. You have to. It's the rules. Wow, Haley really did move on. Good for her. What kind of kiss are we talking about? Brett asked. Haley shot him a wicked smile. Mouth to mouth. Michaela walked in the opposite direction. Haley called out, Wait, come back. How about she just kisses him on the cheek? Brett asked. That should be easy enough. I turned to Michaela. What do you say? She rolled her eyes. Fine, I'll do it, but I won't like it at all. Gosh, that was harsh. I didn't want her to know her words had any effect on me. Don't worry, I'll enjoy it enough for the both of us. You're such a freak, she said as she walked toward me at a fast pace. She wrapped her arms around my neck and pressed her lips to the side of my face. She lingered longer than I expected. Haley cleared her throat. Okay, that's enough. Then again, maybe Haley still has a crush on me. Michaela released her hold. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm not quite sure what just happened. I shot her a cocky smile. Whatever it was, we should do it more often. Michaela blushed. I, I got to go now. I have homework and stuff to do. I waved goodbye. See you later, Kayla. Man, that girl has me whipped. See you, she said in a quiet voice. Michaela walked back to her house, and I remembered something important. I turned to Haley and Brett. Hey guys, I forgot to invite you to my Halloween party. Haley spoke up. Halloween party? When? It's on Halloween. Haley's eyes flashed with excitement. Awesome, I'll totally be there, Brett said. Yeah, I'll come too. Make sure to bring your friends, I said. Haley smiled. And by friends you mean Michaela, right? I couldn't stop myself from grinning. Yeah, pretty much. Don't worry, she's coming even if I have to tie her up and gag her. I laughed. Don't get too crazy. Haley asked, So, what made you want to have a party? I smiled. My parents will be entertaining clients all evening and won't be home. That's cool. What does your dad do? He's just a lawyer. Haley raised her eyebrows. Just a lawyer? That's kind of amazing. Nah, it's no big deal. Haley smiled. If you say so. Where do you live again? Blackfoot Mountain. Holy crap, you must be loaded. I shrugged. My parents might be, but I'm not. But still, that's awesome, Haley exclaimed. I laughed. Haley could be so dramatic sometimes. I actually got to do some homework too. I'll see you guys later. Later, Haley said. See you, bro. Brett said. Chapter 21 Justin I looked at my reflection in the mirror, and man, did I look good. I was dressed as Clark Kent undercover. I wore black framed glasses and a white shirt with the first few buttons undone with a red S showing underneath. I walked into the living room. It was packed. I couldn't help but feel good about the large turnout, especially since I was still new in town. I searched through the crowd to see if I could spot Michaela. I felt someone touch the back of my arm. Hey, 
looking for me. I couldn't believe Michaela was talking to me like that. It was like she almost cared. I turned around and, to my disappointment, saw Ivy smiling back at me. Oh, hey, Ivy, I said in a low voice. She frowned. What, you're not happy to see me? I mean, yeah, I am happy to see you. I tried to recover. I was just caught off guard, that's all. She placed a hand on my chest. That's great, because I've been dying to ask you something. Okay, shoot. I've been thinking about how we've been hanging out at school for the past couple weeks, and I think we should take our relationship to the next level. Michaela walked by wearing a pirate costume. She looked amazing. I couldn't believe she was actually at my house. Ivy cocked an eyebrow. Justin, did you hear what I just said? Wait, what? I couldn't hear you. It's kind of loud in here. I said, it's time we start dating, she yelled. Suddenly, everyone stopped talking and stared at us. I glanced over at Michaela, and she looked hurt. I'd have to clear things up with her later. Right now, I needed to have a talk with Ivy. I think she finally fell off the deep end. I said in a quiet voice, Can I talk to you alone? She smiled like I had just asked her the most wonderful thing ever. Sure, she said in a starstruck voice. I took her into the garage. It was the only place I could think of that wasn't full of people. Ooh, where are you taking me? She asked and shimmied her shoulders. I sighed. Nowhere. This is where we're going to talk. She scrunched her nose. Oh, so what did you want to tell me? I tried to think of the right words. I didn't want to come off too harsh when I turned her down, but I didn't want to give her any false hope either. Listen, I've really appreciated your friendship, but I don't think we're ready to take it to the next level, if you know what I mean. A creepy smile spread across Ivy's face. That's okay. Why don't we find out for sure if we're ready? I was confused. I thought this would be the part where she cried. Why was she smiling at me like that? I don't get it. What do you mean? She lifted her eyebrows, biting her lip. I mean, why don't you kiss me? If you feel something, then you'll know that we should date each other. I was dumbstruck. How did she misunderstand me? She came closer to me. Understand now? She poked my nose and giggled. Man, she's crazy. I stepped away from her and coughed for good measure. I understand perfectly, but I really don't want to kiss you. In fact, I am actually interested in someone else. Her jaw dropped. Excuse me? Someone else? Who is she? I ran a hand through my hair. Don't worry about it. She snarled. It's Michaela, isn't it? I sighed. I saw the way you looked at her tonight. I'm not dumb. Okay, fine. It's Michaela. Happy now? She stomped. No, I'm not happy. I'm heartbroken. When I get my hands on Michaela, I'm gonna, gonna... You're gonna what? If you even look at her the wrong way, I promise I won't ever talk to you again. Michaela has done nothing to you. Leave her out of this. Tears streamed down Ivy's face. I wish you would have left her out of this. Everything was going great between us before you started liking her. She ran out of the garage and back to the party. I felt bad for telling her I liked someone else. I thought that if I told her, she would finally give up. I had never met a girl so determined to date me before. Too bad Michaela wasn't that interested.
If she were, we would have already been in a relationship for a couple of months. I went into the living room where most of the people were. Haley rushed up to me. Justin! Justin! You won't believe what happened! What? What? Haley exclaimed. Brett and I are dating! Whoa! No way! That's awesome! Congrats! She beamed. Thanks! I'm so excited! I laughed. I can definitely tell. So, I heard you're dating Ivy now. I clenched my jaw. Where did you hear that? That's what everyone is saying. Oh, snap. People were probably going off of what they heard Ivy yell a couple minutes ago. I shook my head. That's not true at all. Ivy's crazy. I actually just turned her down. Which reminds me, she might be mad at Michaela right now. Why is that? I rubbed my hands over my face. Because I told her I had a thing for someone else, and she guessed that I was talking about Michaela. Haley crossed her arms. She better not try anything. I don't think she will. Why not? I told her if she did, I wouldn't talk to her anymore. I have a feeling she cares a lot more about being able to talk to me than she cares about getting revenge. Yeah, you're right. What could she do anyway? Michaela is pretty fierce. Yeah, that's one of the things I like most about her. Like what most about me? A female voice said from behind me. I spun around. Crap, it was Michaela. She totally heard me talking about her. How awkward. I decided to play it cool. We were just talking about how you could hold your own in a catfight. She smiled. Oh, really? A slow song came on, and a few people paired up. Would you like to... Michaela smiled. Yes, I'd love to steal your first dance. I laughed. Yeah, since you're a pirate. She followed me to an open area. I placed my hands on her back and pulled her in. We were so close that you couldn't even fit a book in between us. She wrapped her arms around my neck and rested her head on my chest. Everything was perfect, until an angry voice said, Why are you dancing with my girlfriend? I turned around. Asher's eyes burned with rage. My bad, I thought you guys broke up. I said. We did break up. What's your deal? Michaela said in a harsh tone. My deal is, this punk was all over you. Asher spat out. Well, you can get over it, Michaela said. We were just dancing. Who invited you anyway? Yeah, maybe you should leave, I chimed in. Let me show you out. I placed a hand on his back to get him moving. Next thing I knew, his fist slammed against my teeth and my lip tasted like blood. He was about to come back for more when Michaela spoke up. Asher, stop! Asher cocked his head. No way, I am going to finish pounding his ugly face. Michaela grabbed Asher's arm. Please, cut it out! Why should I? I'm sick of seeing him with you. He's just some rich kid who thinks he has the right to every girl in school. You're not the only one I see him hitting on. He stepped toward me again. Leave or I'll call the police, I demanded. Asher laughed. Hey, ew, this little man needs the police to help him. Well, I don't need nobody to help me. You know, that's not a grammatically correct sentence, I said. What? he asked, totally not comprehending. That's a double negative. I don't need nobody, I said, using air quotation marks. Do you want to go? Asher said and clenched a fist. Michaela stepped between us. Asher, why don't we go outside and talk? An evil smile spread across his lips. He put her arm through his as they walked toward the door to leave. 
I didn't like the idea of Asher waltzing into my house and taking my girl. I had failed with Michaela so many times, and I had finally gotten her attention again. There was no way I was going to let her slip through my fingers that easily. Asher had almost reached the door when I said, Hey, one more thing. He turned around with a smirk on his face. I punched him square in the nose. He recovered faster than I thought he would, and he wrapped his arm around my neck and tackled me to the floor. A small table fell over with a crash in the process. His grip on my neck was so tight that I could barely breathe. No one tries that crap on my friend, Brett said. Brett grabbed Asher's legs and pulled him apart until he forced him into the splits. Asher yelled and loosened his hold on me. Asher crawled up on all fours and lunged for me again. Brett and Jamin stood on either side of me. You want to take on all three of us? Jamin yelled. Before I had the chance to do anything more, Ivy poured red punch down the back of my neck. I coughed. Ivy, why'd you do that? Someone needed to put you in your place. And after all, since when is three guys against one even fair? Asher met Ivy's eye and smiled. Thank you. She smiled back at him and offered him a hand up. Hey, do you want to get out of here? Asher grabbed onto her hand and stood. Me? He asked, clearly astonished. Ivy nodded. You. Asher shook his head like he couldn't believe his luck. Fine by me. They left the party, leaving me behind without a second glance. Jamin pulled me off the floor and offered me a paper towel. Michaela flung her arms around my neck, keeping a tight hold on me. Her embrace surprised me, especially since I was sure I wasn't super attractive with punch dripping off my shirt. I didn't have much time to think about that, though. I wanted to enjoy the moment. Are you okay? She asked. I took in the scent of her hair. It smelled like a mixture of coconut and sunshine. A guy could get used to this. I am now. The door snapped open, and my parents stepped in. What's going on? My dad asked. Your mom and I were almost in an accident with some hothead driver coming out of our driveway. What happened to you? My mom asked, staring at my bottom lip. And who is that girl plastered to your body? It's a long story. I'll explain later, I said. Michaela released her hold on me. My mom pushed back her shoulder-length wavy brown hair and furrowed her brow. One look from her, and I knew I was in for it. Mom, Dad, this is Michaela, my friend. My mom raised her eyebrows. Just friends, hmm? Yeah, that's what I said. Good, you're too young to be anything more. Gosh, my mom sure had a way of killing a relationship before it ever began. Just when I thought it wouldn't get any worse, my dad picked up the little table that still lay on the floor and said, All right, the party's over. Everyone out. Sorry, people, but I have a splitting headache and am headed up to bed. He turned and climbed the stairs to the bedrooms on the second floor. Michaela squeezed my hand. See you later. I wanted to kiss her goodbye so badly, but I didn't think it would be a good idea with my parents staring at us. And I'd never kissed her before. See you. After everyone cleared out of the house, my mother shot me another stern look. Justin, I don't ever want to see you with that girl again. I clenched my fists at my side. But you don't even know her. She gave me a twisted smile. I know more about her than you think. I went to high school with her mother. I've seen Michaela through her mom's pictures online. So what? What does that have to do with anything? 
She clasped her hands together. It has everything to do with it. Her mother was a total witch in high school. It's safe to say we never got along. My jaw dropped. So, you don't want me to be with Michaela because you didn't get along with her mom in high school? She glared at me. Don't talk to me in that tone. You have no idea what kind of family Michaela comes from. I narrowed my eyes. Did her mom steal your boyfriend or something? That doesn't concern you, she snapped. Now clean up all this mess. I'm going to bed. I sighed at the pile of work I had ahead of me. I looked around at the cups and plates scattered all over the house. As I picked them up and put them in a trash bag, I couldn't help but wonder what the real reason was for why she didn't want me anywhere near Michaela. There was something my mother wasn't telling me, and I needed to find out what it was. Chapter 22 Michaela Michaela, I love you. I always have. Justin whispered in my ear. I love you too, I answered softly. I wrapped my hand around the nape of his neck and kissed him with everything I had. I kissed him until I couldn't breathe at all. That was just it. I couldn't breathe. I woke up with a piercing scream. I couldn't believe I had such a sappy dream about kissing Justin. I liked him, but did I love him? No, that was impossible. I didn't know what had gotten into me lately. I had sworn to myself that I was giving up romance for a while. I didn't need that in my life. It wasn't necessary. My mom burst into my room with Aunt Bethany. She was in a pink bathrobe, and Aunt Bethany had her blonde hair in a messy bun with no makeup on. Are you all right? Mom asked. I sighed. I'm fine. Just having nightmares about dumb boys from school. Aunt Bethany laughed. Whoever they are, if they give you any trouble, just let me know and I'll fall on them, she said in a joking manner. Aunt Bethany wasn't fat. She just had a funny sense of humor. I have an idea. Why don't we go shopping for shoes? I bet that would make you feel better, Aunt Bethany said and put a hand on her hip. I smiled. Okay, that would be great. We arrived at the mall about an hour later. I was looking at some boots when Aunt Bethany said, Hey, I'm going to run to the little girl's room real quick. Okay, see ya. I tried on a pair of black ballet flats when I felt someone staring at me. I turned around and saw a lady with wavy brown hair glaring in my direction. She walked up to me. Aren't you Michaela? Yes, I am, I mumbled. I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Justin's mom. I smiled weakly at her. She lowered her eyebrows and scowled. That wasn't exactly how I expected her to react to my smile. I tried to remain calm. I remember you perfectly. Good. Now, what are your intentions toward my son? Was she for real? This was the 21st century. I suddenly felt like I was trapped in a Jane Austen movie. I, um, he's my friend. She cocked an eyebrow. If he were to ask you to be his girlfriend, would you say no? What kind of trick question was that? If I said I would tell him no, then she could say, Oh, so you think you're too good for him? If I told her yes, she could say, Are you crazy? You're way too young. I finally came up with, I don't know. He hasn't asked me that, and I don't think he plans to. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. Glad to hear it. If he does ask, do me a favor and tell him no. I don't need my son dating anyone right now. He needs to stay focused on his schoolwork and on his job. Who knows what kind of unnecessary drama a girlfriend would bring in his life. 
I smiled weakly. I'll do my best. Don't disappoint me. Hopefully I won't be running into you anytime soon. She turned away so quickly that she knocked down a couple boxes of shoes. She left without picking them up. I couldn't believe that woman. I could never imagine my mom treating anyone like that. It made me feel bad for Justin that he had to live with her. Aunt Bethany walked up to me. What did I miss? Only a tongue lashing from a bitter old woman. Justin's mom turned around and snarled. I heard that. I covered my mouth with my hand. I needed to be more careful with what I said. I had a feeling it was going to get me in a world of hurt. Who was she? Aunt Bethany asked. She's Justin's mom. That woman hates my guts. Why? She thinks that Justin's going to ask me to be his girlfriend and that I'm going to cause all sorts of drama in his life. Aunt Bethany raised her eyebrows. That's overreacting a bit. Why is she so in his business? I laughed. I don't know. Maybe because she's his mom? Sounds like she's the overprotective type. I definitely agree. It really bites. Yeah, I'll say. Chapter 23 Justin I walked through the hall with swagger in my every step. Michaela was by her locker talking to Haley. I came up behind them and rested my arm on the back of Michaela's shoulders. I nodded at her. Hey, how's it going? She looked at me like I was a total stranger and turned away without a word. Michaela, he's talking to you, Haley said. She grabbed her books from her locker and shut it. That's not my problem. She stormed off and left me to wonder what just happened. I'd never understood why some days she acted like she was into me, and other days it was like she hated me. Once she was out of earshot, I leaned over to Haley. Dude, what's her deal? Haley shrugged. I don't know. She's always mad at the world. Yeah, I'll say. Well, I got to get to class. I'll talk to you later. Okay, see you. The rest of the day, I couldn't get Michaela out of my head. I kept going over it and it didn't make sense. What did I do to make her so mad? I thought things between us were great. Now it was like I was right back to where I started. Man, why did girls have to be so complicated? I drove home and almost hit a couple cars because I couldn't stay focused. I pulled up to my steep driveway and parked the car. I got out and gazed up at the three-story mansion before me. I was lucky to be living here. I noticed my longboard leaning against the side of the house, and it gave me an idea. Next thing I knew, I was flying down the driveway. Longboarding was my biggest stress reliever. Anytime I found myself in a tough situation, I would skate, and life always seemed to get better somehow. I loved that my neighborhood was full of sick hills. I rounded each curve with just enough speed to get the endorphins I desperately needed. I passed one house, and some random girl opened her door and yelled, Yeah, you ride that longboard. Thank you, I yelled back in an arrogant tone. As I glided away, she called out, Wait, come back, in a dramatic fangirl voice. I laughed and continued longboarding for hours. After a while, I was tired and decided to head home. Once I reached my house, I went inside and passed out on the couch. Michaela touched my face and said, Justin, I think I'm in love with you. I smiled. I feel the same way. She placed her hand on mine. It's time we take this friendship to the next level. Those were the same words Ivy had said to me at the party. 
Only, hearing them from Michaela was a gazillion times better. I completely agree. Will you be my girlfriend? Yes, a thousand times yes. I grabbed her by the neck and dove in for a kiss. Oh, Michaela, I called out. I woke up to someone laughing. I opened my eyes and saw Brett standing in my living room. Hey man, what are you doing here? I asked. Dude, he said in between laughs. Your door was hanging open. You didn't hear me knocking and calling your name? I just came over to get some notes for class. But I didn't think I'd find you asleep on your couch, calling out, Oh, Michaela, with your lips all puckered up. I threw my nearby shoe at his head. Shut up, you didn't hear anything. Brett laughed. Whatever, man. What about those notes? Why don't you have any? I totally fell asleep during class and didn't write down a thing. Don't worry, bro. I got you. Brett followed me to my dad's study at the back of my house. I sat at the computer and pulled up my documents. I know I have it somewhere. I scrolled through a bunch of pictures. Whoa, stop scrolling. Why? I thought I saw a picture of Michaela. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Move over. I slid the rolling chair to the side. Brett took control of the mouse. Hey, these are all her pictures that she put up online. You downloaded them? I, uh, I said, clearing my throat. You have it bad for this girl. You got to find a way to get her back. You're right, and I think I know a way you can help me do that. Chapter 24 Michaela I sat cross-legged on my bed and listened to Taylor Swift while I did my homework. My mom came in. Some boy is here to see you, she said in an excited voice. I rolled my eyes. It's probably just Justin. My mom raised her eyebrows and smiled. I don't think so. Isn't Justin the one who took you on the date? I shrugged. I don't really consider it a date. He took you to dinner at a nice restaurant. How is that not a date? Don't you like him? I rolled my eyes to the side. We will have to talk about this later. Wouldn't want to keep whoever it is waiting. I hopped off the bed and got out of my room as fast as I could. Michaela, my mom called out. We're not done talking. It's not... I so did not want to have that conversation. I trotted down the stairs as fast as I could. I opened the door, and to my surprise, Brett was on my doorstep. Hey, what are you doing here? He leaned against the doorway. We need to talk. I sighed. Okay, but not here. Why not? I don't want my mom hovering over us, asking us if we want cookies or trying to take our picture or something else weird. Brett let out a low chuckle. Okay then, how about we take a walk around the neighborhood? I smiled. Sure. I paused. Wait, won't Haley mind? Nah, probably not. Besides, this is all business. I followed him out the door and down the brick steps. Business? I asked in a curious voice. What kind of business? He shot me a lopsided grin. Justin Bifford kind of business. I stopped walking. Oh my gosh, are you freaking kidding me? He shook his head. I'm not. He thinks you hate him and he doesn't know why. I let out a sigh of frustration. Why does he care? We walked past a ditch full of large rocks. I'm not super good at explaining other guys' feelings, so why don't you just see for yourself? I shot him a sideways glance. What do you mean? Brett pulled out one of the most crumpled-looking pieces of paper I had ever seen. 
Here, read this. I struggled to read the handwriting. Michaela, I really care about you. I don't know what happened, but I want to fix it. I can tell that something is bothering you. I understand if you don't want to tell me what it is, but please don't take it out on me. I've fallen so hard for you. I can't handle it if you're mad or upset. Getting to know you has changed my whole world. Every time I hear from you, it brightens my day. I've never felt this strongly about any girl before. I think I love you, Kayla. I can only hope that someday you can love me back. I know you'll probably never like me as much as I like you, but I'm okay with that. Justin. What? He can't love me, and if he did, his mother would kill me. Brett smiled. Are you sure? Is this one-sided, or do you love him too? And what does his mother have to do with anything? I think so, I mumbled. I mean, I don't know. Ugh, do you always ask so many questions all at once? My head is about to explode. Brett raised his eyebrows. Huh? I threw my hands up in frustration. No, I mean, no. I couldn't possibly be in love with anyone ever. I knew I couldn't keep the note. It was all too much to handle. So, I balled it up and threw it in the ditch. What kind of sick, heartless person are you? I watched Brett climb into the ditch and pull the piece of paper off one of the oversized gray rocks. He had no idea what I'd been through. You don't understand, Brett said in a sarcastic voice. Clearly. I didn't know how to respond to the situation, so... I made a run for it. Hey, wait! Brett yelled. I'm not done talking to you! I ignored him and continued sprinting in the opposite direction. Once I reached my house, I ran inside. I raced up the stairs, closed my bedroom door behind me, and locked it for good measure. My mother knocked on my door. What is going on? Nothing, I sighed. It's nothing. It didn't sound like nothing, she said in a concerned voice. If you don't want to talk to me about it, then maybe I should give you a ride over to your Aunt Bethany's house. I shrugged. I guess that would be okay. I unlocked the door and she grinned. Let's get out of here. I followed my mother through the kitchen and into the garage. I climbed into the passenger seat. She started the car and turned up the music until it was blasting. I checked my phone for messages and saw I had a text from Haley. What were you thinking? Justin confessed his undying love for you. How could you break his heart? I slid my fingers quickly over the screen. How do you always know everything that goes on between me and Justin? Because I'm Justin's therapist. And don't forget I'm dating his best friend. I knew about the note before you did. I still couldn't get over how Haley always found out about everything so fast. Justin told her way too much about himself. I wouldn't be surprised if he let her read his journal, too. I laughed at the thought. My mother turned down the music. What's so funny? I found it amusing that my mom was always so nosy. Oh, nothing. Haley just said something kind of outrageous, that's all. She raised her eyebrows and smiled. That's nothing out of the ordinary. Haley's always saying something crazy. Want to share? Not really. After a few minutes passed, we turned into Aunt Bethany's driveway. Okay, this is your stop, my mom said. Thanks for the ride. I always liked to tell people thank you for rides, even if it was just my mom. I walked up the sidewalk and knocked twice in the front door. Come in, a female voice called out. I let myself in and found my aunt in the kitchen. Her blonde hair was in a bun and she wore a pink apron. How are you? 
I forced myself to smile, too. Doing great. She lowered her eyebrows and gave me a look. Really? Your mom said something happened. Spill. I sighed and plopped down on one of the bar stools. I was about to say something when I realized the entire kitchen smelled amazing. I breathed in the heavenly aroma. What are you making? She grinned. I'm making key lime pie. Now stop changing the subject and give me the dirt. I took a deep breath and told her the basics of what happened during my talk with Brett. After I finished, she asked, So why did you run away? I shrugged. I was scared. I don't know how to react to hearing that a boy loves me. I've never had a guy say that to me before. Remember the mean woman from the mall? That's his mom. Yes, I remember her, she said with wide eyes. And from what I've heard about Justin, you better get used to the fact that he likes you. I tilted my head in confusion. What do you mean? What I mean is, Justin has it bad for you. You think so? Uh-huh. It's very obvious. After all, he said that he's in love with you. Yeah, but... Aunt Bethany shook a finger at me. But nothing. There is not a thing wrong with this boy having a crush on you. He didn't commit a crime by liking you. Stop acting like he did and give the poor guy a chance. I clenched my fingers on the edge of the marble counter. Why are you on his side? She tipped her head back and laughed. I'm not on his side. I'm on your side. I'm telling you this because I want you to be happy. You get upset way too easily. I think you'd be a lot happier if you chose to not let the little things bother you. That's easier said than done. Aunt Bethany's eyes lit up. I've got an idea. I'll just have to start being mean to you and toughen you up. Sound good? I laughed at her remark. I really did have an amazing aunt. She always knew the right thing to say to lighten the mood. And maybe she was right. Maybe I should give Justin a chance. After all, his mom wouldn't literally murder me. Right? Chapter 25, Michaela I sat in history class and strained to remember the answer to one of the test questions. I felt a pair of eyes on me. I turned around and saw Justin smile and wave. I glanced at him. Who did he think he was, distracting me with his boyish charm while I tried to take my test? He must have finished already. The guy was too smart for his own good. One more minute, the teacher announced. I forced myself to stop thinking of Justin. I had to focus. I quickly guessed at the last couple of questions right before the teacher said class was over. That was so easy, Justin said in a confident voice. Of course it would be easy for Justin. He was such a history buff. He cocked an eyebrow. Don't you think, Michaela? The look on his face let me know that he seemed sure that I would agree with him. Normally I would, but lately I'd spent all my time thinking about how Justin was in love with me, and I didn't have much time to study. Although that was the case, Justin didn't need to know. I put on a confident smile, shrugged, and lied. Yeah, piece of cake. We turned in our tests and walked into the hall. Justin said, So, about the note I sent you. I was dying to know what he was going to say next, but he was interrupted by a shrieking girl. We turned and saw Ivy walking in our direction. She stepped right up to Justin and wrapped her arms around his neck in a tight embrace. Justin, she said in a preppy voice. I missed you. We have to catch up. Justin looked annoyed. Really? 
I thought you hated my guts. Ivy snuggled up to him. I could never stay away from you for long. Asher's great and all, but he's not you. Justin smiled and returned her embrace. I couldn't believe that just happened. There was no way he loved me. If he did, he wouldn't be flirting with Ivy right now. It was kind of awkward for me to be standing there, watching them. So I stalked off toward the lunchroom. As I walked, I realized that I didn't have any money to buy lunch. Daydreaming about Justin had left me an empty-headed mess. I guess I'd have to tough it out and be hungry for the day. I didn't want to have to face Justin, so I slid into the nearest restroom. I looked in the mirror and saw my reflection. I looked like I was ready to rip someone's head off. The memory of Ivy hugging Justin so intimately haunted my mind. I decided to get over him. He wasn't worth my time. He never loved me. I knew better than to trust love. How could he? Justin didn't even know me. It was all a lie. My eyes started to tear up, and I told myself I wouldn't cry. I'd seen my mom cry plenty of times, and I didn't ever want to cry over Justin. He didn't deserve to have that kind of power over me. No, I had to stay strong. Suddenly, a toilet flushed. I was worried about who would come out. I didn't want just anyone to see me like this. Before I could escape, Haley popped out of a pink stall. Oh my gosh, she exclaimed. Are you okay? You don't know what happened this time? No, not if it just happened. I can't use my phone in school, remember? I sighed. Oh, I guess you're right. So, tell me. Nothing. I shook my head. There was just something in my contact. Haley smirked. Yeah, right. This is about Justin, isn't it? No, I told you, I don't like him like that. I don't care what he does. Fine. She folded her arms. Don't tell me. I'll find out one way or another. You don't need to know everything. Haley pouted. Whatever. Let's go eat lunch and just forget about it. Okay, I mumbled. We walked to the cafeteria and sat at our normal table. Haley looked around the lunchroom. Who are you looking for? I asked. Justin and Brett, duh. Somehow, that didn't surprise me at all. Haley's mind always revolved around boys. Her face lit up when she saw Justin standing about ten feet away, talking to Brett. Ivy snuck up behind Justin and put her arm around his shoulders. It really bothered me how Ivy thought she owned him. It was like she assumed he was her boyfriend. Haley looked from Justin and Ivy to me and said in the loudest voice possible, That's what's been making you upset? Don't worry, Michaela. Ivy's got nothing on you. Justin turned around with the biggest grin I'd ever seen and looked right at me. I placed a hand to my forehead. Hales, I whispered. That was really loud. Haley put her hands up in defense. Sorry, but someone had to say it. Whatever, I responded in a monotone voice. Just don't call him over here. A smile spread across Haley's face. Great idea, Michaela. Brett, Justin, she called out. We saved seats for you. I smirked. We? Sure thing, Haley, Justin said. Be right there. Ivy put a hand on Justin's arm. You should totally sit with me today. Justin smiled. Actually, I promised Haley I'd sit with her. Ivy scoffed. But if you want, Justin said, you are more than welcome to sit with us. Ivy bounced back to her annoyingly bubbly self and smiled. I'd like nothing better. 
She hooked arms with Justin, and they walked toward our table. I was so angry that I wanted to scream. I had a horrible feeling about them sitting with us. I knew it wasn't going to end well. Chapter 26 Justin As soon as I invited Ivy to eat with us, I regretted it. I walked toward Michaela's table with a knot in my stomach. Something felt so wrong about Ivy joining us. She's a lot of fun, but she's no Michaela. Speaking of Michaela, she looks like she is about ready to kill. I wonder if I really am making her jealous. It seemed too good to be true. Does she really care? I unhooked arms with Ivy and sat next to Michaela. Ivy sat on the other side of me. I couldn't help but feel like a beast for sitting with a girl on either side of me. Michaela gave me a death glare. I smiled back at her. What's up? Nothing good, she said in a low voice. Brett joined us and sat next to Haley. What's up with Michaela today? I am pretty sure this is how she normally acts, Ivy retorted. Excuse you, Ivy, Haley said in a defensive voice. Michaela is just grumpy because she forgot her lunch money, and she's probably starving. That's too bad. I was hoping it was because she was jealous. Michaela gave me a funny look. What did you just say? Crap. I didn't realize I said that out loud. Ivy joined in. Yeah, Justin, what the heck? Are you just using me to make her jealous? I tried to distract them with my smile. Of course not. Don't you guys know how to take a joke? I looked at Brett for help. Brett let out an awkward, fake laugh. Yeah, man, <laughs> good one. Michaela shook her head and glared. This is so not funny. She looked away. I can't believe this is happening, she said under her breath. I have an idea, Haley said. Why don't we all pitch in some money and buy Michaela lunch before she murders someone? I couldn't help but laugh at Haley's comment. That's a great idea. I can pay for all of it if you want, Brett smiled. In fact, I can go buy it right now. Haley's eyes narrowed and she frowned. I guess girls really do get jealous super easily. Michaela turned to Brett and raised her eyebrows. You don't have to do that. Oh, but I'd like to. After all, you're my girlfriend's best friend. He turned to Haley and squeezed her hand. Haley beamed. I wished it was that easy to get Michaela to stop being angry. If I had it my way... Michaela would be my girlfriend. If she were, I'd buy her lunch every day with no questions asked. I'd do almost anything if I could just get her to admit that she had feelings for me too. Justin? Haley asked. Did you hear what I said? I shook myself back to reality. Whenever I thought about Michaela, I tuned everything and everyone out. Wait, what? Haley shot me a devious smile. What were you thinking about, Justin? Uh, I looked down and shrugged. Nothing. It was hard to lie when I looked someone in the eye. I bet I know exactly what you were thinking, Haley said. It was written all over your face. He was thinking about me, right? Ivy gave me a playful nudge and laughed. Michaela rolled her eyes right on cue. Psh, sure he was, Haley said in a sarcastic voice. She winked at Michaela, and to my surprise, Michaela smiled. I think that's the first time I've seen you smile all day, Kayla, I said, and instantly wished I had not. She scrunched her nose and turned her head away from me in response. Yeah. I definitely said the wrong thing. I must have lost track of time because the bell rang. Michaela was the first to get up and leave. Wait, I called out to her. What about your lunch? 
Michaela turned around. Forget about it. I have to get to class anyway. I felt like she was slipping through my fingers. I had to get her to like me again. That is, if she ever did like me. She kept walking away. I caught up to her. Let me at least walk you to class. She scowled. Shouldn't you be walking Ivy to class? No, why would I do that? Michaela shrugged. Aren't you with her or something? No, didn't you read my note? Michaela looked me square in the eye. I did read your note, but your problem is, your words don't match your actions. If this is about Ivy, you should know nothing is going on between us. She's just very hands-on. Michaela cocked an eyebrow. Clearly. Man, Michaela is so attractive when she gets mad. I just have to try again. How about we go longboarding after school? She stopped walking. Listen, Justin, whatever we had, it's gone. Let's not pretend like this is ever going to work out. I felt my heart divide in two inside my chest. I couldn't let her know how badly her words affected me. I tried to sound like I didn't care. Okay, fine. See you later. I watched Michaela walk away as she left me heartbroken in the middle of the hallway. Chapter 27 Justin I told her in the note that I loved her, and it meant nothing. It was a sad, dark day in the world of Justin. Michaela was a cruel, cruel woman, and she completely shattered my heart. I couldn't stand the thought of seeing her. I told the office I felt like I was about to lose my lunch. They sent me home. The ladies working there were not in the mood to challenge my claim to a sick stomach. When I got home, I went straight to my room and grabbed my longboard. I stepped outside and rode down the steep driveway. I loved the feeling of the air hitting my face as I strode down hills. There was nothing like it. I skated to the opposite end of my driveway. I was about to turn around when my phone rang. I pulled it out and saw Haley's name pop up. I slid my finger across the screen. Haley, what are you doing on the phone at school? Since you left early, Michaela has been acting weird. She won't tell me what's going on. I laughed. Haley, you're always so nosy. She scoffed. Don't change the subject. Tell me what happened. I explained the whole thing and waited for her response. After a couple seconds of silence, she said, I see where you went wrong. Please, enlighten me, I begged. You should have never told her that Ivy was hands-on. Actually, you shouldn't have let Ivy be all over you to begin with. No wonder she doesn't want you. I wouldn't want you either. Gee, I responded in a sarcastic voice. Thanks for the support, Haley. Anytime. I could hear her smile when she said it. In all seriousness, what you should do is try the friend approach. What do you mean? Become her best friend. She'll end up falling for you without even knowing how it happened. Genius. Wait, how do I do that? I grabbed my longboard and began walking back to my house. I don't know. Talk to her like you're talking to me. Yeah, like that's going to happen. If I talked to her like I talked to you, then that would require me talking to Michaela all the time about some other girl. She might not like that. Haley sighed. Yeah, you have a point. Don't worry, we'll figure something out. Don't give up. I've got to get back to class. Talk to you later, Justin. Okay, bye. Once I reached my house, I went to my room and did homework for a couple hours. I was about to fall asleep when the doorbell rang. I thought it was weird that someone was here. I didn't remember inviting anyone over. I opened the door and saw Ivy standing there with an eager smile. Do you need something? I asked. 
She shot me a wicked look and placed a hand on my chest. I heard you left school sick. I came to check on you. That was nice of you, I guess. You don't look sick. I'm not actually sick. Justin, we need to talk. Oh, okay. I motioned in front of me. Why don't you come in? I led her to the living room, and we sat on the larger of the two couches. I specifically chose that couch because I wanted some space from her. She didn't take the hint. She sat so close that our legs brushed, and she leaned into me. She touched my arm and laid her head against my shoulder. Man, she is so desperate. I broke the silence. What did you want to talk about? Us. I know you said you didn't want to be in a relationship. I'm okay with that. I scooted away from her and removed her hand from my arm. Good. I am glad you finally come to that conclusion. She inched toward me until we were touching again. I had a feeling I wasn't going to win at this game. I stood up. Is there anything else you wanted to talk to me about? She closed the gap between us and wrapped her arms around my neck. I didn't really come here to just talk, she said, leaning toward me with her eyes closed. She parted her lips for a kiss. I gulped. I had never kissed a girl before. I wonder what it would be like. Her lips were an inch from mine, and as she moved closer, I thought of Michaela and how hurt she would be if she knew I kissed Ivy. And if I did, I would probably never have a chance with Michaela. I jumped away as fast as I could. I think it would be best if you leave. She looked hurt, and I felt kind of guilty for turning her down. Okay, I can see that you're not ready yet, but don't worry, I'll be waiting for you when you are. Will she ever give up? I remembered what Haley said on the phone. Ivy's probably the whole reason that Michaela isn't interested right now. Okay, Ivy, I blurted out. Let me help you find the door. She followed me. As she walked out, she said, Remember, Justin, when you change your mind, I'll be game. Anytime, any place. I responded with no emotion in my voice. Goodbye, Ivy. She winked at me. Bye. I closed the door and took a deep breath. I had to tell Haley what happened. She would be so proud of me for not kissing Ivy. I pulled out my phone and clicked on Haley's contact name. She picked up on the second ring. Hello? Hey, something happened. What? I could hear the excitement in her voice. Ivy showed up at my house today. She laughed. Oh my gosh, what a total stalker. It gets worse. How could it possibly get worse? I paused for a moment. She kissed me. What? Wait, no, I explained. That's not what I meant to say. She tried to kiss me, but I backed away from her and told her to leave. Haley let out a sigh of relief. Oh, thank goodness. You almost gave me a heart attack. Yeah, sorry about that. Haley asked. But did you consider kissing her? No. You hesitated. That tells me you wanted to kiss her at least a little bit. I sighed. It's just, I knew if I kissed her, Michaela would never forgive me. I know she wouldn't. She's very stubborn. Yeah, but it was a tough choice, and I had to make it pretty fast. I've never been kissed, and I don't want it to be just anyone. I only want to kiss Kayla. Haley squealed. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. I am totes telling her all of this. Wait, don't do that. Why not? Don't you want her to like you? Uh, I guess. Good. I'll see you at school then. Haley hung up, and I wondered what in the world I had just agreed to.
Chapter 28, Michaela. I sat cross-legged on my bed, doing homework, when Haley burst into my room. She exclaimed, Boy, do I have news for you. I raised my eyebrows. And what's that? Ivy went to Justin's house and tried to make out with him, Haley said in an excited voice. What the heck? Did she really kiss him? Blood pounded in my head. Haley pointed her finger in the air. That's the part where you come in. Okay, now I'm confused. What does this have to do with me? Haley joined me on my queen-sized bed. Everything. The reason why Justin wouldn't kiss her is because he was worried that if he did, you wouldn't want anything to do with him. I smirked. Well, he got that right. Haley, you know I have trust issues. But don't you see? Justin is the perfect boy for you. Think about it. How many people would have done what he did in that situation? He's one of a kind. I shrugged. I guess. If I were you, I'd just marry him. He is such a sweet boy. I jerked my head back in disgust. I'm 16, and even if I was older, there is no way I would ever marry Justin Bifford. Never say never. The least you could do is be his friend. You owe him that much. I'd really like to argue with you on that one, but it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal to be his friend, I guess. That's right. Baby steps. Haley's phone vibrated. She picked it up and unlocked it. Her face brightened. I told Brett that I was in the neighborhood, and he invited us to visit him. That sounds great, but I have homework. Haley rolled her eyes. Homework is lame. Let's go party with Brett instead. I crossed my arms. I can't. Haley leaned forward. You know... You won't be in high school forever. Someday you'll graduate, and you'll look back and wish that you had more fun while you still had the chance. I laughed. You're insane. You know that, right? She laughed, too. Maybe, but I'm right. You need to put yourself out there more. She paused. So, what do you say? I closed my textbook and stood up. I say... Let's do it. Haley clapped. Michaela is human after all. I threw a pillow at her. Hey. She threw it back. Are you ready to go? No, but let's go anyway. We walked down the stairs and were almost at the door as I called out, Bye, Mom. My mom came out of the kitchen, drying her hands on a dish towel. Where are you two going? I turned around and smiled at her. We're going to go see a friend who lives in the neighborhood, that's all. My mom paused and gave us a hard look. It was like she was trying to find something wrong with what I said. All right, she finally replied. I guess. Have fun, girls. I sighed and we walked out the door and down the porch steps. Man, I thought we weren't going to make it out of there alive. Haley said. I chuckled. My mom is strict, but she's no murderer. You can never be too sure. Random question. Have you kissed Brett yet? Haley laughed. Duh! My jaw dropped. When did that become a thing? It happened the first time at Justin's Halloween party. He kissed me right after I agreed to be his girlfriend. That's crazy! How come I haven't heard about this until now? Probably because there's always some drama between you and Justin, and I'm constantly trying to fix it. I folded my arms. That's so not true. There's not constant drama between me and Justin. I thought of Ivy being at his house and wondered if he really turned her down or not. Could it really be true that he didn't actually kiss her? Or was it all just a lie? I couldn't tell. Haley laughed. Psh, yes there is. 
There is so much drama, I could write a book about it. I joined in on the laughter. You should write a book about it. It'd be a bestseller. After the laughter died down, we arrived at Brett's house. Haley knocked on the door, and we heard a faint, Come in. I went in after Haley, and almost had a mini heart attack when I found Justin Bifford sitting on Brett's couch. Chapter 29 Justin I was so happy to see Michaela walk into Brett's living room. I finally had a chance to hang out with her, and I was determined to make it work to my advantage. I smiled at her. Hey, what brings you here? She responded in a cold voice. Haley? I really wasn't into one-word responses. I wondered why she always made herself impossible to talk to. She grabbed Haley by the arm and pulled her back outside. Did you set me up? What's he doing here? She snapped. Haley smiled at her. Relax, it's going to be fun. Michaela rolled her eyes. Typical of her, I shook my head. Haley stepped back in and took a seat by Brett. The only spot available was next to me. Michaela sat down and grimaced. You know, I'm not that bad, I said. I never said you were, she responded. Yeah, but your face did. Whatever, she said and looked in the opposite direction. What do you guys want to do? Haley piped up. Why don't we watch a movie? Brett asked. But then we can't talk, Michaela stated matter-of-factly. I smiled. Exactly. What's that supposed to mean? Michaela retorted. I loved messing with her head. You can make that mean whatever you want. Haley's face lit up. Ooh, I like that idea. Let's watch a movie. Great, Brett said. Let's do it. Michaela raised her hand. Excuse me, I'm pretty sure I said I didn't want to watch a movie. Majority rules, Brett said. Now, who wants to watch an old horror film? I'd be down for that, I said. Okay then, it's settled. Brett smiled. While Brett put the movie in, I turned to Michaela and raised my eyebrows. I couldn't get over how pretty she looked today. Her brown curls framed her face perfectly. She looked like an angel. What's wrong with you? Michaela asked. Why are you looking at me like that? I shrugged. What? I was checking you out. Excuse me? She frowned. What's going on? Brett asked in a concerned voice. I didn't do anything. She's getting mad at me for looking at her. Haley laughed at us, and Brett had to try to calm her down so that we could watch the movie. It finally started. We watched a young girl walk through a dark, abandoned castle. Creepy music played, and I put an open hand by my side, just in case Michaela got scared. The young girl on the screen opened a door, and a deformed man came out and chased her around. Michaela screamed and squeezed my hand so hard, I thought it was going to rip off entirely. The girl got away from the monstrous person, and I noticed that Michaela's hand was still in mine. I slid my fingers into hers, and she smiled at me. Score! Now I know why Brett chose a scary movie. He is a genius! I looked over and saw Haley all cuddled up with Brett. Looked like this was a good day for everyone. After a while, I noticed that Michaela had a hard time keeping her eyes open. I slid my hand away from hers and watched as she fell asleep. Since there wasn't a ton of room on the couch, she ended up leaning on me. Her head looked like it was in an uncomfortable position. I thought I'd help her out by putting it on my shoulder. I wouldn't want her to have a sore neck when she woke up. I wrapped my arm around her. Everything about it pushed my heart rate into overdrive. This couldn't be real. After a while, 
I wasn't able to concentrate on the movie. I couldn't stop looking at her beautiful, curly locks. I had spent countless nights imagining what it would be like to run my hand through her hair. Now might be my only chance. She would never notice if I touched it while she was asleep. I slowly moved my hand toward her luscious hair and gently pulled on one of her spirals. It was amazing how soft it was. It was even nicer than I thought it would be. She's so beautiful. Wait, what did Justin say? Brett asked. I didn't realize I'd said that out loud. Haley laughed. Yeah, what's going on over there, Justin? Uh, nothing. Haley grabbed the controller, paused the movie, and turned on the light. Justin's got game. Yeah, when she's asleep, Brett said sarcastically. Okay, okay, show's over, I said. Let's keep watching the movie. Haley laughed. Sure. The movie played for another ten minutes before it ended. They turned on the lights again, and Haley said, Justin, you should totally wake her up with a kiss. I laughed. I would, but I don't feel like getting slapped today. But wouldn't it be worth it? Brett asked. I shrugged. Eh, that's debatable. Haley chanted the words, Do it! Over and over. I finally agreed. Okay, okay, I'll do it. But just a kiss on the top of the head, nothing else. Haley beamed. This is going to be good. Pull out your cameras, people. I leaned forward and pressed my lips softly to the top of her forehead and whispered, Wake up, beautiful. Michaela fluttered her eyes open. What did I miss? I smiled at her. She really was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. Everything. Chapter 30, Michaela. A couple weeks had passed. It was the first day of Thanksgiving break. Justin and I had been texting for hours every day after school. We weren't dating, though. We were just friends. I lay on my bed reading when my phone lit up and played Justin's ringtone. I let it ring for a little bit and then answered. Hello? Hey, Michaela. How's your Thanksgiving break going? I could hear a smile in his voice when he said, Actually, that's why I'm calling. I was wondering if you'd like to eat Thanksgiving dinner with me and my family at five. I liked the idea of spending Thanksgiving with him. I really did. The only problem was his mother. She couldn't stand me. My parents eat Thanksgiving at lunch, so that should work. What about your parents? Would they be okay with it? Yeah, why wouldn't they? I sighed. I don't know. I was just checking. I'm sure my parents are over what went down at the Halloween party. That was weeks ago. You have nothing to worry about. I had a feeling Justin had no idea how much his mother hated me. Anyway, seeing her did not sound like fun. At the same time, there was always the possibility that she changed her mind about me. Maybe Justin even talked me up a little bit. Hello? Are you still there? I mumbled. Yeah, sorry. So, are you coming or what? Justin asked with swag in his voice. I'll go. No worries. I'm sure my mom will be fine with it. Sounds good. I will pick you up at five. I drew a deep breath. Great. Okay. Bye, love, Justin said. What? My eyes grew wide. He laughed before he ended the call. He is so weird. That last line was a joke. Part of me couldn't help but smile. I barely slept that night. As I finally slipped into unconsciousness, I had the worst dream. Justin's mother was chasing me around, screaming, letting me know that Justin was off limits. 
The next day, I had a terrible headache. I still dragged my sorry bum up and curled my hair. Before I knew it, it was five o'clock, and there was a knock at the front door. I opened it and gasped at the sight of Justin, holding a box of Godiva chocolates in his hand. These are for you. I smiled. Thanks, but what's the occasion? It's Thanksgiving, and I'm grateful for you. I stepped out and closed the door behind me. That's really sweet. Thanks again, Justin. You know, you don't have to keep saying thank you. Then what do you want me to say? It's not what I want you to say, Justin said under his breath. It's what I want you to do. I raised my eyebrows. Did I really just hear what I thought I heard? What do you mean by that? He shot me a cocky smile. You'll figure it out eventually. Knowing Justin, he probably wanted to kiss me or get me to agree to be his girlfriend or something. At the same time, I wanted to believe that nothing was going on between us. I wasn't ready for a relationship. We walked to his car. He opened the door for me. I didn't say thank you this time since he told me to stop saying it. I smiled at him instead. He got in, and we chatted for the next twenty minutes. When we reached Blackfoot Mountain, my jaw dropped as I took everything in the daylight for the first time. When I went to the Halloween party, it was too dark to appreciate it all. There were five-story houses hanging off the edge of the cliff. As we went up the steepest part of the mountain, Justin said, This is the V. The other day I sped down it and ended up going about 90 miles per hour. I gasped and clutched my hand over my mouth. Wow, that's so crazy. Justin shot me a cocky smile. So, what do you think of my mountain? I smirked. I'm sorry, I wasn't informed that you owned the whole thing. No, but I am the only person from school who lives here. I rolled my eyes. As far as you know. It was quiet for a moment until I finally spoke up. But, yeah, I like your mountain. It's very impressive. Justin smiled. We reached his house a couple minutes later. It was bigger than I remembered. I could have sworn it was only two stories, but in the daylight, I could tell it was more like three. He parked the car, and I waited as he went around to open the door for me. We walked in silence to the front of the house. Justin opened the large mahogany double doors. Mom, Dad, I'm home, and I brought a friend. His parents came out of the kitchen. His mother stiffened at the sight of me. Justin, you didn't tell me your friend was a girl. He smiled sheepishly. I thought since we don't believe in gender discrimination, it wouldn't be a big deal. Justin's dad tipped his bald head forward and laughed. Suddenly, I felt very self-conscious. I couldn't believe Justin misled me and his parents. His mother furrowed her brows so intensely that I was afraid she was about to ask me to leave. Instead, she smiled. Dinner is ready. Come and eat. Somehow, I wasn't buying his mom's act. Something was off. Maybe she was just being nice. Or maybe she didn't feel like having a long conversation since it was obvious everyone wanted to eat. We followed Justin's mom into the dining room. There was a gorgeous chandelier and a table long enough to seat twelve. My eyes grew wide as I took in the array of food. Turkey, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes with gravy, rolls, gelatin salad, sweet potato casserole, a couple of other casseroles I couldn't identify, and pumpkin pie. Everyone sat down and we started eating. How long have you two been dating? Mr. Bifford asked as he laughed. His mom looked down pushing food around on her plate. Justin's eyes got wide, and he choked on his food. 
He grabbed his water glass and chugged it. I smiled. We're just friends. Justin's dad nodded in approval. Justin straightened up. Yeah, what she said. The rest of the dinner went pretty smoothly. After we all finished eating, Justin's mom said, Michaela, would you mind giving me a hand in the kitchen? This would be a good chance to suck up to his mom. I'd love to, I said, trying to give out a good vibe. I'll help too, Justin said. His mom furrowed her brows. That won't be necessary, Justin. It's not the man's job to do dishes. It's the woman's. I was silent, but I raised my eyebrows at her last statement. Okay. He grinned sheepishly. I'll just go play video games or something. I followed Justin's mom into the kitchen. I didn't think I had ever seen more cabinets or counter space in one room before. I gawked openly. Wow, your kitchen is... She smiled. Thanks, sweetie. I clutched on to my spare hand. What would you like me to do? Oh, I don't actually need your help in the kitchen. I really just wanted an excuse to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I smiled at her. Okay, awesome. What did you want to talk about? She raised her eyebrows and looked down on me. I don't buy the whole friend thing. Excuse me? I asked in one quick and short mumble. She took a step closer and lowered her voice. What I mean is, I don't believe you only see my son as a friend. If you were just friends, then why would he invite you to eat Thanksgiving dinner with his family? I smiled at the thought of Justin having feelings for me. You think so? Don't get any big ideas. I don't want you anywhere near my son. Justin needs to stay away from girls. He's too young. I especially don't want him anywhere near you. And guess what? He's not been himself since you've been... Her tight fists created quotes in the air. Together. Fear drowned out my hearing, and for a second, the room started spinning. My biggest nightmare had become a reality. I didn't want her to win. My hands trembled by my sides. I had to stick up for myself. No, you're wrong. Justin is my best friend. We haven't even kissed. She responded so loudly, it was almost a scream. Stay away from my son! I cowered back a few steps out of sheer terror. The door to the kitchen swung open. What's going on? Justin asked with raised eyebrows and a huge vein bulging on his forehead. Chapter 31 Justin I couldn't believe my mom yelled at Michaela. When she saw me come in, she squinted her eyes in disdain, and her lips formed a straight, hard line. Justin, I'm sorry, but whatever you have going on with Michaela has to stop. Are you freaking kidding me? We told you we were just friends. She reached in her pocket and pulled out a familiar crumpled up note. Then, what do you call this? She said in a critical tone. She must have found one of the many different versions of the note I sent Michaela. It took me a minute to finally get it right. Where did you get that? She smirked. I found it while I was cleaning your room the other day. As if you could hide something like that from your mother. I can't believe you went through my stuff. You are so twisted. She scrunched her nose. Don't talk to me like that. I deserve respect. I'm your mother. How could I respect her when she was taking away everything I loved? I turned to Michaela. Let's go. We don't need this. I looked at Michaela and realized she was really bummed. She followed me outside. We got in my car, and I slowly backed out of the driveway. A few moments of silence passed. 
I think your mom is right. What do you mean? I mean, we both know that we really are more than friends. We can lie to ourselves all we want, but it's still just a lie. I think I like this. Go on. She was also right about us being too young. Maybe we shouldn't talk so much anymore. I turned my head toward her. Why would you say that? Michaela's voice dropped down an octave. I don't want to cause any problems for your family. You deserve to be happy. She didn't get it at all. I couldn't really be happy without her. She had no idea what it was like for me when we were at odds. She was my world. I couldn't let her slip through my fingers again. I looked her in the eyes. But, Kayla, you are what makes me happy. You're my best friend. A tear slid down her face. We can't be friends anymore. Hey, don't cry. I reached over and tenderly wrapped my hand around hers. It'll be okay. I'll work it out with my mom. I'll talk to her. She'll understand, I'm sure. She shook her head. No, it's more than that. I was confused now. What else is standing in our way? She wiped her tears. I can't tell you right now. Even if I did tell you, I'm not sure if you would understand. What wouldn't I understand? All of it. I smiled. Can you give me a hint? She glared at me. It's not something to be joked about. I'm not giving you any hints. In fact... Let's not talk for the rest of the ride. Don't talk to me after you drop me off either. I just want to be alone. I took a deep breath. I couldn't help but blame the whole situation on my mom. Michaela and I were doing fine. When I get home, I'm going to have a serious talk with my mother. I couldn't believe she ruined my chances with Michaela. I had worked so hard to try to get her to trust me enough to be my friend. It was like all my efforts had just gone down the drain. For the rest of the ride, I sat in silence in my own personal misery. Michaela was texting someone on her phone. I looked at her a few times, but she kept her eyes straight ahead, without a single glance in my direction. We reached her house and right before she got out, she said solemnly, Thanks for the ride. No problem, I mumbled. As I watched her walk away, it felt like she was walking out of my life forever. I drove home faster than I should have. I couldn't wait to let my mother have it. I ended up getting home within 20 minutes instead of 30. I walked in the door. Mom? She came out wearing a red apron with an innocent look on her face. Yes. Why did you scare off my friend? She threw her hands in the air. I'm sorry, Justin. I really am. The truth of the matter is, you're just too young for a girlfriend. I'm old enough to drive a car. Isn't that old enough? No, you're 16. She folded her arms in a stubborn stance. It's not like you could marry her. I backed up. Whoa, whoa, whoever said anything about marriage? She smiled. Well, honey, that's the whole point of dating, isn't it? I crossed my arms. What's wrong with dating for fun? Her smile disappeared. Everything. There are so many things that could go wrong with that idea. Like what, Mom? Like what? She pointed her finger. Watch your tone, and there are lots of things that could go wrong. She could end up breaking your heart, or worse, she could end up with a baby. Whoa, you need to chill out a little bit. All we have ever done is hold hands. It's pretty innocent. She let out an exasperated sigh. Justin, promise me you won't go near her ever again. I shook my head. That will never happen. Fine, she shrugged. Then I'll have to take your longboard. 
I stomped my foot. You can't. My longboard is like my child. That's a cruel and unusual punishment. She smirked. Exactly. I'm just trying to teach you a lesson. Someday, you'll be thanking me for this. I wasn't sure what kind of lesson she wanted to teach me, but I had a feeling I wasn't going to like it very much. I certainly wouldn't be thanking her for it. Chapter 32 Michaela. After Justin dropped me off, I went to my room. I wanted to be alone. I read a chapter or two in a romance novel. My phone lit up with Haley's name. I swiped the screen. Hello? A faint sob sounded on the other end of the phone. What's wrong, Kaylee? Brett is so stupid, she said in between heavy breaths. I sighed. Why? What did he do? She paused. He broke up with me. I'm so sorry, Haley. Is there anything I can do? She sniffled. Convince him to get back together with me. I'm miserable. I have so much homework, but I can't do any of it without a boyfriend. I couldn't help but laugh. Why are you laughing at me? She asked. Sorry, it's so ridiculous. Who needs a boyfriend to do homework? You wouldn't understand. Everything in your life is perfect. You have Justin practically eating out of your hands, she said with envy dripping from her every word. I took a deep breath. That's not true anymore. In a way, we broke up too. Haley sounded irritated. You weren't together, though. You have no clue how much it hurts to have the guy you're in love with change his mind about you. I bit my lip. Maybe you're right. I paused. We need shopping therapy. Why don't we go Black Friday shopping tonight? Haley finally sounded a little better when she said, All right, let's go. Okay, I'll get my mom to pick you up, and then we can go to the mall. Okay, bye. Bye. I got off the phone and rushed down the stairs. I found my mom in the kitchen scrubbing dishes. We need to pick up Haley and go to the mall right away, I said in a rush. She raised her eyebrows. Since when do you ask like that? I rolled my eyes. It's an emergency. Brett broke up with Haley. My mother gasped and choked back a laugh. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Help me finish up these dishes and we'll go. I refrained from rolling my eyes. I never understood why my mom always thought the kitchen had to be spotless before we went anywhere. When the dishes were done, I checked my phone. I had three missed calls and five unopened text messages. Someone must have really wanted to get a hold of me. I checked my missed calls, and they were all from Justin. This caused me to conclude that all the messages were from Justin as well. Sure enough, I was right. Michaela, please don't give up on us. I don't want my mom to be the reason that we can't be friends. He really didn't get it, did he? It wasn't just about his mom. I had my own reasons for why I knew it wouldn't work out. He must have not listened to me at all. I scrolled down and kept reading. Don't be mad at me, okay? I really haven't done anything wrong. This isn't fair. I smirked and continued reading. I get it if you don't want to date me. That's fine. But don't stop talking to me over it. I couldn't help but smile. He wanted me bad. My mom broke me into reality. Why are you smiling like that? I tried my best to wipe the grin off my face. No reason. Are you texting Haley about some boy? I smiled. Sure, let's go with that. I glanced back down at my phone. I don't know what happens to make you not want to be my friend, but it's driving me crazy not to know. 
Psh, he wished he could know. I'd never tell him, though. I'd take this secret to the grave. I really need to hear from you. I can't handle it when you don't talk to me. Are you ready to go? Mom asked. I glanced up. Huh? She raised her eyebrows as she walked toward the door to the garage. Well, are you coming? I stumbled to my feet and responded, Yeah, sure. I'd have to deal with my Justin problems later. Right now, I needed to help my best friend. I followed my mom and climbed into the front seat of the minivan. She blasted the Mamma Mia soundtrack. She snapped her fingers to the music and sang at the top of her voice, Why, why, did I ever let you go? I was grateful that she didn't question me any further about why I was smiling. The less she knew, the better. When she was so broken last year, I stopped dumping my problems on her. I stopped telling her my personal feelings. I needed to protect her. I turned toward my mom. She frowned and bit her bottom lip. Why did those lyrics cause my mom to be in pain? Are you okay? I asked. Yeah, I guess. It was just reminding me of a boy I used to date in high school. She paused. Hey, what did you say Justin's last name was again? Bifford. She covered her mouth with her hand. That was his last name. That was whose last name? Gary. My mom breathed out softly. I gasped. That's Justin's dad. You dated him? No way. Please tell me it's not true. Ew, did you kiss him? Well, yeah. Is that why Justin's mom hates me? What do you mean she hates you? She took me in the kitchen and ripped me to shreds. She said I couldn't be friends with Justin. That witch! My mom hissed. She hasn't changed a bit. What happened? We were together for about three weeks. It was prom night and he was my date. Everything was going smoothly until I caught that female with a hand on my boyfriend's chest. They were outside, all alone. Gary promised it was a misunderstanding, but I didn't believe him. Next thing I knew, the two of them were getting serious. Wow, I'm so sorry. After that, he never called me again. You got ghosted? Is that what people call it now? She laughed. Yeah, it is. Don't worry about it. It's all water under the bridge. Believe me, I have moved on. I'm glad you're over it. Or so she says. I wish Justin's mom could put it behind her, too. After a couple minutes, we arrived at Haley's house. I knocked on her door, and she answered after the second knock. What took you so long? I shrugged. Sorry, we had to finish the dishes. Haley pouted. This is so much more important than dishes. I know. I even told her it was an emergency. I said in an outrage. We got in the car. Haley, are you all right, sweetheart? My mom asked. She shrugged. I'm okay. I figured she didn't feel like telling my mom the details of her heartbreak. If I were her, I would have felt the same way. We arrived at the mall. I'll be in Macy's if you need me, my mom said. You girls have fun. Keep your phone on so I can call you. Okay, I called out. Don't you want to know what happened? Haley asked once my mom was out of earshot. We walked through the food court. Of course. While you tell me, let's go to Forever 21. Okay, that's fine. She turned to me. I called him a couple times and he didn't pick up. I figured he couldn't talk on the phone, so I texted him. All I asked was what he was doing. I nodded. And then what happened? Haley cringed. He made me wait hours for him to respond. He finally called me back, and I was so excited. When I answered the phone, he sounded all weird and serious. Next thing I knew, 
He told me a bunch of crap about how he needed some space and how I was too high maintenance for him. She folded her arms and sighed. Whatever that means. I think I know exactly what he meant by that. We turned into Forever 21, and Haley said, Ooh, look at those pink heels. I raised my eyebrows and looked at her. Sorry, what were you saying? Haley asked. Those shoes are just too cute. I cleared my throat. I was saying that the reason Brett broke up with you is because you called him too many times. Guys don't like it when girls get too clingy. Haley scoffed under her breath. That's so not true. I bet the real reason is he found another girl. She raised her eyebrows and gasped. I know. Maybe Ivy is after him now. I walked over to the jewelry stand and avoided her gaze. I didn't particularly like the subject of Ivy. Just the thought of her stealing a guy from someone made me cringe. Haley caught up to me. Doesn't it make sense, though? Justin doesn't like her. Maybe she's going after Brett now. I have got to talk to him. She pulled out her phone. Whoa, I have a lot of new text messages. She paused. And they are all from Justin. My heart beat at an uneven pace, and a weird rage came over me. I grabbed her phone from her and walked away. Hey, what's wrong with you? Haley asked. I want you to hear my side of the story before you hear Justin's. What do you mean? Remember how I said on the phone earlier that things between Justin and me aren't exactly perfect? She nodded. Uh-huh. Tell me what happened. I sat down on a display table with a mannequin standing on it. Let's just say that Justin's mom hates me, and I told Justin that we can't be friends anymore. Haley took two steps backward. No way! That's so mean! I guess I've been so upset about Brett, I forgot that you said something was wrong. I looked down at my feet. I know. Justin texted me a bunch too, but I haven't responded yet. Haley placed a hand on her hip. What are you waiting for? I shrugged. I wanted to make sure that you were okay. That seemed more important. Haley smiled. That's sweet of you. My problems might not be able to be fixed, but we can fix yours. Just tell Justin you love him and everything will be fine. I stood up. Are you kidding me? I can't tell Justin I love him. Why not? He said he loved you, didn't he? If I told him that I loved him, he would feel like he won the game. In his mind, he would have felt like he conquered me and he would move on to the next girl. Game over. I walked to the back of the store where all the sales racks were. I shuffled through the tightly packed clothes. It doesn't have to be that way, Haley said from behind me. Maybe you guys could date for a couple years, go to college, and get married. I stopped looking through the clothes and turned around. That's a slim possibility. You know how I feel when it comes to marriage after everything I watched my parents go through. Haley sighed. How are you ever going to get your happy ending if you don't believe in them? I shook my head. Maybe there are no happy endings. Then, something hit me. I knew exactly what I could write about in the newspaper that would really make the scholarship committee notice me. I needed to write my story. I needed to write about what happens when happy endings don't work out anymore. I needed to write about divorce. Chapter 33 Michaela It was 3.02 p.m. and class had finished for the day. I closed my locker door and saw Brett leaning against the wall, smiling. Hey, Michaela. He looked me up and down. You look nice today. 
I couldn't believe Brett was hitting on me. If Haley knew about this, she would freak. A couple girls pulled my attention away when they talked loudly about how cute Justin was. I turned to see that it was Ivy and Shannon. They confirmed my suspicions about them being completely, insanely, boy crazy. Thanks, Brett. I responded in a low voice. I grabbed my book bag and walked in the opposite direction. He caught up to me. So, are you doing anything fun today? I raised my eyebrows. I have an article I need to write for journalism, but other than that, nothing. His newly found confident smile returned. I heard you've gone back to your old ways of rejecting Justin. I tried not to show emotion in my face. I had a strong feeling that anything I said to him would be repeated to Justin. What's it to you? I asked nonchalantly. He shrugged. I thought that with you being at odds with Justin and me having just broken up with Haley, that we should talk more. What made you come to that conclusion? Justin and Haley are good friends. It only makes sense for us to be good friends, too. Justin talks to Haley about you all the time. And I want to talk to you about Justin. Of course he does. We walked outside into the cool autumn air. It's a little chilly out here, I said. He smiled. Exactly. If you want, I can give you a ride home. After all, we live in the same neighborhood. It would be easy. It bothered me the way he said the word easy. It was almost like he meant that getting me to like him would be easy too. Maybe I was overthinking it, but I had to wonder if I was a target since he knew I used to have such a big crush on him. Then again, riding with him was better than waiting for my mom in the cold. That would be great. My mom told me she's going to be 30 minutes late. Let me text her that I'm riding with you. He led me to his car and shot me a flirty smile as he opened the door for me. Right as I was getting in, someone exclaimed, What the heck? I spun around. Haley's face was burnt red. She was talking to Justin. I turned back to Brett. Maybe this was a bad idea. Brett responded with a soft, Psh, as Haley marched over in our direction. Justin followed close behind her. When they reached us, Haley said in an outrage, What do you think you're doing, going on a date with my ex? I put my hands up in defense. Calm down. No one's taking anyone on a date. Then why was he opening the door for you and smiling like the two of you just got engaged? Justin asked with jealousy dripping from his every word. I couldn't help but laugh. You guys are being so ridiculous. Brett was just giving me a ride home. He opened the door for me because he's a gentleman. That's all. Haley raised her eyebrows. Well, I don't buy it. Something is definitely going on here. Brett frowned. It wouldn't matter even if there was. We're not together anymore. You need to learn to accept that. Haley snarled and walked in the opposite direction. Let's go, Justin. He followed her and glanced back several times with a hurt look on his face. I felt a little bit guilty about leaving with Brett, but at the same time, I had wanted to get a ride from him for a long time. After all, I liked Brett way before Haley dated him. I had history with him, and I wanted to be his friend. I climbed in the front seat, and Brett shut the door behind me. He got in on the other side. That was dramatic. I smiled. No one knows drama better than Haley and Justin. He laughed. Ain't that the truth? In all seriousness, is Justin okay? I asked. He sighed. I don't know. What I do know is that his mom took his longboard away. Why would she do that? Brett hesitated. I'm not sure if I should tell you this. 
But we're friends now. You have to tell me. Okay, so Justin's mom told him that he should never go near you again. He argued with her, so she took away his longboard. He has to agree to give up on you to get it back. I gasped. No way! It really sucks for Justin because he doesn't get to longboard and he doesn't get you. It's really just a lose-lose situation. I sighed. I know, and it makes me feel horrible. I should talk to him and convince him to give up on me. He needs his longboard back. Now I know what he meant when he texted me and said it's not fair. Brett smirked. Good luck. I don't think anyone could convince Justin to give up on you. He's very determined. I took a deep breath. I can tell. The problem is, I'm not right for Justin. We're too different. Brett smiled. Yeah, but opposites attract. Maybe, but attraction might not be enough. Brett pulled into the entrance of our subdivision and punched the remote. The gate opened and he pulled through. You know, I feel sorry for Justin. He tries so hard to win you over, and all you do is turn him down. Why is that? I have my reasons. I just don't feel comfortable sharing, that's all. Brett raised his eyebrows. It's not because of me, is it? I glared at him. Why would you think that? He pulled up to my house and stopped. He exhaled. I know you had it bad for me freshman year. I was a jerk to you. I'm sorry. But don't take it out on Justin. I got out of the car. This isn't about you or Justin or Justin's mom. This is a completely different issue, and I wish everyone would stop hounding me about it. Brett shrugged. Whatever you say, Michaela. Chapter 34 Justin I walked into English a few days later and took a seat next to Haley. Michaela was talking to Mrs. Holly. She gasped. Her face looked ecstatic. She came over to my table, beaming. Mrs. Holly read the article I wrote and sent it to the scholarship committee. They can't announce anything yet, but they are pretty sure they are going to give it to me. Haley looked happy for her, but her smile didn't reach her eyes. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, definitely. Was it because of one of the ideas I gave you? I asked. Not technically, she said. It was something they read in my portfolio and liked. It was mostly because I wrote about... Divorce, Haley said, point blank. Michaela grimaced. On that note, I'm going to go. She turned quickly and walked away. Huh? What's her problem? What's the big deal about writing about divorce? Who knows? I have more important stuff to worry about. Like how long do you think Michaela and Brett have been dating? I shrugged. Why do you think they are dating? Haley shook her head. You don't get it. Why else would Brett break up with me? I leaned forward. If you want, I can ask him why he broke up with you. She beamed. You would do that? I nodded. Sure. What are friends for? Mrs. Holly started talking about diagramming sentences. All through class, I couldn't concentrate. I kept thinking about the possibility of Michaela liking Brett. Haley was her best friend. She'd know better than anyone if Michaela liked someone. After class, I went to my locker. Brett showed up at his locker a couple seconds later. I decided it was time to figure out what was really going down. I walked over to him, nodded my head. Sup? Hey, bro. What's with you and Michaela? He shook his head and laughed. Man, I told you nothing is going on. Are you sure? If you like her, it's fine. I don't care. Psh, yeah, right. You care more about Michaela than I've ever cared about any girl. I smiled. Touché. I'm guessing Michaela had nothing to do with you dumping Haley. 
Don't tell me Haley asked you to ask me. I laughed, something like that. To answer your question, Michaela had nothing to do with it. I broke it off with Haley because she kept calling me multiple times a day. It was driving me insane. So, you cut off the relationship for the very reason you told her. Brett smiled. Pretty much. I laughed. <laughs> wow, Haley way overanalyzed the whole thing. She even thought you might have dropped her for Ivy. Brett gave a conceited grin. Yeah, Ivy wishes she could get with this. I laughed. Sorry, but I'm pretty sure she wants me. Whatever, you can have her. I decided to change the subject. Do you have time to hang out today? Yeah, why don't you come to my place? Okay, sounds good. I'll be there in a couple minutes. I walked to my car and couldn't get over my excitement of going to Michaela's neighborhood. I got in and turned up my music as loud as it went. It felt good to be done with school. As I drove out of the parking lot, I noticed Michaela and Haley getting into the same minivan. I waved at them. Haley waved back, and Michaela barely glanced in my direction. Sometimes, I wished she would be friendlier. I wonder if Haley was going to Michaela's house today. That could make things interesting. I arrived at Brett's a couple minutes later. When I got to his door, I knocked as I let myself in. Brett was on the couch. Hey man, guess who's been texting me? Haley? He smirked. No, it's your girl, Michaela. I felt like punching my fist through a wall. What happens to there being nothing between you two? Chill, man. I didn't even contact her. She texted me first. I cocked an eyebrow. Dude, that's even worse. I put my backpack on the floor and joined him on the couch. I'm not that into her. I only flirted with her the other day because I was on the rebound, Brett said. I didn't want him to know how mad he was making me. I looked away. You look really ticked off right now he said. Yeah, you're right. If it bothers you, why don't you text her? I sighed. I would, but she never responds to my messages. Maybe she's not mad anymore. Here, let me ask her. He took out his phone. His fingers flew across the screen. Done. I decided to text Haley. Are you at Michaela's house? She responded within a minute. That's one thing I liked about Haley. She always responded fast. Yeah, we're having a sleepover. Want to come over for a while? I'm at Brett's house right now. I probably could. The only problem is that Michaela hates me. She doesn't hate you. She's texting Brett right now. That bothers me. Don't worry about it. Brett doesn't like her like that. Who are you texting? Brett asked. I shot him a conceited smile. Your ex? Brett did a double take. Why? Because she's still one of my friends? Brett laughed. This is so awkward. I'm texting Michaela, and you're texting Haley. Pretty much. Brett laughed again. What if we messed with their heads a little bit? Let's switch phones. What do you mean? I cocked my head. I'll send Haley a text, and you can send Michaela a text. It can't be anything normal either. It's got to be something outrageous. That could work, but only if we both approve of the message first, Brett said. I nodded and handed him my phone. Deal. Chapter 35 Michaela I sat on my bed next to Haley. Hey, I wanted to be up front with you and let you know there's nothing going on between me and Brett. Good, Haley grinned. Let's keep it that way. He's really just a friend. Besides, we were talking about Justin the whole time. Psh, why doesn't he ever feel like talking to me? Haley's phone vibrated. I strained my neck over her shoulder. I could barely see anything. Haley snapped her head around. 
Are you reading my texts? I tried not to smile. No. Haley grinned wickedly. You were, weren't you? You must have seen Justin's name pop up. Do you still like him? No, I didn't see his name. I rolled my eyes. And who ever said I liked him to begin with? You never had to say anything. It's written all over your face every time you see him. I threw a candy wrapper at her head. Don't be ridiculous. Haley held her hands up. Hey, I'm not the one in denial. I don't mind saying that I like Brett. Haley's phone lit up and she stopped breathing. What's going on? I leaned forward, trying to see. Speaking of Brett, she exclaimed, he just texted me. She slid her fingers across the phone. Hmm, that's weird. His text is about you. That's awkward, I lied. My heart sped up an extra beat. Why would Brett text Haley about me? Does he have feelings for me? What did he say? I asked. He said that Justin wants to know what it would be like to kiss Michaela. I couldn't help but roll over and laugh. He would. Haley seemed frustrated. I was totally hoping he was trying to get me back. She closed her eyes. Everything is always about you and Justin. I felt my phone vibrate. I picked it up and saw I had a new message. Speaking of Brett, he just texted me. What did he say? Haley squealed. He asked if I'm still mad at Justin. Tell him you're not, Haley said. Then ask him if he's ready to take me back. I crossed my arms. There is no way I'm saying that. Why not? You know you're not mad at him anymore, and I really need my boyfriend back. Fine, I'll tell him I'm not mad, but do you really want me to ask Brett if he wants you back? It seems kind of desperate, no offense. I don't care if it sounds desperate. If it works, then it will all be worth it. I grimaced. I'm not going to do that. If you want to get back together with him, you need to try a more straightforward approach. Then again, if you just give him some space, he might come around on his own. Gosh, I sure hope he will come around. Haley paused. Anyway, I told Brett to tell Justin that if you guys kissed, it would be magical. Girl, you have been watching way too many Disney movies. I can't help it, she said. I'm a hopeless romantic. My phone lit up and there was a text from Justin. Are you really done being mad? I didn't want to respond to his text. I was a little frustrated that Brett told him. I continued reading. What was your reaction to me wanting to kiss you? I read the text from Justin and shook my head. Those guys must be hanging out right now. What are the odds? I know, right? Haley giggled. I most definitely did not want to respond to his text. Justin just told me that you won't respond to his text. What's your deal? Haley asked. My deal is, I told him I didn't want to talk to him anymore. I don't know why he thinks that he can talk to me again. He needs to realize that we are never going to end up together. There's too much going against us. Haley slumped her shoulders. It doesn't have to be that way. I don't understand why you keep pushing Justin away. Lots of girls would love to be in your shoes. I know I would, Ivy would, and probably any other girl in this school would too. I raised my eyebrows. You mean to say you're into Justin? Haley shook her head. No, that's not what I was trying to say. I meant if I were you and Justin liked me, then I would at least give him a chance. I scowled. You're always texting him. You're more of a friend to him than Brett is. Yeah, but that's it. I am just a friend. You're the woman of his dreams. 
He told me once that the best feeling he ever gets is the one he gets when he sees you. I gasped, and my jaw practically hit the floor. Did he really say that? It sounded a lot better when he said it. I was just paraphrasing. That's really sweet of him, I said thoughtfully. Haley smiled. Does that mean you're ready to date him? I rubbed my hand across my face and mumbled, No. Haley leaned forward and hit the bed. Why not? You just admitted that he's the most perfect guy ever. I laughed. Those weren't my exact words. No, but that's what you were thinking. I rolled my eyes to the side. Psh, as if. You know it's not a crime to admit that you like someone. Yeah, but it is a crime to lie about liking someone. You're lying when you say you don't like Justin, and I can't figure out why. I smiled. Good, let's keep it that way. Fine, if you're not going to gush about your feelings for Justin, then why don't we watch a movie or something? I shrugged. That's fine by me, because I don't plan on ever gushing about how amazing Justin is. So you admit that he's amazing. I playfully nudged her. Not even. Chapter 36. Michaela. The next Monday, Haley and I rode to school together. She disappeared as soon as we arrived. I went to my locker to get my algebra book. After I grabbed it, I closed the locker. To my surprise... Justin was standing right behind it. He smiled, and I forced myself not to show any reaction. Hey, Michaela, did you get my text? Yeah. I walked away, trying to leave Justin behind. He caught up to me. But Brett said you're not mad anymore. I'm not, I said with an edge to my voice. Really? Cause you seem kind of mad. I forced myself to smile. I figured he deserved to know I didn't hate him. I'm not mad. Don't worry about it. What was your reaction when Haley said I wanted to kiss you? Justin shot me a flirty smile that made my knees feel weak. I felt my cheeks heat up. Since he was standing right there, I couldn't ignore him like I did when he texted me yesterday. I had to come up with an answer. When I opened my mouth, I had no clue what I was going to say. Why do you care? Justin smiled. Because I want to kiss you. My heart stopped beating. I clenched my fist so hard that my knuckles turned white. My mouth was super dry, and I wasn't sure if what I was feeling was love or if I had a fever. I shook myself back to reality. Why would you want to do that? You ask a lot of questions. You started it. Touché. Justin opened the door, and we headed into algebra. Thank you. His eyes met mine, and I could have sworn there was a flicker of hope hidden beneath his cute smirk. I took a seat in the front and wasn't surprised when Justin sat next to me. Brett came in a few moments later and looked offended. You're sitting with Michaela instead of me? He said to Justin. Sorry, bro. Justin patted the seat at the table behind him. You can sit here, though. Fine. Just replace me with your woman, Brett muttered. I couldn't help but laugh. Brett was so funny today. The teacher began class. All through the algebra lecture, I tried to take notes, but I could feel Justin look over at me several times, and it was super distracting. Not to mention, I kept thinking about what it would be like to kiss him. I had never kissed anyone before. I imagined his soft lips tenderly brushing across mine. I felt my face redden again. A sigh escaped me. Mrs. Allen called on me and asked for the answer to a complicated problem. My face went pale. What on earth is this lecture even about? I shook my head. 
Justin shot up his hand and gave the answer. I thought you weren't good at math, I whispered to him. He laughed. Why on earth would you think that? My eyebrows creased together. Because the day I met you, you didn't even know how to solve the simplest of problems. Justin tipped his head back and continued laughing. Why is that funny? I just pretended to be bad at math so I'd have a reason to talk to you. I rolled my eyes and said sarcastically, Wow. He smirked. You know you loved it. No, you wish I loved it. I snapped, hiding a smile. In reality, I couldn't care less. I had to look away so he couldn't see my face. Justin grinned. You so want me. Mrs. Allen dismissed the class, and I said, I'm out of here. I left so fast that Justin couldn't follow me. I headed straight for the bathroom, smiling as I went. I turned the corner and swung the door open. I was surprised to see Ivy and her crew. Haley came in right after me. Justin and I are totally getting married someday. Ivy said to Tina and Shannon in a starstruck voice. Shannon laughed, and Tina said, Totally. Haley's face turned a light shade of pink, and she said hastily, There is no way Justin would ever marry you. If he'd marry anyone, he'd marry Michaela. Ivy flipped her hair and turned to me. Oh yeah? If he's marrying you, then how many kids does he want to have? I grimaced. I don't know. She smiled triumphantly. He wants to have three boys. Duh. I thought everyone knew that. I crossed my arms. When are you ever going to give up? Ivy raised her eyebrows. The real question is, when are you going to give up? Isn't it obvious that he's over you? He told me the other day that you guys are just friends. Sounds like he has no feelings for you at all. Face it, Justin will never care about you or your pathetic life. She spat out. Yeah, right, Haley shot back. Justin is in love with her. You're the one he has no feelings for. Get over yourself. Ivy made a high-pitched offended noise. Haley hooked her arm through mine. Let's leave. As we walked out, we heard Ivy say, Can you believe those girls? As if Justin could ever like her. The way she said the word her made me feel like something was terribly wrong with me. What if he was playing me? I almost gave him my heart. I almost gave him my lips. Haley looked concerned. Are you okay? What if Ivy was right? And Justin likes her. She did know how many children he wants to have. Maybe it's a sign that he prefers Ivy. I don't know why I thought he would like me more. I wiped a tear from my face. You're crying. No, I just have pollen in my eye. Haley laughed. News flash. It's the dead of winter. There isn't a whole lot of pollen. Okay, so maybe I'm crying. You do care about Justin, and Ivy crushed any hope you might have had. I nodded numbly. Haley patted me on the back. Hey, it's okay. I meant what I said back there. Justin really does like you. She paused. At least, I think he does. I hope he hasn't changed his mind. I laughed through my tears. That's great, Haley. We don't even know if he still likes me. For all we know, he really does like Ivy. Dang it, no he doesn't, she stomped. I'm going to have a talk with him. This whole crying thing over Justin is going to come to an end. Okay, but I don't want to go to class crying. Go to your locker and wipe your tears. Put on some fresh makeup. You look like a wreck. I laughed. I loved Haley's cruel honesty.
Chapter 37 Justin I sat in my desk, watching the seconds tick by as I waited for Michaela to come into history class. Haley snapped me out of my boredom when she came rushing in and said, Justin, we have an emergency! I raised my eyebrows and stood up. Is the school on fire? Who died? Haley threw her hands up in the air. Worse! Well, what happened? A look of doom came over her face. It's about Michaela. My heart sunk. If anything bad happens to Michaela, I didn't think I would be able to handle it. What happened? Ivy told us that you and her will get married and she's going to give birth to your three sons. She said that you would never care about Michaela's pathetic life and you would never love Michaela. Haley said all in one breath. I sat back down and said, Whoa, that's a lot to take in. I know, and it made Michaela so upset. That surprised me. How upset? Haley leaned forward. She was crying, she whispered. I placed my hands to my forehead. That really stresses me out. Haley put both of her hands on my desk and leaned forward. Don't you see? It's a sign. She likes you. I rubbed my hand under my chin. Huh, that sounds impossible. No, it's not. It makes perfect sense. Now you and Michaela can get married and live happily ever after. A familiar voice came from behind me. Haley, what the heck are you talking about? I knew that could only come from one person. Michaela. Haley blushed. Hey, what are you doing here? This is my class. I should be asking you what you're doing here. Aren't you supposed to be in English? Michaela asked. Haley looked at her watch. Crap, I'm going to be late. Bye, everyone. She rushed out of the room. A bunch of random guys waved and looked at Haley like she was a Greek goddess. I wondered if she realized the way guys gawked at her. I'd have to point that out sometime. Michaela took her seat in front of me. When class started, I couldn't pay attention as well as I normally do. I kept thinking about the possibility that Michaela might have feelings for me. It gave me hope. Class ended and Michaela got up to leave. Michaela, do you have plans after school? I called out to her. She raised her eyebrows, and a look of complete shock filled her face. She must have really believed that I was over her. No, I have a lot of homework. Why? I was wondering if you wanted to go see a movie or something. She blushed, and I guessed she was remembering the last time we watched a movie when she fell asleep. It was pretty epic. I'd give anything for a do-over. She smiled. Like I said, I'm busy. Maybe some other time, though. The fact that she said, maybe some other time, let me know that she was at least a little bit interested. Or maybe it was just my imagination. I smiled. Yeah, maybe some other time. The rest of the day was kind of a blur. I went home and got on my computer, I immediately went to Michaela's page on Facebook. She had added a bunch of new pictures. They weren't just any pictures. They were glamour shots taken by a photographer. She was already beautiful, but these pictures took her beauty to a whole new level. I knew I had to say something to her. I sent her a message. Hey, how's it going? I was surprised when she responded. Never been better. What about you? I liked it that she was pretending that she had a good day, even though I knew it had been rough on her. I wanted to tell her that she looked pretty in her pictures, but at the same time, I had a huge fear of her rejecting me. I took a moment to come up with the response. It's going pretty good. I saw that you put up new pictures. No photographer could make me good looking. It said that she saw the message, but she didn't say anything. 
After a couple minutes, I got a text message from Haley. You sure confused the heck out of Michaela. She doesn't know how to respond to your backwards compliment. I laughed so hard. I never thought of it as a backwards compliment. But I guess that is what it was. I responded to Haley. It's okay if she doesn't find me attractive. Plenty of other girls do. You mean Ivy, right? She's the only one I can think of. I smirked and remembered how Haley used to like me too, but I wasn't going to say anything about it. This time, it was Michaela that texted me. She surprised me once again by responding. You don't need a photographer to make you good looking. You already are. I couldn't believe what I just read. I texted Haley. Did you hack Michaela's Facebook? No. Why? She just told me that I'm good looking. Is she sick? No, but this is a good sign. Now is your chance to go for her. I knew exactly what I needed to do, and I wouldn't need some electronic device to do it either. Michaela had no idea what was going to hit her. Chapter 38 Michaela A couple weeks had passed, and Christmas was right around the corner. It was my all-time favorite holiday. I walked into school and noticed that people were reading the newspaper. That's strange. Almost no one ever reads the paper. As I walked by, everyone was smiling at me, and some people were laughing. I checked my shoes to see if I had any toilet paper stuck to them. I went to the bathroom to get a better look at myself. I glanced in the mirror and saw that my curls were all in place, and nothing seemed out of the norm with my outfit. I had no idea why people reacted so strangely to me. I walked back into the hall, and some random girl with jet black hair walked up and asked, Are you Michaela? I swallowed. Yes? She smiled. Congratulations! I was about to ask her what she meant by that, but she kept walking. I went to my locker and found a newspaper sticking out of it. I unfolded it and read the headline of the paper. Michaela Hamilton, will you go to the Christmas formal with me? Justin Bifford. I gasped. So that was why everyone took a sudden interest in the school newspaper. I opened my locker and found a bouquet of red roses and a package of Godiva chocolates. A masculine voice behind me called out, So, what do you say? I whirled around and saw Justin looking hopeful. A crowd of people began to form around us. I felt my heart beat an unsteady course, and I thought my head was going to explode. Why isn't she saying anything? A random girl asked. Why doesn't she say yes? Another girl commented. I finally found the courage to speak. I can't. Justin looked like he had been slapped. I tore my way through the crowd. I wanted to get away from everyone as fast as possible. Ivy caught my eye through the crowd. What is wrong with her? I would cut my right arm off to go to the dance with Justin. He must have heard her because he laughed hard. I continued walking down the hallway, and Justin caught up to me. Wait, I want to talk to you, he called out. I turned around. Yes? His eyes shifted to the ground, and he hung his head low. Why won't you go to the dance with me? It's too much. Your mom would find out about it, and then she would make your life even worse. I don't want to cause you any more problems. Is this seriously about my mom? Because honestly, I don't care what she says. There's nothing she can do or say that will ever be worse than losing you. I looked into his eyes, and I could tell that he meant what he said. I'm sorry. I can't. I turned away to leave. What is this really about? 
he asked. I turned back to him with raised eyebrows. What do you mean? Brett told me you said that this isn't really about my mom, or him, or me. Just tell me, what happens to make you want to turn me down all the time when I haven't done anything wrong? A tear slid down my face. You wouldn't understand, even if I told you. I'm not able to read your mind, Kayla. I can't help you if you don't tell me what the issue is. I looked off to the side. I don't want to have to tell you. I choked back tears. It's none of your business anyway. He stepped forward. I think it is my business if it has to do with me. Don't you understand? This has nothing to do with you. I pointed to myself. This has to do with me. Newsflash, Justin. The world doesn't always revolve around you. I said as my voice cracked. I had never seen Justin look so hurt before. I never said it did, he said in a low voice. He walked in the opposite direction, and I felt the guilt start to sink in. I hated myself for hurting him, but I couldn't possibly tell him the truth. I went to the science building where I had chemistry. It was one of the only classes I had with Haley. I entered the room and saw her sitting at a table in the middle. I sat next to her. She looked happy when she asked, Are you excited for the winter formal this Saturday? I shrugged. I probably won't go. Haley looked like I had just dumped cold water on her. She said in as loud of a voice as she could without screaming, What do you mean you're not going to the dance? It's a chance to buy a formal. Several heads turned in our direction with disapproving glances. I lowered my voice. Did you have to say that so loud? Sorry, Haley whispered. We waited a second for everyone to continue talking. Are you out of your mind? How could you tell Justin no? I shrugged. It seemed like the right thing to do. Haley rolled her eyes. That's a load of crap. You like Justin, but you're too stubborn to admit it. I shook my head. No, we've been over this. Haley smirked. Give it up, Kayla. Justin told me that you confessed your feelings for him. I gripped the edges of the black lab table. All I did was tell him that he was good looking. It wasn't exactly a marriage proposal. Haley beamed. That reminds me. I've decided that I need to get married before you. That won't be very hard because I'm not getting married until I'm 30. I noticed that the room turned silent and the teacher was about to start class. Haley giggled. I'm getting married as soon as I turn 18. The whole room erupted with laughter. Haley was probably one of the craziest people I had ever met. She responded to the class, Well, I'm just being honest. Everyone kept laughing, and the teacher said, As soon as you're done laughing about children getting married too young, we'll begin class. Haley scoffed so loud, I was sure the whole class heard it. Something told me she didn't like being referred to as a child. After about 20 minutes of lecture, the teacher allowed us to do some of the homework in class. I was working on a complicated problem when Haley nudged me. Hey, do you think Brett will ask me to the dance? I groaned. Really, Haley? I'm trying to concentrate. She pushed my chemistry book to the side. Homework is lame. Boys are more important. I rolled my eyes. Only Haley would say something that ridiculous. I realized I wasn't going to win the argument, so I gave up trying to do my homework. I turned toward her and rested my head in my hand. Okay, you win. You've got my full attention. Haley smiled. Perfect. Now tell me what you did to get Justin to ask you to the dance. 
I shrugged. I don't know. I curled my hair today. Haley beamed. That's genius. I am totally curling my hair tomorrow. Then Brett will have to ask me to the dance. He'll have no choice. I laughed. Haley, you're crazy. Haley smiled. Yeah, but wouldn't it be boring if I weren't? Chapter 39 Justin I walked in my house with my head hung low. I felt like such a failure. I had everything planned out so perfectly. I couldn't understand what I did wrong. It was like every time I tried to win Michaela over, she pushed me away. My phone vibrated. It was a text from Haley. Are you okay? No, I'm depressed. I don't understand why Michaela said no. I felt my phone vibrate several times and saw that Haley was calling. I answered in a monotone voice, Hello. Haley exclaimed, You really are depressed. I've never heard you sound so sad before. I didn't know what to say, so I responded in a low voice, Yeah. Cheer up. You know Michaela's in love with you. No, she isn't, and she probably never will be. Stop being so negative. If you want her to love you, you have to believe that it's a possibility. I ran my fingers through my hair. Do you really think it's a possibility? There was a smile in her voice when she said, Definitely. I think she's just scared to admit it. I rubbed my palm on the back of my neck. What do you think I can do to make her come around? Obviously, all the public attention and gifts didn't work today. I'd say you should try to win her over with your words. I paced around the living room. You're saying she doesn't want to be bought. Exactly. Maybe you should start small. Give her little compliments every now and then. I smiled. Oh yeah, I just remembered that I asked her out on a date again today. Haley groaned. You shouldn't have done that. Why not? Haley sighed. Because you already asked her to the dance and she said no. Now you probably feel worse because she said no twice. Am I right? I stopped and thought it over for a moment. I guess you're right. What do you suggest? Try giving her a little bit of space. She probably feels really overwhelmed right now. Give her time. She'll come around. I sighed. Okay, I hope you're right. My mom came in. Who are you talking to? She asked in a stern voice. Haley said something, but I couldn't hear her. My mother gasped. Are you talking to a girl? It better not be Michaela. I told you to stay away from her. I listened to Haley. She was monologuing about how she wanted Brett back. Haley, I have a bit of a problem. You'll have to tell me more about your Brett fantasies later. Haley laughed. Okay, bye, best friend. I grinned. Bye. It felt nice to have someone call me their best friend. I hung up the phone and said to my mother, It's not what you think. She raised her eyebrows. I've told you before that I don't like the idea of you talking to girls. I know that's the rule, but Haley is just a friend. Who is Haley? I thought you were talking to Michaela. I shifted my weight between my feet. Haley is Michaela's best friend. She's my best friend as well. She shook her head. That sounds like nothing but trouble. I don't want you talking to any of those girls. I grimaced. Why not? What's wrong with having friends who are girls? She slammed the hall door shut. You're just too young. You don't understand how to control your hormones yet. I ran my hand across my face and through my hair in frustration. Gosh, Mom, why don't you trust me? She smirked like she knew something I didn't. 
I found a newspaper in your room. I know you asked Michaela to the dance. I can't believe you would go behind my back like that. I grimaced. And I can't believe you keep snooping through my stuff. How dare you talk to me in that tone? Give me your cell phone. What? What? You heard me, she snapped. Hand it over. I reluctantly handed her the phone. What am I supposed to do without a phone? What if I get in a car accident? Then I guess you'll die, she said with sarcasm. I scoffed. I couldn't believe her. Go ahead and take everything away. I hung my head. Michaela doesn't want me anyway. She smiled wickedly. Good, then you can stop trying. Once you admit that you're over her, you can have your things back. I mumbled. That shouldn't take long at this rate. That's my boy. She grinned. Now you don't have anyone to text, you can make yourself useful and clean your room. Why do you have to be so controlling all the time? Her jaw dropped. I can't believe you would say such a thing to me. Just for that, you get to clean your room and vacuum the whole house. Fine, I muttered. I marched up the stairs. I didn't even know where to start. Laundry was all over the floor, on the bed, and on basically anything with a surface. I had a feeling today would be a long one. As I began to put my clothes in the hamper, I couldn't help but think about Michaela. I had to find a way to get her to like me. Then all of this would be worth it. I kept going over different scenarios in my head of how I could get her to give us a chance. But nothing seemed like the right answer. Chapter 40 Justin I walked into school feeling like garbage. The whole getting turned down by Michaela thing had really taken its toll. I passed Ivy. She had a giant smile on her face. She pushed a stray wisp of hair behind her ear, and her eyes grew big. Hey, have you been to your locker yet? No, I said in a skeptical voice. She shot me a toothy grin that made my skin crawl. She touched my forearm and said, Okay, see you later. I walked to my locker and felt a little creeped out. I wondered what weird thing Ivy did to it. I put in my combination and opened it up. There was a plate full of brownies inside. Someone must have asked the people at the front desk to open my locker for them. That was a bit weird, but whatever. At least I had something yummy to eat. Haley came up to me. Oh, yum. Who gave you the brownies? I shrugged. Probably Ivy. I grabbed one of the brownies and took a bite. Oh my gosh. Do they taste that bad? I swallowed. No, they're freaking amazing. They're probably the best brownies I've ever had. I bet Michaela could make better ones. I smiled. She bakes? Duh. She's like the best baker ever. Part of me wondered if Haley lied straight through her teeth just to make Michaela sound good. Either way, it didn't matter in the long run. So, why did she give you brownies? I have no idea. Probably because I'm so good-looking and charming. She laughed sarcastically. Did she leave you a note? I shrugged. I didn't really pay any attention. I was more concerned about eating the brownies. Haley rolled her eyes. You would. She searched through my locker. Why are you going through my stuff? We have to find the note. She looked a little longer and said, Found it. What does it say? She cleared her throat. It says, You're as sweet as these brownies. Will you go to the Christmas formal with me? I kept eating the brownies and didn't say anything. Wow, she is so original. I laughed. 
she did have a point. Michaela joined us. Hey, what's going on? Ivy asked Justin to the dance. Want a brownie? Haley asked, taking a bite herself. No thanks. She made a face. What was his answer? They both looked at me. Good question. What is your answer, Justin? Haley asked. I gulped. I, uh, I don't know. I haven't decided. Michaela furrowed her eyebrows. Congratulations. I hope you have fun. Did she not hear what I just said? I told her I wasn't sure yet. Why did she assume I would go with Ivy? Why should she care if she doesn't like me? Michaela walked away, and as soon as she was out of earshot, Haley said, Okay, that did not go well. You have to tell Ivy no. I took another bite of the brownie. I don't know. She does make some pretty good brownies, and she actually likes me. That's more than I can say for some people. If you tell her yes, you'll be making a huge mistake. You still have a chance with Michaela, but if she sees you all lovey-dovey with Ivy at the dance, then that chance might be gone. I kept eating. Yeah, but these brownies are so good. What's more important, your stomach or the love of your life? She walked away, and I realized she had a point. I would probably lose Michaela if I said yes. I had already worked so hard to get where I was. I went through my next couple of classes. I kept thinking about what I could tell Ivy. If I told her no, she would be crushed. If I told her yes, Michaela would be devastated. If Michaela was upset about it, I'd probably be upset too. That settled it. I'd have to tell Ivy no. I went to lunch. Ivy was sitting at a table by herself. I walked over and sat in front of her. Hey, Justin, she said in a loud voice. Michaela and Haley looked over in our direction. Michaela looked as stormy as ever. She probably thought I was talking to Ivy because I was going to tell her yes. I decided to just go for it. So... I got your note and the brownies. She smiled. Uh-huh. I looked around and then focused on her. I'm sorry, but I can't go with you. Her smile dropped. Why not? I leaned forward. Because some people might get the wrong idea about us. What do you mean people would get the wrong idea? She said, a little louder than I anticipated. Every head in the cafeteria turned and looked at us. I responded in a quiet voice, hoping she would get the hint. I mean, that some people might think that something is going on between us, but we're just friends. Ivy cocked an eyebrow. I think we both know there's more going on between us than friendship she said in a sweet voice. She had me hypnotized for a moment, but I shook myself out of it. Listen, Ivy, I'm not interested in you like that. What's the problem? Do you like another girl? I rolled my eyes. You have got to be kidding me. You like Michaela, don't you? Ivy demanded. Who I like is my concern. You don't need to think about it for a second. Haley told me you're in love with Michaela. Is that true? I stood up. This conversation is over. I turned around and walked toward Haley's table. Where are you going? Ivy called out. To eat with my friends, I said over my shoulder. You mean Michaela? Ivy hissed. I smirked. Whatever makes you feel better. Ivy scoffed, and I ignored her, taking a seat across from Haley and Michaela. What did I miss? We should be asking you that question, Haley said with a mischievous grin. What do you mean? 
Don't play games with me, Justin. We all saw you talking to Ivy. Give me the dirt. I told her I didn't want to go to the dance with her. I shrugged like it was no big deal. I'm just not that interested. Haley smiled. Isn't that great? She asked Michaela. Michaela practically choked on her food. Yeah, I mean, no. Poor Ivy. You can't even say that with a straight face, Haley laughed. Who cares about Ivy? I'm just happy that Justin isn't going to the dance with her. Who knows what she would try to pull off if he would have said yes. The girl's crazy. I'm glad to see you're showing a lot of sympathy. Michaela shook her head, stifling a laugh. Life's too short to show sympathy for your best friend's competition, Haley said. Michaela raised an eyebrow. Excuse me? Which best friend are you talking about? Haley rolled her eyes. Please, Michaela. We know you're my only best friend. Both of you need to wake up and realize that you're perfect for each other. Michaela raised her eyebrows. Really? A little bird told me that you called Justin your best friend. Haley laughed. That's beside the point. I think we all know what the real point of this conversation is. To my surprise, Michaela didn't look weirded out by Haley implying that we should be together. In fact, she bit her lip and looked me in the eye. Maybe getting Michaela to be my girl wouldn't be so hard after all. Then again, with her, nothing would ever be easy. Chapter 41 Michaela There was a chill in the morning air as I walked to the doors of the school where Haley stood. I waved, and she waved back. I caught up to her. She grabbed my arm. Do you think Brett is going to ask me to the dance? I shrugged. I had no idea how to tell her that her ex-boyfriend probably didn't want her back. I can't imagine Brett going with anyone but me to the dance. I really don't have any competition. I paused. Maybe not. Haley's mouth gaped open when she saw Ivy holding a bouquet of flowers and talking to Brett. She marched up to them and asked in a fake sincere voice, What's going on, guys? Brett smiled at her. Ivy just asked me to the dance. Haley looked like someone slapped her in the face. Ivy smiled. Yeah, isn't that great? Haley wore a look of disgust as Ivy placed her hand on Brett's chest. If you asked Brett, then why are you holding flowers? I asked. I bought them for my bready poo. I narrowed my eyes. I couldn't seem to figure out what Ivy's hidden agenda was. Haley looked like she was about to kick someone, so I hooked arms with her. We better get to study hall. We wouldn't want to be late. Haley mumbled through clenched teeth. Sure, let's go. Once we got out of earshot, I asked, Are you okay? No, I'm not. I always knew Ivy was evil, but she reached a whole new level today. So true. She's always chasing boys. Ivy's the most forward person I know. I don't care about her chasing boys. I just care that she's chasing mine. We reached the library and sat at one of the round tables in the corner. Haley continued complaining about the situation. She suddenly grew quiet. Wait, why did you stop talking? I asked. All she could do was point. I looked in the direction of her finger and saw Ivy enter the library with Brett. I still don't know about the dance thing. I kind of wanted to go alone, Brett said. Ivy wrapped her arms around Brett's neck. Is that what you really want? Haley's whole face turned red with anger, and she started to stand up. 
I grabbed her by the arm and pulled her back down. I warned, You do not need to be a part of that drama. She's doing this to get back at me. I cocked an eyebrow. Get back at you for what? For telling her off in the bathroom. I groaned. Please don't tell me this is because of me and Justin. Shh, I can't hear. Barrett pushed Ivy away. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, but I'm done. He walked away, and Ivy called out, What about the dance? Brett shot her a cocky grin. I already told you no. No need to embarrass yourself even more. Ivy sulked and joined a table closer to us where Shannon and Tina were sitting. Haley hid her face in a book, hoping Ivy wouldn't recognize her. It was kind of silly because Ivy sat with her back toward us. I can't believe he said no. Why is it that every day another boy turns me down? Shannon placed a hand on her shoulder. It's okay, Ivy. We still like you. Ivy scoffed. I don't care. I just want one freaking boy to like me. She shoved the chair next to her. Shannon grabbed it to keep it from falling over. Ivy folded her arms. You know what? Forget it. I don't care about those losers. All I really want is Justin. What? Haley whispered. They looked over at us, and we buried our heads in our books, pretending to do our homework. Ivy continued. Anyway, the only reason I asked Brett was to make Haley mad and make Justin jealous. What the heck? That's so shallow, Tina exclaimed. Whose side are you on anyway? Ivy asked in an offended voice. Tina stood up. Not on yours. Not this time. She walked over to us, and Haley gasped. She took a seat next to me. Hey, Michaela. She nodded at Haley. How's it going? I held up my chemistry book. Oh, you know, the usual studying. Ivy snickered and snapped her head toward Shannon. Can you believe she went to sit with them? She said the word them like we were dirty somehow. Tina leaned toward us and said in a quiet voice, Ivy told me what she did. I know. Isn't she horrible? Haley whispered back. Tina laughed. Yeah, she's pretty mean. Then why do you hang out with her? I asked. She shrugged. There's no one else for me to sit with. You're always welcome to sit with us. She smiled. Thanks. Anytime. The bell rang and we got up to leave. As we walked through the door, Ivy slammed into Haley. She said with a fake smile, My bad, I didn't see you there. Haley shoved her back. Yeah, you did. I know what you're doing. Ivy asked in a fake, innocent voice. And what's that? You're trying to steal everyone's boyfriend. Ivy shot her a stare that could kill. Newsflash, Haley. Brett dumped you. He's no longer your property. Shut up! Haley fumed and pushed her back against the wall. Ivy laughed triumphantly, completely unfazed. One of our teachers, Mrs. Holly, interrupted them. What is going on here? Haley pointed at Ivy. She tried to steal my boyfriend. And that gave you the right to throw her around the hallway? Mrs. Holly asked. Haley stopped. She knocked into me first. I was just defending myself. Hmm. Okay, sure. I'm going to have to ask you to come with me to Mr. Baldwin's office, Mrs. Holly said. The principal's office? What about Ivy? Haley asked. That's not a bad idea. Ivy, come with us. Ivy put on a sweet face. But, Mrs. Holly, I would never say or do anything to hurt Haley.
I only bumped into her by accident. I'm sure this was just a misunderstanding. Okay, Ivy, I believe you. You're free to go. What the heck? I demanded. She's totally lying. Not another word, Michaela, or you'll be joining Haley in the office, she warned. Mrs. Holly and Haley walked away. What happened? A familiar voice said. I turned around and saw Justin. Walk me to my locker and I'll tell you. Ivy scoffed and stalked off in a huff. It felt pretty good to hear her squawk in defeat. She may have beat Haley, but she would never win when it came to Justin and me. Once we walked a safe distance away from Ivy, I told Justin the details of the story. So, Ivy asked Brett to the dance to make me jealous? Justin tried to hide a smile. I sighed. Not exactly. My guess is she went all out to make Haley mad since you weren't around to see it. Justin nodded. Makes sense. I still can't believe that Haley got in trouble and Ivy was let off so easily, I said angrily. Yeah, that seems way messed up, Justin said. Brett walked by. Justin stopped him and asked, Hey man, did you hear what happened? No, what? Justin told him a watered-down version of the story. He mentioned everything except the part when Haley kept calling him her boyfriend. I was grateful that he left that part out. Man, that's insane! I can't believe girls are fighting over me. He snapped his fingers. That's so sick! I couldn't help but laugh at how excited he was. He almost looked too pleased that Haley still cared so much about him. It made me hope that they would get back together. I also realized this dramatic situation helped break down some of the walls I had put up between Justin and me. I guess I was so distracted that I forgot I had issues with him. Chapter 42 Justin I walked into lunch with my food tray in hand. I sat between Haley and Michaela. I stretched my arms out across both of their shoulders and said, Hello, ladies. Michaela was the first to remove my arm from her shoulder. Keep your hands to yourself. I responded, Ooh, feisty. Haley dropped my arm from her shoulder. Stop trying to be a player, Justin. We all know you suck at it. Brett sat across from us and laughed. Ain't that the truth? You guys are all so mean today, I said. Haley retorted, It hasn't exactly been peachy here lately. Oh yeah, what happened when you went to the office? Haley sipped her orange juice. It went a lot better than I thought it would. Mr. Baldwin and I are like best friends now. I lifted my eyebrows. Meaning? I told him what actually happened, and he was totally on my side. I can tell I'm already his favorite, she said with a triumphant smile. It's pretty cool that you got in a cat fight over me, Brett said with a lopsided grin. It wasn't exactly over you. It was more because of my pride. She was being a jerk. He shot her a wink. Sure it was. Michaela changed the subject and talked excitedly about an article she was writing for the paper. Before I knew it, the bell rang. Is it just me, or was that the shortest lunch ever? Haley smiled and turned my way. Yeah, that was unusually short. The way she smiled at me made me wonder if Haley was trying to make Brett jealous. If she was, she wasn't doing a very good job at it. Brett didn't get jealous easily. I guess I'll see you guys later. I'm headed to P.E., I said. I walked away and Haley waved goodbye. I waved back and tried waving at Michaela, but she barely returned the gesture. She gave Haley a bewildered look. 
I headed to the locker room and changed into my red P.E. shorts. When I walked into the gym, the coach said, Everyone drop and give me 50. I did what he said, but I didn't like it. The rest of the workout went about the same. I was super exhausted by the end. I was the last to get to the locker room. As I changed into my school clothes, I noticed Jamin from journalism talking to a guy I didn't recognize. I can't believe Michaela told Justin no, he said in a hushed tone. If that happened to me, I'd be mad. Why do you think she did that? The other guy said. Maybe it's because of what happened last year, Jamin said in a low voice. What happened? The other guy asked. Jamin whispered something, but I couldn't make out what it was. I was tempted to ask him, but I thought it might be weird. He did give me a good hint, though. Whatever happened to Michaela happened within the past year. I rushed to Haley's locker as fast as I could. She wasn't there yet, so I waited for her. After a couple minutes, she arrived. She looked surprised to see me. Hey, Justin. Why are you here? I think you know something, and you've been holding out on me. Haley glanced around the hall, looking nervous. What do you mean by that? What happened to Michaela last year? She opened her locker nonchalantly. I don't know what you mean. Come on, you're her best friend. I'm pretty sure you know what happened. Haley grabbed her things and shut the locker. Fine, I'll tell you, but you have to promise you won't tell anyone that I told you. She held out her pinky. Promise? I grabbed her pinky and shook it. Done. She took a deep breath. I don't have a lot of time to tell you what happened, so listen closely. I leaned forward. I'm listening. She looked at her feet and then looked back up to me. A little over a year ago, Michaela's dad cheated on her mom. They ended up getting a divorce. I scrunched my eyebrows together. That doesn't make any sense. I met her dad. He tried to shoot me. Haley went on. Let me finish. Her dad left her mom for another woman with a different family. After the divorce was final, he didn't want anything to do with Michaela. He spent all of his time and money with his new family. It crushed her. She would look on Facebook and see pictures of her dad with his new daughter. She still feels miserable about it. That's heartbreaking. A few months ago, her mom remarried. I think she was happy that her mom found love again, but at the same time, she doesn't consider her mom's new husband to be her dad. So, what does this have to do with me? She watched her mom so heartbroken over her dad leaving. She decided she never wanted to experience that kind of pain. And if that didn't hurt enough, her dad moved on and left her too. She doesn't trust love. That's why she pushes you away. She dumped her last boyfriend before he could break her heart. My heart sank. There's really nothing I can do? Haley gave me a sympathetic look. I know it sounds impossible, but I believe in you, Justin. You can give her a happy ending. Make her believe again. I sighed. I want to. In fact, I would love to. Then what's the problem? I don't know if she'll let me. Haley glanced at the clock on the wall. Crap, I'm late for Spanish. I gotta go. Okay, bye. She left, and I headed for my next class. Once again, I couldn't concentrate on a single word the teacher was saying. I kept thinking about Michaela and the pain she went through. I thought I had it bad with my bossy mom. Michaela had it a billion times worse. After thinking about it, I decided I needed to confront her on the issue. When school ended, I found Michaela by her locker. I smiled. Hey, how are you? She smiled back. Doing great. I'm so glad school is over for the day. 
I leaned against the locker next to hers and ran my fingers through my wavy hair. She stopped and looked at me like she liked what she saw. That was a good sign. I cleared my throat. Can we talk somewhere? I glanced around. Alone? She shot me a flirty grin. Sure. I led her back behind the school by the football bleachers. She asked in a carefree voice. So, what did you want to talk about? I think I know the real reason why it hasn't worked out between us. I said quietly. She raised her eyebrows and her face went dark. What did you come up with? I think you have a fear of commitment. I blurted out. Why would you think that? She stammered. I know how your parents got divorced a year ago. Who told you that? Her voice was as cold as ice. It's common knowledge. No, it's not, she snapped. There aren't a lot of people who know. It shouldn't matter how I found out. The point is, I want you to know that I would never intentionally hurt you. She raised her eyebrows. You don't know what you're talking about. She turned away from me. I grabbed her by the shoulders and pulled her so that she faced me again. I love you, Kayla. I don't care what happened in the past. I just want to make you happy. Let go of me. You don't understand anything, she cried. You should have never tried to figure out my past. It was none of your business. Tears streamed down her face, and she ran away leaving me feeling like the biggest jerk in the world. Chapter 43, Justin I drove home, yet again feeling like a failure. I dropped my backpack on the couch and laid down to sulk. I let out a sigh of relief when I called my mom's name and I heard no response. At least she was gone. That made it a little bit better. I wanted to check my phone, but I remembered I didn't have it anymore. All thanks to Mom. I sat on the couch and wallowed in my misery for a long time. I planned on sitting there much longer, but there was a knock at the door. I answered it and saw Brett on my doorstep. What are you doing here? Michaela told Haley, who told me, what happened today. I thought you could use a friend. I motioned into the house. Please join me on my couch of endless misery. Brett chuckled. You're being so dramatic today. You need to chill out. I ran my fingers through my hair. Dude, you have no idea what it's like for the girl you like to have all sorts of major problems that keep you from being with her. Psh, yeah, right. Remember Haley? Brett responded. I smiled. You still like Haley? He shrugged. I don't know. I do think it's pretty cool that she roughed up Ivy in the hall. I've never had a girl do that for me before. Is Haley the reason you told Ivy no? He sighed and looked at the ceiling. She was part of the reason. Who knows what sort of thing Haley would have done if I had said yes. You were part of the reason, too. Why was I part of the reason? He laughed. I figured it was pretty obvious she went for me because I'm your friend. She wanted to get to you through me. I didn't feel like being her pawn. I was about to say something, but we heard the garage door open. Your mom is home. That means I've got to go, Brett said. Why do you want to leave me alone with her? She'll be nicer with a guest in the house. Company manners, you know? Besides, you just got here. Brett smirked. Sorry, she's your mom. That makes her your problem. You're a cruel, cruel man. Brett got off the couch and walked toward the front door. He chuckled. I take that as a compliment. He waved. Later. As he walked out, my mom burst through the door from the garage and called out, Justin, where are you? I'm over here. 
I responded in a monotone voice. She came into the living room and found me lying on the couch like a zombie. What's wrong with you? She asked. I sat up. I had a really hard day. She sat on the edge of the couch. What happened? I found out Michaela's parents got a divorce, and that's the reason she's been rejecting me. My mom ruffled my hair. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Wouldn't your life be easier if you forgot about that awful girl? Suddenly, my sadness was replaced with anger. No, I'm not going to forget about Michaela. I'll never forget her. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being her friend and liking her. I think we both know you want to be more than just her friend. It's pretty obvious it wouldn't end well. What if you're wrong? She smirked. You know I'm never wrong, sweetheart. I'm just trying to protect you. I was about to say something when my dad came through the door. Hey, why isn't dinner ready? My mom leapt to her feet. Oh, sorry. We have a bit of a crisis on our hands. What could be more important than food? Dad chuckled. Our son is having girl problems. He sat on the other couch. Girl problems? That sounds interesting. Let's hear about it. I covered my face with my hands. Can we not talk about this? No, it'll be good to get your father's opinion, my mother insisted. She turned to look at my dad. Justin here has a big, ugly crush on that girl, Michaela. I grounded him from just about everything until he gets over her. Dad's jaw dropped. How did I not know about this? Probably because you're always at work, I muttered without looking up. I think it's ridiculous to ground him for having a crush on a girl. I say if he wants to date, let him. How can you say that? We have to keep his mind on his education. My father laughed. When I was his age, all I ever thought about was girls. I had at least three girlfriends by the time I was 16. He's making straight A's, so why not? I sat up, feeling a rush of hope. So, can I date Michaela? Absolutely not, and trust me, my mom said, staring Dad down. We both know how much trouble girls caused you back in the day, not to mention the fact that you dated Michaela's mom. That must be why my mom got upset on Halloween. She was threatened by Michaela's mom back in the day. My dad stared at her. Are you serious right now? She folded her arms. Do I look like I'm joking? Then something happened that really surprised me. My dad laughed out loud. Sweetheart, you have to be joking. You're going to tell our son he's not allowed to date Michaela based on what happened to us 20 years ago in high school? It's not funny. We're talking about my feelings, she whined. Michaela's mom has been out of our life for decades. There's nothing enticing about her. I got over her in my teens. How could you not know that? She glared at him. Dad grabbed at her arm in an attempt to embrace her, but she snapped her head and turned her body away. Come on, kitty, Dad begged. You're the reason I dropped her. By now there should be no doubt that my deepest feelings are only for you. Let's not let our petty high school drama stop our son from living his life. He stroked the back of her head and whispered in her ear, she turned around and looked him in the eyes. Okay, you're right. I shouldn't let the past get to me. Now that's the woman I know and love. He smiled at her the way I smile at Michaela. He pulled her into an embrace, and her facial expression finally softened. He said to my mom, I think it's high time Justin is ungrounded. Let's give him back his stuff, dear. He put his hands on her waist 
then tipped her chin up so she looked into his eyes. My mother grinned. You don't play fair. You know how to get to me, don't you? She gave him a kiss on the cheek. Fine, I'll do it. But you are taking me out to dinner. I am not cooking after all the emotional stress this has caused me. I shot her a triumphant smile. I was glad to see that she had been overruled. She went upstairs and came back with my cell phone and longboard. I grabbed my phone and immediately called Haley. She answered after the first ring. Hello? Guess who's back in business? I asked with a bounce in my voice. You? Haley asked. You got your phone back. Yeah, but it gets even better. What could possibly be better than getting your phone back? I said through a smile. I'm allowed to date Michaela now. If that is true, please explain why you are talking to me and not Michaela. You're safe. I am not afraid of talking to you. Please, just call her. Michaela is so into you. Chapter 44 Michaela I told my mom I had a rough day and convinced her to let me go to Aunt Bethany's house. Her house has been my safe haven since my parents' divorce. I knocked on my auntie's door and waited patiently for her to let me in and solve all my problems. I stood there a minute or two until she opened the door. Come in. I just made strawberry cake. You look like you need some. I smiled and followed her inside. I could always count on her having the best desserts ready whenever I needed to talk. It's like she could sense when I had a hard day. I love some. I entered her yellow kitchen and took a seat at the breakfast bar. She served me a plate of her famous cake. I took a bite, and it felt like I had entered into a whole different world. Aunt Bethany, this cake is amazing. She laughed and pushed back her blonde hair. I know. Now tell me what's going on. I sighed and felt the mood darken even before I started to talk. Justin found out about the divorce. He thinks I have commitment problems. She raised an eyebrow. I think it's safe to say that he's right. I dropped my fork. What? Don't act so surprised. It's obvious that you don't trust him because you think he's going to break your heart. I glanced down at my feet. Maybe. She threw her hands up in the air. There's no maybe about it. You don't trust him, and you probably wouldn't trust any guy. You know what your problem is? I sat on the edge of my seat. What? She pointed a finger at me. You're thinking about it too hard. I cocked my head to the side. What's that supposed to mean? She laughed. It means that you're too focused on him shattering your heart. I say, forget about it and have some fun. I sighed. But what if he does break my heart and I go on for days crying my eyes out? She nodded. That's a possibility. Or there's also the possibility that you'll give up on him. Then you'd spend the next five years kicking yourself because you wished you could have kissed him when you had the chance. I laughed. That sounds so crazy. Aunt Bethany sighed. I know it does, but I know it's a possibility because I lived it. I laughed. I couldn't resist teasing her. You mean, you've wanted to kiss Justin too? She laughed. Goodness no. I was thinking of a guy I liked when I was your age. Tell me about him. I leaned forward in anticipation. His name was Alex. I thought I was in love with him when I was fourteen. In fact, he told me he was in love with me. We made plans to kiss each other, but I was scared and backed out. Before I knew it, he changed his mind about me and he moved on to some other girl. I knew he was over me, but there was a part of me that never truly moved on. 
I had tears in my eyes. That's so sad. She sighed. I know, but I never have regretted loving him. He was my first love, and he was special. That's why I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. I swallowed. But it's hard. She smiled. I know it is, but it'll be worth it in the end. She paused for a moment. Enough of this talk about the past. It's making me sad just thinking about it. I smiled. Okay, what do you want to do now? She laughed. How about we eat some chocolate ice cream and watch a girly movie? I smiled. But we just had cake. She nodded. Some days, you need all the junk food you can get. I followed her upstairs and into a room toward the back of the house. She pulled out a bunch of movies and asked, Which one? It only took me a split second before I said, Sweet Home Alabama. She smiled. Good choice. She put on the movie, and as it began, I got a text from Haley. I have really good news. Justin's allowed to date you now. What's that supposed to mean? He's ungrounded. Apparently, his mom was holding a huge grudge against your mom because your mom dated her husband before she did. But this all happened when they were in high school, so Justin's dad said it shouldn't rule over Justin's life. Wow, that's crazy. I knew about my mom dating his dad, but I didn't think it would affect me. Man, I was wrong. Anyway, what does this mean for us? Does that mean he wants to ask me out, or... You're his first love, duh! Psh, yeah right. He'll probably end up dating Ivy or something. You know that's a lie. Let's go shopping tomorrow. Shopping for what? Formals for the dance. I'm not going. Fine, then help me find a dress. Okay, that's doable. Good. Meet me at the food court in the mall after school tomorrow. Right when I thought my life couldn't get any more dramatic, my phone vibrated. Justin's name blew up my screen, and I took a steady breath. I answered the phone. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Justin said cheerfully. It's going. So, he paused. Have you heard about how our parents used to date each other? Yes, I did. That was some crazy news. Yeah, tell me about it. I guess my dad and I have some pretty similar tastes in women. The apple definitely didn't fall far from the tree. I felt my cheeks burn. Excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? Just that I... Never mind. I'll see you later, um, at school. We'll talk more there, okay? Yeah, sure thing. And with that, Justin hung up, leaving me wondering what his true intentions could be. If he wanted to date me, why didn't he just ask? And if he did ask, what on earth would I tell him? Chapter 45. Michaela I walked into the mall in search of Haley. I checked my phone. She sent me a message saying she was in front of Taco Bell. I walked to the restaurant and saw her smiling and eating Cinnabons. Why are we meeting here? I thought we were going dress shopping. She smiled. Because Taco Bell has the best Mexican donut holes. They're called Cinnabons. Same thing. Let's go shopping. We began walking toward our favorite dress store, and Haley exclaimed, Are you super excited about the dance? No, I don't think watching Ivy hit on a bunch of sweaty boys will be fun. Haley tipped her head back and laughed. I think it'll be great. We'll make all kinds of memories. I sighed. I still don't know if I'm going to go. We entered the shop, and Haley went straight to the dresses. She grabbed a sleek red dress and held it against herself and asked, What do you think? 
I smiled. I think it looks great. Haley rolled her eyes. You always say that. I flipped through the sales rack and pulled out a sparkly white dress. I showed it to Haley. She sounded excited when she said, That's perfect. Justin would love you in that dress. I hung my head. Let's not talk about him. Why? He's allowed to date you now. He's free game. Also, I told him to call you. Please tell me he really did. Yeah, he called. I put the dress back and crossed my arms. He basically said he thought it was funny that his dad had been in a relationship with my mom. Then he said the apple didn't fall far from the tree. I asked him what he meant by that. He started to say something, but he cut himself off and said he would talk to me later at school. That poor guy, Haley exclaimed. It sounds like he was beyond nervous. He probably wanted to ask you out but got cold feet. Either way, I don't care, I said with a shrug. At least, I was pretending not to care. But did I really? Did I want to become an item with Justin? Haley let out a frustrated sigh. I know why you resist him. I challenged her. And why is that? Because you're afraid Justin will hurt you the way your dad hurt your mom. I clenched my fists by my side. She did not just go there. How is that any of your business? Why does everyone keep bringing that up? Haley gave me a knowing look. Because I'm your best friend, and you can't spend the rest of your life hating boys because of what happened with your parents. You have no idea what I went through. Well, staying bitter about it won't change anything. If it's that big of a deal, why don't you call your dad and patch things up? I shuffled my feet. He never answers when I call. Then use my phone. Okay, I guess I could try. I hesitantly took her phone and dialed my dad's number. The phone rang and rang, but he didn't answer. He's not answering. Give him a minute. I waited a moment longer, and I heard a faint, Hello? For a moment, I felt like the world stopped. I was actually going to have a conversation with my own father. It took me a minute to realize Haley would be listening to the whole thing. I mouthed to her that I was going to the dressing room. I locked myself into one of the stalls. Luckily, I was the only one there. I took a deep breath. Hey, Dad, it's Michaela. I was surprised when he said in a happy voice, You mean my daughter, Michaela? I mumbled. Yeah. It is great to hear your voice. How have you been? He said in a friendly tone. I've been good, but I have some questions. Ask away. I took a deep breath. Why did you leave mom and me? How could you do that? We trusted you. He sighed into the phone. I'm so sorry. It was never my intention to hurt you. Why didn't you answer my calls? I never saw a missed call from you. I scratched my head. Did mom do something to block me from calling you? I'm not sure if she blocked me. Why didn't you ever come see me? It was hard on your mom for me to keep coming back into your lives. She asked me to take a few steps back. I respected her wishes, so I stayed clear. That's not fair. She might not have needed you, but I certainly did. Don't get me wrong. I never stopped thinking about you. I wiped away a tear and sniffled. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. His voice was warm and kind. I would like to. It's been hard. We were miserable. I have missed you so very much. We need to catch up. Tell me more. At first, Mom was in pain. I kept going to Aunt Bethany for advice. I felt like I needed a new mom, 
one that wasn't crying all the time. I am so sorry. With time, Mom stopped crying. I kept going to Aunt Bethany because we were already so close. My poor little girl. His voice cracked as he spoke. I know not all of this is your fault. There are always two sides of a story. I breathed into the phone. I want to forgive you, but I'm not there yet. I'm still frustrated, and I still have more questions. Go ahead. Why did you break my mom's heart and leave her for some other woman? He paused for a moment and then answered. That's a tough question to answer. The best I can tell you is sometimes you can't help who you fall in love with. It wasn't completely my fault. I know. I remember all the fights. Your mother grew distant from me. It got to the point where she didn't even want to hold my hand. I wanted love and companionship, but I admit that I was selfish. I'm so sorry you have to suffer because of it. I felt tears slide down my face. I wish it didn't have to be this way. It's not the same anymore. I mean, Bryant tries to be my dad, but he's not. He can't replace you. I'm sorry. We can't go back to being the family we were before. All we can do is go forward. I am still your dad. I want to be in your life, if you and your mom are okay with that. Okay, I'll try. I paused for a moment and tried to compose myself. It's just so sad. I never see you anymore. It doesn't have to be that way. Why don't we do lunch next week? I smiled through my tears. I'd really like that. How about Saturday? I can pick you up at Aunt Bethany's house so your mom will be spared as much hurt as possible. Would 11.30 be okay? I think so. I'll ask Mom and let you know. I'm glad to hear it. Before I go, I want to tell you one more thing. What? I love you, Michaela. No matter what happens, don't ever forget that he said in a tender voice. My heart burst with joy. I love you too, Daddy. Okay, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. My hand trembled. Bye, Dad. I unlocked the stall door and found Haley looking at some pink dresses. As soon as I saw her, I summarized the conversation. That sounds like it was really hard for you. Haley hugged me, and it was like she sucked all of my pain away. I was so grateful for her. I couldn't have asked for a better friend. I'm so glad you're here for me. Me too. Now, how about you try on that dress? I smiled. Yes, let's do it. I grabbed the dress and headed for the fitting room. I couldn't get it on fast enough. I peered at myself in the mirror it really accentuated my curves. I had never felt so beautiful. I imagined Justin's face when he saw me in it. I came out and twirled in the dress for Haley. I was right, wasn't I? Justin will freak when he sees that dress. You could practically marry him in it. I couldn't help but laugh. Haley was obsessed with marriage. But for once... I didn't want to argue about Justin liking me or not. I finally wanted to believe it and even fantasize about it. Chapter 46 Justin The gym was ablaze with Christmas trees and a million twinkling lights. I searched through the crowd in an attempt to find Michaela. I had a feeling she was going to look extra pretty since it was a formal Christmas dance. I nervously straightened my red tie. As I glanced around, I felt a little tap on my shoulder. I had a sick feeling in my stomach that it was Ivy and that she might try hitting on me. I really hoped she wouldn't ruin my chances with Michaela tonight. 
I turned around. Haley stood there, smiling. She had her hair curled, and she wore a pink dress. Hey, you look nice, I said, relieved. Thanks, Justin. She beamed. I hope Brett thinks the same. I laughed. I'm sure he will. Have you seen him yet? I shook my head. No, I haven't. Have you seen Michaela? Haley smiled like she knew something I didn't. She's running a little bit late, but it'll be worth the wait because she looks amazing. I felt a smile spread across my face. Really? I can't stand the suspense. Yeah, I know you can't. Haley paused. Speaking of Michaela, she's right over there. She pointed to the back of the gym. Michaela walked toward us, wearing a white dress. I stood mesmerized, watching her cross the floor. Half of her curls were pinned up. The way her dress clung to her body made her look like the next Miss America. She smiled. Hey, Justin. Wow, Michaela, you look really pretty. A giant smile spread across her face. Thank you. She looked me up and down. You look really good in a suit. She bit her bottom lip and stared in a dreamy way. Would you like to dance? She smiled and took my hand. I'll take that as a yes. I pulled her to the middle of the dance floor. Having her hand in mine felt so right, like it was always meant to be there. The song started and I spun her around three times. She smiled on every turn. She seemed unusually happy tonight. I couldn't help but wonder what changed. We danced across the floor, and I noticed everyone was watching us. I assumed people were interested in what went on between us, since I proclaimed my feelings for her in the school newspaper. As we rounded a corner, her eyes met mine. She looked at me in a way she never had before. The song came to an end, and I twirled her around one last time. Then, I pulled her into a tight embrace. She smiled. You smell so good. I couldn't help but laugh. Thank you. I let go of her, and she hooked her arm through mine. We walked back to where Haley stood. Haley glowed. I just danced with Brett. I raised my eyebrows. That's awesome. Do you think you will get back together? Haley sighed. I sure hope so. Another song started, and Brett walked up to Haley. I know we just danced, but would you like to dance again? I had never seen Haley smile so big. Would I ever... I turned to Michaela. Would you like to dance again? She smiled. I'd love to. The fact that she used the word love gave me all sorts of renewed hope. She took my hand and I walked her to a darker part of the gym. She wrapped both of her arms around my neck and we danced back and forth. As the song progressed, she leaned her forehead against mine. Our faces were so close, it would be easy to kiss her. I refrained because I didn't want to push her too hard. At this point, I was willing to take it slow. You're so beautiful, I whispered. She smiled and pressed her lips softly to my cheek. Thank you. I took advantage of the opportunity and returned a kiss on her cheek. Her lips came halfway toward mine, and we were close to kissing, but the song ended. Haley ran toward us. Guys, you won't believe what happened. Haley popped her hand over her mouth. Oh, wait, did I interrupt something? I shook my head, laughing in frustration. Yes, Haley, you did. Now, since you already ruined the moment... Why don't you tell us what happened? 
I am so sorry. I just had to tell you that Brett and I are back together. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Michaela gave her a quick hug. Haley smiled triumphantly. I know, right? It was totally the new dress. Michaela smiled broadly at her. Totally. I turned to Michaela. Why don't we continue our conversation outside? She nodded enthusiastically. Okay. This sounds deep. What kind of conversation were you having? The kind that only involves two people, I responded. Haley laughed. I was only joking. I don't want to watch you guys make out. I'm just going to go over here. She pointed to the left. And kiss my boyfriend. I laughed. Okay, you do that. I placed my hand on Michaela's mid-back. Come on, Michaela. Let's get some air. By air, I mean kiss. Chapter 47 Michaela Justin walked me outside the school. The moon was shining brightly overhead. The night was cool and had a soft, balmy breeze. My heart beat against my chest so violently that I thought it was going to explode. I knew I was going to get my first kiss, and the anticipation was almost too much for me to handle. But there was something I needed to know first. I want to know where we stand, I mumbled. Justin smiled ear to ear. You know I'm allowed to date whoever I want now. I nodded. Yes, and I'm really happy for you. Then what more do you need? I knew exactly what I needed. The only problem was my fear of asking him. My hands shook a little bit, but I clenched them into fists. You told me in a note once that you loved me. My question is, did you really mean it? He took a step toward me. How can you not know my feelings for you by now? You've changed me. I've never liked anyone the way I like you, Kayla. You're smart, funny, talented, and the most stubborn girl I know. Michaela, you're all I ever think about. You're the one thing that gets me through the day. Despite my efforts not to, I've fallen hard for you. I love you, Kayla. My heart stopped. It was hard to breathe. Pain ripped through my chest. I don't know. I quit talking, afraid I would start sobbing. My eyes watered. I closed them to keep the tears from escaping. He looked confused. I just told you exactly how I feel, and you don't believe me? I peered down at my feet. It's not so much that I don't believe you. It's just... I paused for a moment, and then choked out. I don't believe in happy endings anymore. He lifted my chin, and my eyes met his. Well, I believe, and I know how this story ends. I furrowed my eyebrows together. How can you be sure? Because every time I look at you... I see the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. You say that now, but what happens when you change your mind? I turned my back to him. He took my hand and pulled me into a tight embrace. I'll never change my mind, no matter what the future holds. Really? He kissed the top of my forehead. Really, you're more than just a beautiful girl. You're a beautiful person, and you're my best friend. I instantly broke away from him. With raised eyebrows, I asked in a louder voice than I intended, Friend? Is that what we are? Friends? Justin sighed. Michaela, you really are the most stubborn girl I've ever met. My heart dropped to my stomach. What did I really mean to him? If he didn't want to make us official, I didn't want to suggest anything. 
if we were going to be in a relationship, that it needed to be 100% his idea. You said you love me, but do you really know me, Justin? His eyebrows furrowed together in worry. I realize I don't know everything about you, but I'd like to spend every day trying to change that. I shrugged. I don't know. What more do you want me to say? I stared at the floor, saying nothing. Michaela, what's wrong? I bared my soul to you and I get no response. Say something. I walked toward the door to go back inside, and Justin stepped in front of me. I thought we were going to kiss, he said with hope in his eyes. I smirked. That's the funny thing about kissing. It requires more than just one person. I raised my eyebrows. So, good luck with that. I nudged him aside and tried to open the door. He placed his hand over mine as I clutched the doorknob. Just hear me out for a second. I jerked my hand away from his and crossed my arms. I'm listening. I've messed up a lot this semester. I know you thought I was a player, but there isn't any other girl I care about. I looked at him like he was lying. Not even Ivy? Justin let out a frustrated sigh. Of course not. That girl is such a stalker. I want nothing to do with her. Trust me. I couldn't help but laugh at him. I guess you really don't like her, huh? Not at all. He took a step closer to me and held my face in his hands. I only have eyes for you, Kayla. I closed my eyes and his lips fell on mine. Our mouths moved in complete harmony, and I wrapped my arms around his neck. The taste of his lips was intoxicating, and I wanted his mouth to stay glued to mine forever. He kissed me with advanced skill and precision. I backed away for a brief moment and said in between breaths, I love you. He lifted his eyebrows and gawked at me, what did you say? I kissed him again, but this time with more enthusiasm than I ever thought possible. I said. I paused and stared deeply into his dark brown eyes. I'm in love with you. I love you too, Kayla. Will you be my girlfriend? I laced my fingers through his and said with a smile, There's nothing I would want more. Justin never appeared happier than at that very moment. He lifted me off the ground and twirled me around. He stopped for a brief moment and whispered into my ear, I'm so glad that you're finally mine. Author's Note If you enjoyed Kissing the Skater Boy, then feel free to leave a review. Reviews will help me know if you enjoyed the story. Thank you so much. Sign up for my newsletter. That way you won't miss any new books from me. Website, https colon forward slash forward slash author Christina Herrera dot blogspot dot com. Other published books by Christina Herrera. Book number one of Hidden Shores Academy, Kissing the Wrong Twin a sweet adult holiday romance novella, Kissing Under the Fireworks. About the author Christina Herrera has always loved romance. Even as a child, she would make up romantic plots with her older sisters as part of her bedtime stories. As she grew up, she remained fascinated by storytelling. When she was 19 years old, she authored her first book, Ever since then, she knew what she wanted to do in life. Read, edit, and write down all of her romantic stories. Want to talk about book stuff? Contact her through the following pages. Facebook.com forward slash C Herrera 122116. Twitter.com slash C Herrera 
116. Instagram.com slash author Christina Herrera.